thing. Oh, I like the sound of you guys already. But before we celebrate day two, we've got to say a fond farewell to BC Gaming and Navi because sadly we lost them in groups A and B yesterday. But we did send four teams through to tomorrow's playoffs and we're going to do the same today. How do you like the sound of that, Sweden? Well, it gives me great pleasure to say welcome to day two of the Brawl Stars World Finals 2023. around the world and joining us in Yonjaping this weekend. You can see the trophy at the center of the stage and just two days separate our teams from getting their hands on this cup. And if they get their hands on this cup, it means they are the best Brawl Stars teams in the world. Today, we will be playing through Group C and Group D. So let's meet the six teams who'll be playing for you on this stage today. Starting up, with our European number one seed, it's Zeta Division! <laughs> Next up, in Group C, all the way from Latin America, Vamos! It's Nouns Esports! from North America. Please welcome STMN. <laughs> Moving on to Group D. It's Crazy Raccoon. From Europe, please welcome Footy Sports! <laughs> and rounding up Group D, it's SK Gaming! So there you have it. Our six teams have come tantalizingly close to the trophy. Will one of these six be the team to be crowned the winners at the end of this weekend? Well, we need to get through day two first. So let's head over to Trav and Kenny to talk you through what's about to go down on this stage. It's day two of the Brawl Stars World Finals and another six teams enter the fray, but only four can proceed to day three and try and strike gold and become the world champions. I am Trav and I'm joined here by the Kung Fu master himself, Kenny. How are you feeling after day one? 
Day one was full of surprises. I think many of us did not expect teams like in Group A to show up the way they did. But Group C and D are established players, established teams in Brawl Stars. There are no freebies today. And I'm going to go on a bold statement and say this might be the toughest day of Brawl Stars of all time today. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to agree with you as well because Group C and Group D are looking so, so stacked. And I'd say partially because of myself, to be fair, after that drawing, it was very difficult to get out of that LCQ alive. <laughs> but at the same time, let's take a little bit of a look at the format, see what we're going to be playing through over today and tomorrow as well, see what we've already played through, Kenny. Talk us through it. Well, day one, of course, we had three teams apiece in groups A and D. Today, we will do the same with groups C and D. Three teams apiece, single round, round robin. It's going to be top two from each of the groups advancing to a single elimination bracket on day three, which will be so incredibly intense. I mean, group A's teams were already stacked in day two. I'm already prepared for some chaos as well. Well, with that said, let's see what the teams are going to be playing for on day three and obviously what they're playing for today and yesterday as well. The prize pool is looking stacked in 2023. $750,000 in total, where first place will take home $250,000 of it. Second place with $150,000, third to fourth, 85, fifth to eighth, 30. And even the teams who went out yesterday and a couple of teams will go out today will take home 15,000, Kenny. That's a lot of cash on the line, and of course, pride alongside it as well. Again, this is the most stacked we've ever felt Brawl Stars has been coming into this event. I think many of us would agree there is not a clear contender for this. There are a lot of teams that are more than capable of taking this home, and I think a lot of them are in these group C's and D's. It's sad to see that, you know, every single one of these teams deserves to not only get to day three, but in my eyes, every single one of them could win the world finals, <laughs> and that's saying something. It's sad to say we've got to say goodbye to a couple of them because of how stacked this competition is. With that said, let's Let's take a bit of a look at the groups because we had A and B past us yesterday. Should see this reflected on this graphic now, where Luminosity Gaming and Revenant Esports was victorious in Group A. BC Gaming, sadly, we sat, we had to say goodbye to them. Group B, Tribe Gaming and Reply Totem came through, and Navi were knocked out. Kenny. It's hard to believe we live in a world where Navi are out of the competition already. Such an established and historical war game, Brawl Stars. But you look at Group C and you look at Group D, there's some people that have won world championships in this group. There's teams that have been to semifinals several times. Zeta Division have won the world championships two years running. I mean, the fact that two of these teams have to go before the final day is absolutely nuts. Yeah, and you know, you look at a player like Tensai in Group D there, Crazy Rick, he's a back-to-back -back world champion. He's looking for that three-peat here in 20. 2023. And to be honest, Crazy Raccoon are one of the favorites to do it, Kenny. And I'm really looking forward to those Group D matches. Yeah, I think there's some intense rivalries. There's some familiarity going with these teams as well. I mean, that's one of the storylines that I think is a big here today. I mean, rivalries like Foot and SK with such familiarity from the players, the organizations. It's what makes Brawl Stars so special. I think seeing this today is going to make it worth even more watch time than already in previous years. Yeah, well, let's take a little bit of a look at our predictions because over on event.brawlstars.com, you can predict two to get some of those sweet, sweet rewards. And I mean, it looks pretty <laughs> clear cut to us, but this does not reflect how close this game this game day is going to be. Everybody looking the same, Kenny, and we're starting things off with SDMA. I mean, this is, uh, this is almost unfair to a sense. There is way more of a coin flip aspect to this than I think we're giving it credit for. You all must have watched my video that I published about this because <laughs> there is no way that the caster hive mind Shameless is matching sport. this closely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong though, to be fair. I mean, every single game is so much closer than this, but this is the schedule order of the games we watching today where we kick things off with Zeta Division versus STMN. Zeta Division versus Nouns Esports will be coming up shortly after that. Then that decider match STMN versus Nouns down the bottom as well. Into Group D after that where we see Crazy Raccoon versus SK Gaming to kick that group off. Crazy Raccoon versus Foot Esports and then the grudge match of the century. SK Gaming versus Foot. <laughs> the fact that that concludes the day, I mean, that match alone would get me to watch any Brawl Stars day, right? But the fact that we conclude the day with the possibility of one of those teams being eliminated or maybe making it on to day number three, more importantly, absolutely insane. Every one of these matches are going to be some of the craziest we've seen. And I think, again, even though the caster hive mind is all matching today, I don't think that's fair and a good representation just of how good these teams are. I think every single matchup is going to be very difficult to call, including our very first one here. So it's Talking of matchups, this is a massive one to start off day number two of the Brawl Stars World Finals 2023, where Zeta Division will face off against STM and Esports. Gero, Meow, and Nawi will come against Zar, Bobby, and Sans in an absolutely beautiful matchup for day number two of the Brawl Stars World Finals. The teams are ready to enter the stage, so let's see how they're doing. Thank you, guys. Sweden, are we ready to bring on some teams? 
All right, keep that energy up for me, please, as we welcome our first team from Europe. It's Zeta Division! <laughs> Nari, Gera, and Miao made a disappointingly early exit back at Worlds in 2022. However, this time they are here to show they have learned, they've grown, and they are ready to take this competition by storm. And their competition in our opening matchup of Group C today. It is STMN! Don't call this one a comeback, call it an anticipated return because the North Americans did have to go through the last chance qualifier to make it here. But now they are, they're going to be taking this opportunity by the handles. So there we have it. One last time, Yontrebin, give it up for your teams. Let's head back over to Kenny and Trav to talk us through the action. Well, let's get down to the real nitty gritty of this matchup, Kenny. Two powerhouse teams of Zeta Division coming through at EMEA as the number one seed direct to world finals. STMN, it really wasn't that straightforward. No, not as straightforward at all. Although I will say at ESL Mobile Masters, STMN really impressed me. I think in the land setting, something about it gives them a buff. And Zeta Division as well, though, like you said, conquered the EMEA region. That is as stacked up as a region as it gets. There's so much depth to it. So many teams across so many countries. So the fact that they were consistent enough to come out number one with several grand finals wins, mega impressive. Yeah, well, I mean, we've had some third party stuff this year. SPS has been huge for both of these teams. Zeta Division came first in the season three. They were the champions of that, but haven't qualified to season four. And I think that's a huge point to touch on, considering they just haven't been in form at all. They've just been looking really, really poor recently. And I'm really excited to see if they're going to be able to get back in the groove at the World Finals. 68% of the public think they are going to do just that, whereas only 32 signing with SDMN. I get it right. I mean, after all, Zeta Division in the LAN event that they played at in SPS Season 3, they won and it wasn't dominant, I would say, but they were certainly convincing, especially against hot teams like Foot, SK, who were in this tournament as well. I mean, they beat some tough teams to get here. But as team on paper, you may look at them as the number two seed from NA West, but every single year, these guys have improved. And I was very impressed, especially with their marquee win of a 3-0 in the opening group stages of the halfway point in the year at ESL Mobile Masters. I am expecting these guys to continue you to grow. I'm going to believe in the upside with these guys. But again, with the people at home, I get it. Zeta Division with the number one seed from EMEA. And despite struggles more recently, heck, it's the World Finals. It's the big stage. And these guys have come to play on big days. I mean, that's the thing, you know, the, the EU region is the most watched region. And for those returning people, Zeta Division have been dominating all year long. Three monthly final wins, a second place. And they did manage to get fifth to eighth in July and April as well. So they had a couple of poor months, but the good months really made up for it. The ups and downs were there, but the highs were higher than the lows. Yeah, and I think there's something to be said just for the EMEA region as a whole. I mean, there are a lot of teams being represented here. They're showing at LCQ. Really reflected to me the depth the region has, how successful they were. I mean, all four of those teams for LCQ representatives made it to day number two for LCQ, and two of them even showed up here today. It's just so intense. I think there's something to be said for that. But as well, I still think STMN are going to be a strong opposition when it came to prepping, to planning for ESL Mobile Masters. I felt like their opening day was something special. And I think if you give these guys ample time with the maps, and scouting their opponents, I think they can get the job done. I mean, that's the thing, you know, SEMEN had to come through at LCQ, but they showed us at LCQ why they deserve to beat at Worlds, beat Clash, VNE and Esporting, and Reject. And Reject, they've been, you know, causing problems for Crazy Raccoon all year long, and it was a quick 3 0 sweep to STMN. We're going to start things off in Hard Rock Mine in Gem Grab, where 8 bit will be the first pick from Zeta Division. I like that start. Obviously, going to be able to TP away when you're in danger. Ban wise, we're looking at the Sandy Stew and Colette from Zeta Division, and STMN going to get the Charlie out the way. No surprise <laughs> there. And the Sandy and Rosa, too. Yeah, I'm not expecting to see Charlie again today. Yesterday, 27 bans. And fun fact, there were 27 sets yesterday, 100% of the time. <laughs> Time. The team that had the first pick were not allowed to select that brawler. Mr. P going to be taking us on the 2-3 turn here. Sandy, another one that's very popular in this map. And I will say, Zeta Division taking 8-bit. He is a powerful brawler, but I know in the North American meta, especially with STMN, they have praised this brawler as just a solid brawler overall, but especially in a, a mode like Hard Rock Mine and Jim Grab. He's special with the TP. 
I mean, that's the thing, though. You know, because they praise it so much, they must have played against. They must know how to counter it. And obviously, they think that Ruffs and Mr. P are the brawlers to be able to do just that. But Buster added to the mix as well. That's going to be a real hard time for Mr. P. Hasn't got the DPS to deal with it. And when he's bouncing those shots back with the shield, it's going to be even harder as well. You kind of just question, SDM are going to have to get a lot of power-ups with this Ruffs here. That's the only way they're going to be able to combat this Buster. And Zeta and Rico as well to be able to bring that bounce ability back to them as well as SDMN. I'm wondering if SDMN go with the Shelly here. I, I see we have some really tanky brawlers on the Zeta division side. And Mr. P, solid. But this will be a good opposition as well. They have to get some way to deal with the high health points and maybe even use Lou as a mid. Now they got a little versatility in this composition. All I know is when I see that they have Buster in 8-bit, the amount of health points and HP and just the amount of firepower that they have. Colonel Ruffs, Mr. P, not necessarily going to be those quick kill kinds of brawlers or your top fraggers for your team. But Lou is something special right now in the meta. The hypercharge has really elevated him. He was a top three played brawler and also number uh, top three in bands as well. So he's just consistent. He's shown up a ton. It's just a special brawler right now. I mean, it really is. You see, I, I see all the way through and I'm enjoying the, the Zeta Division draft more than anything. But then this Lou comes through and you know that can change a game with a click of his fingers. Getting into it there in first game of day two at the World Finals. Meow starting strong on the right hand side, getting a few bounces round. But initially, SCMN seem on top. Makes sense to throw Bobby in the mid for me here. They're going to be wanting to contend against Naui, who's on the buster. And of course, having him in the mid, throw it on ice rings to gain area control. I think it's going to work really well. But Meow already marching down this right hand side. Rico lane is such a tough thing to deal with on this map. Yeah, it really is. I'm not sure if they, well, obviously, they can't really send the, the, the roofs over to that side either. Oh, great stuff. Oh, ho, ho. coming through with the multi ball launcher. Meow takes two down. Gero is going to be able to claim those gems nice and easy. No pushback from SD man on grabbing those meow surely gonna go down multi-ball launcher used once more but now he picks a kill up on the left hand side and gero should be able to keep control a little bit longer turret gonna be placed down but he's gonna get that or just manages to get back to his tp before sans cleans it up that's a great demonstration of exactly what 8-bit can bring to the table on this map especially if you use the gear that allows for an extra gadget as well now you've got four teleports a game along with your super and if gero's beaming the way he is this is gonna look like easy money for zeta division but fortunately for stmn they've reclaimed in the mid they have access to gaining these mines and they are going to be able to pile up some gems as a result i mean meow just walks up the lane uses the gadget and he gets a kill bobby's gonna go down as well now he versus i mean gero versus zara in this mid tp back as the tent gem spawns gero starts the count for zeta division and stmn have got work to do with 12 seconds to go, they're going to have to hustle here, focusing Zar right now. It's going to be a trade there as Meowie releases the super. Bobby misses the hypercharge as well. The TP, the freeze goes down, though. They get the pickup. Bobby in position for another super as well. Zeta able to pick up 10 gems, but a reset of the countdown. Yeah, Meow reclaims those gems. Now he's just going to try and deflate this pressure, go for the aggressive play. But he goes down, and now he's going to be respawning back all the way. Zar going to be able to throw this down. Good kill from Meow, though. Five seconds on the clock, and Sans is nowhere to be seen. Zeta, take game one. Who came down to the wire a little bit though. Zeta Division, some big beams coming in through 8-bit. And I think there's one way to describe how they played that. They just used brute force and walked it down the middle. I mean, to be honest with you, I feel like they just took advantage of the composition that they're bringing. You know, I've heard mixed comments on Buster in the meta, but I just think when you pair all of these brawlers together, you have a top frag with a lane of Rico. I think this is a strong composition here. And I think it's something that might be able to get the job done. Well, game number two kicks off. Zeta Division can close this first set out already if they manage to win this one. A great start from Gero there as he beams down Bobby. Should be able to pick up these two gems off his side, but take some heavy fire to the face, almost frozen down. And Meow trying to make some moves on the right-hand side. Obviously, Bouncy Castle isn't his gadget of choice, so can't just heal up when he wants to. Meow just going to take some time here to breathe. Gero still in the mid here, drops his first super now. Looking to isolate against Mr. P, who's going to have to recover. Bobby taking over the left-hand side. A freeze on Denaui as well in this Lou versus Buster matchup is something they're going to be looking forward to. Lou, a very solid option into these tankier brawlers. The freezes can get some extra added benefit. And just like that, he's got a super, he's got a hypercharge, and that could shift the entire game. Yeah, power up along the way as well, so going to be able to do more damage. And a bit more HP along the way. There's the hypercharge. Now he's going to be frozen solid on the spot. Bobby cycles it out as well. Gero's going to be his next target. Gets the super on him too. Instant freeze. Meow defending well, but he's on it now as well. Slipping and sliding, can't move anywhere. And SGMN reclaim control. 
This is how SD men have to play this composition. They have to have area control and they have to pick one brawler at a time and focus it. You saw immediately Bobby finds the matchup on Anawi, gets the super freeze, gets the easy lineups, and Carol's gonna have to recover his assault too. Sans and Meow have been fighting all set long though. They're gonna be trying to get a piece of the action here as Carol is forced to get some assistance there under the strong player in Sans and all of a sudden Zeta Division looking a little more alive. Yeah, reclaiming some ground now. Now he's gotta make a move down this left hand side and get something going. TP back, not sure if that was really needed to be honest, they had some great control with him up there. Bobby's gonna have this super, and now he's not gonna know he has. There's the gadget as well to get some freeze off, but not fully frozen just yet. Meow destroying on the right hand side, gets two, just are alive. Gero grabs those gems, TP's out, and Zay to start the count yet again. It's a runaway once again. The teleportation showing its value now. Sans in pursuit. Zara on the right hand in low HP. Meow defending his teammate now. Sandbags on the ground as Garo goes to the left. Gonna have to defend against Bobby here and Mr. P. Not gonna be able to do enough damage. Our European number one seed takes set number one. Well. I mean, they really went. Zeta went down to the grave, and now they have risen again because this is the Zeta we've been seeing all year long, and they're back and ready to fight at the World Finals. You know, I love Lou as a brawler. I see where STMN are coming from there. I'm not sure how to feel about that 2-3 turn. I almost felt like it was a lot harder work for them. They were still competing. They were still contending. The mechanics were good, but I feel like Zeta Division just set themselves up for a little bit more success. I felt like that was really hard for STMN to deal with. Yeah, I mean, in my Zeta had the game before it they even loaded in. The draft went so right for them. If you can pick up Rico on a map like this, you know it's going to be solid. Same with the Buster. He might have not done in much in game two, but game one he destroyed. And I mean, there was a little bit of a reset here, but STMN couldn't get any gems out in either of the games. And they looked good in game two. Don't get me wrong, STMN looked very good in game two. But the massive turnaround coming in from Meow on this right-hand side, I think this is it here. Multi-ball launcher, super, and it's gorgeous. So good from him, and I missed it in the moment, but I'm glad I got to see it again now. Yeah, that's a highlight reel of a play right there. I mean, Meow just absolutely crushing with that super, and it's showing in the kill feed as well. Nine and 266 DPS. Gotta think that was an MVP kind of play for that set. I mean, nine kills for Meow, that's absolutely huge. But look at the DPS on the side of STMN. It's absolutely huge. And overall, you know, the kills are looking higher than the average of that of Zeta Division. But it's not about that. It's about getting those gems and getting back to your spawn with them successfully. And that's what Zeta did so well. I'm really impressed so far, so good for them. I think this is going to be tough just throughout the entire day, obviously. But Group C is something special. And now STMN going to have to just move forward one at a time here. Kaboom Canyon going to be our next map of choice. And I found Kaboom Canyon to be a little bit interesting when studying scrims this week, when watching yesterday. A brawler that's obviously one of my favorites, but really surprised me that he showed up as much as he did is Gale Tribe Gaming, especially yesterday. Don't get Utilize me this bra Okay, buddy. Don't, don't hate. Don't hate. I was surprised too, though. Genuinely, I, I'm as big as advocate. Love the guy. But I was really shocked to see as much as I did of him. I mean, he was one of the most played brawlers, had about a 50% win rate yesterday. But people are using the Spring Ejector on this map, and I'm still a little shocked that they do. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's like, there's no real point of bringing the twist. You know, it's not really going to do that much for you. Cordelia's going to be the first pick coming in from STMN, and I really like that. And to touch on your point, Look where Gale is, Kenny. <laughs> clearly, clearly has got some legs in this in this game mode and map because spanned out by STMN. The meta is just so interesting right now, too. We've got a lot of hypercharged brawlers. We have Charlie in the mix, but you got to keep those long range options in mind, too, which is why you're going to see somebody like Nani entering the band stage. I think a very slept on and powerful brawler in the meta. Colette is an absolute monster on this map as well. The hypercharge adding some benefit, but already a high DPS option, and especially in a tankier meta, is going to be a problem. But it's about time we introduce the train conductor here today. This is a map where Chuck is going to shine. And it's bold. It's really bold because it's been played, it's worked sometimes. It's failed others, and it's a very hit or miss brawler. I said this yesterday you either do so well with it or you get absolutely destroyed. And Cordelis, in my eyes, is the best counter to it on this map. And it was first picked by STMN, and they still go with Chuck into it, clearly confident in that pick. I guess they're just really relying on the DPS that it can bring. But to your point, we've seen this be a direct answer into Chuck. Cordelius is somebody that can shut up the Shadow Realm, throw them down under, and the second that happens, even mid-super for Chuck, it's going to get disrupted. He's going to be more vulnerable. Of course, Cordelius getting a little buff in the underworld as well. Another high DPS option, though, is Lola. I think Zeta Division are making it pretty clear. They are looking to attack, attack, attack. 
it definitely makes sense. D good DPS, but even more DPS coming out of STMN now as 8-Bit joins Cordelia's on their side. They have this last pick, but Zeta Division have that final one. So we'll see where STMN go. They're going to have to be pretty versatile here, because obviously Zeta Division, they're pretty good at drafting, pretty good at pivoting on the fly. And they're going to go with a Jesse. Don't love it, don't hate it, but overall, I'm really liking STMN's comp. We saw STMN utilize this Brawler over at LCQ in this mode as well, and it can really provide a lot of output onto the high safe as well. You know, it's interesting, I, I don't think Cordelius is necessarily built to be that offensive threat, but they pair their other two picks with 8-Bit, who's just, I think, a powerful Brawler. The other side hasn't really chosen a wall break option, so I'm curious to see if they do for the turrets or maybe go with something like a bell for the bounce shot. But they're going to go with the spawners in EVE to kind of traverse over this water. Uh, but into the hatchlings as well, you know, we've got Jesse going here. So I feel like there are definitely a couple of matchups favored for STMN. Yeah, I mean, Jesse into the EVE, bouncing off those babies, bouncing off uh, Lola's ego. It's a very solid pick. And it kind of feels like Zeta Division are picking into very heavy counters in my eyes. I'm not sure if you feel the same way, but Chuck into a Cordelius, Eve and Lola into a Jesse. It feels a little weird for me. I think STMN's composition just plays really well into Zeta Division's comp. And then on top of that, it's good for Heist. I mean, it's hard to really nitpick at STMN right now, where Zeta Division are just going to have to exude some confidence. They're going to have to play this right. They have options to get to the other end and to do some serious damage, but I think they're going to have to take care of the game quickly. I don't think STMN are afraid to drag this out. Yeah, well, good start from Zeta as Gero gets a nice kill. Some great shots on Bobby as well, babies. And the Parasite's already going to be spawning in here. Zark getting some great shots onto Gero, though, but cleaned up on Meow. Great team play from Zeta so far. Sands now going to have to play defense here, and now he's starting to kick into high gear as Bobby has to play against Meow on the other end. Shadow Realm pick up there, and Sands showing off why that matchup can work at times. Bobby going to have to recover for now, and still big contention in this mid area. Yeah, well, Bobby being dominated by Meow now, gonna get rid of that turret as well, and boosted booster it is, but now he's coming forward, great stuff from him, and that's gonna be damage on safe, but base race, turret comes down, machine gun turret from Jesse, and Sans has got the damage gear activated, massive from them, but also, Zeta Vision again, something done, not able to get this down, Energize coming through from Zara as well, and huge from STMN. And now Bobby's in the mix as well, they're really laying it on to this high safe here, Zara surviving as Meow is forced onto the high safe in his spawn side, Garo on the other end as well, the bounce shot goes through, 1k to go, and it's going to be a toughie here, relying on the Jesse turret to get it done, and STMN in a base race, come out on top. So much better from STMN there. You know, Zeta Division looked so good off the start, but they let it slip, they let a base race happen. Damage gear, Jesse turret, got that machine gun coming through as well with the gadget, and it looks so good for STMN. Zeta had the much better start, more kills, more control, but you can't let a base race like that slip. Yeah, it was a little bit of a game of chicken, right? You saw that Zeta Division were in the middle of the base race and said, oh, I don't think we're going to come out on top on this one. We got to turn around. And I think at that moment, it was really the point of no return for them. STMN were too late to the gas pedal there. But right now, it's about to be a team wipe. The European squad getting some big time takedowns. And these poles already being established now by now. He wants to be able to TP straight to that safe. Establishes his third one up top here. Well, should do in just a second, but doesn't really want to reveal himself just yet. Now getting some good shots through, but not in the best of spots against this Jesse with his ego placed up. But at least it's behind him. STMN took some serious losses here early on, so the fact that they haven't given up any percentage yet is huge. Now he, though, does have that super. Already charged up. They're just holding on to the mid. Now going to activate it. Sees a weak Bobby. Takes his opportunity. Picks up a kill here. Zar firing some shots down and finally gets the last pull connected to that high safe. That's where things can start to get really scary for STM inside. And the pinch was going to come in. So now he goes towards his post and goes all the way back. Chugging down that train line. But now maybe try to get some work done against Bobby. as. STMN start to fight back. Zeta, some good shots through. They're just levitating over this water, and now he's going to go in. Oh, I think that was Realm missed by Sans there. Now he gets out, but not going to go any further than that. Not without some damage along the way, though. They've already done a lot to the safe. It's tough, too, at a professional level. Missed shots like that can add up to extra percentage points. We saw in game number one, once STMN got a breakaway, they were good to go. So sometimes one offensive threat is all it takes. But right now, they just have to find a way this high save. And this is their first real opportunity. Jesse powering up her turret. The damage piling on now. And it's still continuing to go. 8-bit in the mix as well. And it's going to be a big threat here. 50% now less to go for STMN. I mean, that's all it needs for STMN to take the lead. They have to be way more careful when defending this. Now he's going to be able to come back to this mid now. Ego and freeze frame on the left hand side. Sans can't get it done against Meow on the right. Gero is going to be able to tank a few shots here, but it did go up towards his baby rather than Meow, which is good for Zeta. They re-establish control and do have the lead and the control with 30 seconds on the clock. 
2%, all the difference in the world. And now he goes to the underworld. Now Sands with a big pickup here and perfectly timed as well. They needed that defense and it opens a lane on the left-hand side. Bobby piling it up here. The credit's going down. Sands in the mid now. Garo have to respond, but it's all STMN for now. Chuck going to the other end. Shots piling up for STMN. Turret on the ground as well. It's neck and neck back and forth right now, but STMN clears away. We've got a tie ball game. Just as Zeta were looking good, STMN strike twice. Beautiful pushes from them. And Zeta had the control pretty much all the way through, but all it needs is an 8-bit turret, an 8-bit and a Jesse to get the job done. And STMN played that perfectly. They knew they weren't gonna have control all the way through, and they just took their moments. I mean, we talked about it pre-draft phase, right? It, it was hard to get nitpicky at all. Matchups, check. Defensive option, check. Perfect matchups in the Zeta division, check. I, I mean, it just felt like Steph's team and were set up from the get-go, and even in, like, games number two early on, where a little bit of a struggle to get control right the second they got through that wall. They just had options. They have a Jesse turret. They have 8-bit, especially if you get him that extra damage. Things got out of hand so quickly. I mean, we've got to talk about that draft, because... It wasn't like STMN counterpicked them. They counterpicked themselves. And that's what I was so confused about. I don't know if they kind of thought, oh, we've got Chuck, we can do it anyway, we'll make something happen. But that's just not how it played out for them. Yes, they had control at the start. Yes, they looked decent. But as soon as STMN started going, you know that it's gonna be over for Zeta Vision. They had the matchup and they had the base race capability. Yeah, hard to say what they were looking for there. I mean, Cordelius, of course, that first overall pick, and then immediately into the Chuck. I, I think it was probably just the strategy from the get-go, a boat of confidence. Uh, this has worked before. This is gonna have to be what we do. And, and the defense of Zeta Division, they did have a lot of kills, but unfortunately for this game mode, that doesn't super matter. It's all about getting that high safe damage, and STMN just simply did that better. Yeah, some good crowd reactions in there as well. <laughs> getting hyped up for STMN. Clearly have the fan support. Kill-wise and stat-wise, though, 5-3-3 for the side of uh, uh, STMN. 1-8-2, 1-9-2, and 3-19 from Bobby. Great performance out of him. But top DPS and top kills both go to Meow and still come out on the bottom. Yeah, back-to-back -back sets where Meow is just simply putting up numbers. A phenomenal player and showing up on the big day. But again, for STMN, kills weren't what they needed. And I think the fact that Zeta Division really felt like they had a couple players piling them on just reflects how good the offense was from STMN there. In a mode like that, that is so important. And as we move forward on to Ring of Fire, I think Zeta Division are really going to have to reflect on that. You know, you can be confident in your strategy, but against the world's best, sometimes you really got to think through, hey, we're getting countered by some of the best dudes in the world maybe we should think differently maybe we should play into the matchups there's a lot to juggle in this draft phase i think we're really starting to learn that on set number three here today well ring of fire and hot zone will be a mode where one of them will move ahead once more it's going to be 2-1 after this one depending on who will go to is the question lou going to be an absolute fiend on this map i'm sure it's probably <laughs> going to be banned out instantly by the team who doesn't have that first pick and more than likely along with charlie Lose a must ban for me here. He was the number one played brawler yesterday, a top three ban yesterday, and this mode is somewhere he can absolutely shine. His super covers the entire map. Now we add into the mix that his hypercharge can freeze an opponent instantly. Again, we saw what it could do earlier today, even piling up kills for teams if necessary. Gray, a good shout to me as well. I think Gray is a very slept on brawler right now, and especially in a mode where you are relying on getting to the point of interest very quickly in the mid there. Gray is somebody that can allow you to do that. Pam going to be our first overall selection. Election. I think a very safe and square pick. I love it for pick number one. Yeah, great pick. And I, as you say, number one pick, it's kind of the smart decision. You've got to go for something safe, something that can't really be countered that much. Yes, it can be countered, but it's always going to have legs in no matter what matchup that pans in. That's the thing. Close range DPS, long range spray, able to keep people quite low. So I think that's a solid pick from STMN from their number one. Zay's division now have these next two. Need to try and counter it out, but also need to think a bit further down the line as well. I like the Rosaban from both sides. I think that's very solid as well. But Colette is one of the brawlers that does counter Pam. But still, not really the best brawler on Ring of Fire. Kind of just a counter brawler. I think this is a pretty solid pairing from Zeta Division, though. I imagine that Stu's going to bring in the speed zone here. Colette is something that can threaten high health point brawlers, somebody like Pam, for example. And like you mentioned, too, it's very hard to have a direct counter into Pam. But I think Colette and Stu as a pairing is just a powerful combination for this map. Yeah, it's a great pair. STMan going to bring in the bell, though. Bit of bounces between them, might get rid of some speed zones along the way, and a Mr. P coming in once more. Didn't work out too well in that first set, but obviously against Colette, against Stu, those those porters coming in, definitely gonna do a lot of work, tanking that single range shot, uh, that single projectile, should I say, 
of Colette and Stu. Yes, he can clean him up a little bit faster than Colette, but at the same time, it's going to be very obstructive for him. Curious to see what Zeta Division go here. I've seen Chuck show up a good bit here in two of these matchups. Not necessarily sure that's what they're going to want. They're actually going to go with Carl here, who I feel like is still a really solid brawler overall, but definitely not somebody we've seen much this weekend. You know, I look at this STM Enkel, but it just looks so diverse. It looks really solid to me. I like the way that they've shaped up, but the Carl is really scary for me, actually, especially for the side of that STM N roster, because they've got the Mr. P. Gonna dominate that as soon as the flying hook comes in. Same with uh, same with the Pam as well. Can't really do too much against the Carl who's spinning around because it takes so long to get that shot out, and it's only going in one direction. Yeah, I gotta think Carl's just a solid brawler for this map. Pretty decent in the meta, and then seeing Mr. P with all the spawners, of course, with the pickaxe, he's gonna be able to slice right through it. 1-1 one, one overall, kicking off set number three of our first match of the day. This one is very important. Yeah, it really is. Well, Gotcha was already popped there from Zeta Vision. Has that gadget over his head, but not getting most value out of it. Garo sliding around this right-hand side. Now going to be in the 1v1 versus the Pan. But as soon as he gets the super, he should be doing all right. Managed to grab it now and gets the kill on the way. Meow cleans up the left, and Bobby left alone. Meow initiating contact on the left hand end with a dash forward, a perfectly placed super. Bobby started strong there, has the nest eggs, took down the speed zone. Now he really hasn't been able to generate any supers to get aggressive, which is Stu's biggest strength. I think as team in, despite being down a little bit, are still very much in it. And ooh, a nice tag there from Bobby, a pickup from Zar as well. Now complete control for STM in. Oh, Meow's fl flown under the radar beautifully there, and he's really been the star man so far from Zeta Division. Gero's gonna be able to pick up that Tora, but instantly replaced by Sans, getting some good shots through. Spin now comes in, might be able to get Bobby, but actually falls short. Super was eventually grasped by Naui here, and same from Meowie comes through the hyper charge. He's making all the moves for Zeta, and he's coming through massively for them. Should be able to take the lead now. Huge play from him, saving Zeta. Three blue brawlers standing strong right now. Meow has been something to watch. They're sending two to address him. A super going down, a pickup of one. He's gonna get a trade. Naui, Garo, gonna be able to keep hunkering down in the mid here. They're well past 60%. Huge advantage to Sata Division right now. Garo almost gets two as well. Bobby falls low, can't really aggress. Porter's now coming forwards, but with the two of them there, shouldn't really be doing too much. Mark directly onto Naui. 20% left for Zeta Division. About 45 or 55 now for STMN. They've got to make a huge comeback and they're getting control. Porter's established further up from Zara as well. And a mark missed by Bobby. The expert marksman in Bobby going to have to hit some serious shots right now. Not a lot left for Zeta Division, but STMN with a real opportunity every time Meow dives in as well with that super. He makes contact great, but it's extra percentage points as well as now Meow skates up the map alongside Naui there. A little tailspin from Garo, and they're well above 90 at this point. STMN back to the mid with a lot of work to do. I mean, the Porter just cleaned up uh, Naui on the bottom side. Sans slotting back in, trying to keep Gero out these back lines, stopping him from coming in. Meow goes in way too aggressive, and now it's 95 to 94. Gero sweeps in. Oh, he gets it done. He gets it. 100 to 99. And Zeta take it. Unbelievable here. What a close call. I really thought SCMM were going to be able to clutch that up. But the boys over in Zeta Division, ice in their veins, show up when it matters most for a set number three. STMN on their back heels now. What a play from Zeta Division. Pure brilliance coming in from Gero in the closing seconds of the first game of Ring of Fire. Starting from square one once again, though. STMN coming through the mid, but now he with some good chains. Gassy Heel comes along, but he does fall anyway. The best competition in the world, bringing out the best in both of these teams right now, as Meow, a star player so far here today, is trying to keep the pressure alive. Now he dashing back and forth right now. Bobby dipping his toes in. Sands now, the beefy brawler with 9,600 HP, clearly established alongside that healing station. He's even willing to defend the healing station. They're gonna send Meow in to use a super just to get rid of it as a scrap sucker goes down. A great counter into Stu here, but they still survive. Nonetheless though, STMN mean business right now. They are close to 50. Well, Spin comes in from Gero on that right hand side. Does have to back off though, uses it as an escape mechanism rather than going aggressive. Now he's falling low, is gonna go down as well. Sent back to spawn by Sans. Gero's gonna fall too, but here comes the hyper charge. Spirit following shortly behind, gets the kill and keeps some control for his team. 30% behind though, and Bobby's still sitting in the mid. Good on Bobby to start rotating in here. The objective is to getting into that hot zone. And even if you're trading, Brawler Sands can pick up a lot of time here with the amount of health points he has. Multitasking right now with Garo. Meow hitting shots. Star on the left hand in, trying to get some extra tags. And Seda slowly climbing their way back into this as Meow establishes a little more control. A missed dash, but now Meowie, or excuse me, Nowie there to help. 
Yeah, I mean, Meow did a great job there to deflate some pressure. Turret coming in, Garrow's gonna use that flying hook forwards, join Naoi on this right-hand side, try pinch down, but it gets him killed rather than doing anything helpful. Garrow's gonna be able to sweep in and get that as well. Nice spin from him, should fall down. Great shots from Sans coming in now, and they're walking away with the lead. Stamina this time with a little bit of a lead. Hypercharge inbounds though in the backhand end as well. Another one going down as well. Make it two. Meow with a pop off here. It's becoming closer and closer as Bobby hits a nice and very pivotal super here. It's going to come down to the wire once again. Mr. P. Paul's coming in now. That's going to be hard for now. He needs to make an escape but can't get anywhere. Gero last flying hook trying to get the super. Gets it again. Trying to make the same move as last game. But this time it's not happening. An STMN even out hot zone. You can feel the energy from the crowd here. After the games, they're loud, but everybody holding their breath right now. This is about as intense as it gets for a World Finals match. Great stuff from STMN to bring this back. Then Gero trying to make the same move again towards the end of the game, but not happening this time. And I will say, it really is Meow making a lot of the moves. Same with Gero. Now he's playing it well as well, but I feel like he's got to be a bit more careful with a few of these dashes. Seems to be over-aggressing a little bit in my eyes. Got to have a perfect start here, making sure you establish control. Start off with a little bit of a lead, and even some pickups early can make a huge difference. As Zara looks to accomplish that for his team. Strikes Garo, and now it's going to be a 3v2 situation. Sands with a decent amount of HP here, too. Popping a Scrap Sucker a little preemptively, too. Those gadgets are very valuable as well. And it's basically a tie ball game right now as both teams are continued to contest for the mid. Yeah, Meow gets marked, but does get the kill. Garo going to come around the right-hand side, and a team wipe for Zeta Division. One by one by one, all of STMN fall, and Zeta claim control. What a play there from Zeta Division. A strong lead here now in game number three as STMN looks to get back into their footing. They're going to have to deal with a strong Garrow, though, and they finally take it down. Meow looking for a strike as well. Doesn't quite get it there. Now he super available back and forth right now as they try and isolate that brawler. And now STMN climbing towards that 30% marker with a lot of work to go. Now Meow has this hype charge now. STMN have to be careful, but a mark to Garrow over aggresses down the right-hand side. Turret established by Sans once more, gonna provide some heals. And Meow forced to back off yet again. Speed zone goes down, now he has to back off. But the bell bounces, causing a lot of issues for Zeta. Nice tag there from Bobby. He has been making those supers count, and now it's STMN with the lead here. Zeta on their back heels. They can't even touch the grass for all those brawlers, but I do see Meow with a hypercharge here. Now he trying to push up as well, and here comes Meow as well. Super goes down. Not a ton of connections, but a final blow from the grave as well as Garo gets involved here. It's going to be a tag for him, a strike as well, and now Meow looking to pinch here. The porter clutching up as well, providing a shield for STMN. Scrapsucker going down as well, and they're going to be able to overwhelm them with HP for a moment, but Zeta Division are back. 10% all that's needed for STMN, but Garrow survives for so long. Now Zeta come in, super there for Meow, gonna go for it as well, but it's not enough. STMN take hot zone and move 2-1 up. Stamina down 1%, literally came down to the final moment in game number one. Zeta Division nearly stole a set from them. Instead though, they dig deep put their heels in the ground and get control of set number three. This is huge. They now go into set number four, a little less pressure off them and going into the European number one seed. This is big for establishing this group C. STMN dig deep. They come from behind in hot zone. Surely gotta be a bit of a mental issue when you lose by 1%, a brilliant play by Gero, and I hope we see it here again, because it was time and time again, getting kills, but just not getting the percentage overall for the side of Zeta, and here it is. Look at this, I thought the Pam turret was gonna kill him as well. <laughs> I thought he was gonna die right there, but I think the shield maybe kept him alive, because obviously it dampens that damage. Every little interaction was just brilliant in this game, and this is the best Brawl's got to offer in 2023. You can even see the reaction from the STM inside, just shaking their heads. Unbelievable stuff. I believe it was 86 HP. That's about as close of a call as I've maybe ever seen. Garrow and the Carl, though, made a huge difference throughout that. STM in, do squeeze by there in the final two games. A lot of excitement going down as well. Can't ask for much better from a Brawl Stars match. Yeah, hearing some of those comms as well, STM in getting hyped, playing together brilliantly as a team in the closing seconds of some of those games. 5-3-3 for STMN here, 2-8-6. And yes, Meow and Nari, uh, Meow and Gero played brilliantly through that one on a couple of those brawlers. But now, you know, he's the glue. He's the one making some of the plays. He's the one playing that stew in the mid, and you can't really expect too much from that stew.
yeah, three straight sets of Meow just popping off here. And ST Min, I feel like, have just been three consistent guys right now. They're playing as a unit, everybody doing their part here, firing on all cylinders from this side. And now some smiles going down as well. That's a big deal. The mood seemingly good. And now it's Zeta Division with all of the pressure. They have to win two straight sets here. And just after watching these first three that we've had, it has taken everything just to get one set at a time. And it's, it's anybody's game. That's the thing, although STMN need one, Zeta Vision can quite easily get two. That's the thing. It's so close between these two teams, but we're heading into knockout out in the open. Should slow down the pace after that one. Give me and Kenny a little bit of time to catch up, <laughs> because that last set was genuinely incredible. Oh, it's been something else, man. And I mean, this is exactly what we expected. On day number one, you know, we talked about how good it was going to be, and the caster hive mind had a pretty good feel of what was going to happen, but I think all of us could agree, coming into Group C, coming into Group D, all of these teams have been so darn good this year. Some powerhouses in the Brawl Stars universe, and STMN, one away from starting this group stage off one and zero here, after coming off a semi-finals performance in Worlds last year, and Meg is somebody fierce right now. This this is a brawler that when talking to players, they really like having this for the mode because of how much HP Meg can bring to the table. If that storm starts to close in, heavy firepower, a lot of health points. And guess what? Even if you take down the big robot, you still got Meg and a pistol when she comes out of that form. Hey, you know me. I'm not going to make any comments, but if you're an avid Brawl Stars watcher, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm thinking. You know what I'm thinking. That's all I'm saying. Bands, though, they're looking pretty solid. Charlie the Band out as well as obviously the Lou. I think those are uh, the, the two obvious bands at this point, regardless of the map, but STMN coming with the Piper, feeling confident, feeling bold, and we know any of those players in ST Main could pick up that brawler and put on a show. Yeah, Bobby and Zara are two notable sharpshooters with the Piper over the long history of Brawl Stars up to this point, so I'm very excited to see that brawler. It's good on this map. I think they're looking for some high damage here, maybe some other brawlers to keep in mind as well, and I think that might have been part of the influence for why they banned Nani. One, because it's so good here, but it's a good brawler on this map. They are really good at using it. Uh, why the heck not, right? And Gray doing his little dancey dance, and we know Sans can pick up that brawler and make some serious moves. We've seen it in the past, and I'm sure we'll see it again now. Sage Division back over to them for the next couple of picks, and then STMN will have the final say in this draft. Out in the open is the map. We'll see if Sage Division choose to continue this kind of aggressive stance on it, I feel, rather than play a bit more of a sharp shooter, or if they'll pivot a little bit and try contest against this Piper. Yes, Nani's banned out. It's going to be very difficult. We've still got some on the map, uh, on, on the picks we could go with. Brock, those kind of sharp shooter brawlers. We're going to see a Gene. I do like that. Yeah, I'm kind of looking out for a Pam here as well, I think. I see two sharpshooters. I see a brawler that could potentially have a lot of health points, healing station. And I think that bigging up Gene here, a common counter into somebody like Piper could be really good. They may be looking for spawners as well, like Mr. P here. I think they're going to have to really round out their composition here with S-Team. And obviously, depending on what this pick number five is. But I do think Zeta Division have great options available. There's still a lot to choose from for both of these sides here. So Division do have this next pick. Two seconds left to make it. It's going to be the Brock. He knew that it's kind of still looming. The, the long range can break the wall, give them a bit of an advantage in the start, and especially if you can get Meg a bit more aggressive, give her a bit more of a chance to get forwards, then I think it's a solid pick. You know, with that wall break, send her straight through. But STMN definitely going to have something to say. I wonder if STMN get aggressive here. I mean, I see Brock, who's a little bit of a squishier brawler. Gene, who doesn't deal the best with brawlers up close in the face. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go with Buster here. They also have the deflector as well. So if there are incoming rockets, projectiles from Gene, or if it's just the heavy firepower of Meow on the Meg, assuming he plays it, Buster can really help with that. So I think two very different compositions, but I see the merit in both. Well, STMN can close it out. Or Zeta Division can bring it back and play a set number five. Don't think this game could really get any closer. I'm dreaming to see a set five here. Sadly, cheering for Zeta Division in this set, that means. But at the same time, either of them can win it. Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned before, getting one set has taken everything here. And to be expected, some wall breaks are going down for both sides. We're going to get kicking off here. A much more aggressive start than we're used to seeing as well. Gray utilizing a gadget that we don't always see. He's going to be throwing down the grand piano here, trying to get that. And Garo making a nice connection as well, so it's going to be STM in a little bit on the defensive here, as Sans already has a supercharged up. Well, here he is then. Obviously getting it from charging it by stood next to his teammates. But it is going to go down, and now he didn't waste his ammo shooting it. So we'll have some to back him off in the end. 2v1 down this right-hand side. But Meow and Garo trying to give the same treatment to Bobby on the left. 
Looked like Sans was trying to kind of walk his team forward, get some control. The problem is, though, that Meg still outranges Buster, and then you have to rely on Zara to hit a lot of tags on the Meg. I think that matchup's going to be a little bit of a toughie for him here. As once again, it's back to Zade Division in control. Sans doing the same thing, walking up the right-hand side. A nice TP, though. A pull on the other end is, though, and it's in trouble. Makes the connection there. It's just alone. Now he now. It's going to be Zar, Bobby, going to be able to pick up this round for STMN as they close things out in the fog. Yeah, he knows he can't win that one, and a great connection from Piper there to be able to take down the slow down Gene. Great stuff from him, but three supers ready to roll for the side of STMN and none for Zeta. That can't feel good. Reset now. Round number two, Zeta Division. Need to go too straight here. They can't afford to give STMN a powerhouse of a team in early lead here. Bobby, Super in hand, Sans, Zar, all three of them equipped, and now they're going to be walking forward, rushing it down, a little W key action going in, but the pull going through, Sans tries to counter, Zar with the TP though, now is weak, they have to find a way to get in there, Zar had another TP, but didn't get out in time, they strike first, and now it's Bobby, in a very difficult situation, two brawlers that can arguably do so well into him. That was really cool from Bobby, TP in, jump out, trying to get some damage with those bombs, but didn't find anything, and it was Naui and Meow who now are able to heal up, Bobby just doesn't want to feed these supers, retreats back into the gas and accepting defeat in this round. Back even. I think that was really strategical from him too. And yeah, Gray did end up having a teleport there. I think was trying to get away, get in, get out situation. But Zeta Division had too quick of reflexes there. It's now going to be a 1-1 in our very opening game of set number four. A rocket rain ready to roll from Garo here. Pull available as well. And that's flown under the radar too. They're not going to know he's got it. Well, with that connecting homemade recipe, they are. Now he's just trying to deflate some pressure after that hit did connect to Meow. Got to be cautious about this pull, because that is going to be the game changer for Zeta. Both sides are equipped with supers as well, something that makes a huge difference in this game mode, Ooh. especially towards those in games. Another nice connection as well. Bobby, low HP though, is forced to dive away, does manage to survive, but as a result, Zeta Division are going to have some control. Yeah, go rain and fire on Sans, but <laughs> makes no connections whatsoever. Restarting on this gene pull, then not helpful in the decisive round. Sans in the back. Going to be pinching round with the shield now as well. Going to use that, but really not gain much ground from it. Now we're going to be so helpful in these closing seconds, just as Sans is. And Gero needs to keep on peppering down, needs to keep him low. Meow doing the same. Sans cannot be allowed to heal it, and they're doing a good job of it. And now the fog starting to close in. This is where things get intense. Stamina strike first. The TB through the response back. Sans with the pull. Now deflecting, but the fog closing in, and the fog getting the kill there. Seda Division survive and pick up the first game. And how close it was as well. I didn't even see how Piper managed to die. I'm not sure <laughs> how he went down, but it was obviously up top, some connections made, but it looked like an STMN round to me. When it was closing in, Buster's still alive. You expect STMN to take it, but Zeta Division made it happen. Again, it's almost like Meg has two lives towards those end games. It's something really difficult to take care of. You gotta deal with the robot, and then you gotta deal with the regular brawler as well, as once again, STMN kicking things off with some wall break strategy. Garo on the other end wants to open things up, and Bobby, or excuse me, Zara just letting him lose. He even makes the connection as well. That's actually gonna be a takedown for both ends. Now it's a 2v2. You know, Sans trying to get some shots onto Naui here, wants his shield, but Bobby's gonna try and provide that to him. Meow is gonna be the one with the influential super, though, trying to get it. Now he just pinching round working towards that swing that deals so much. And Bobby, not able to do too much winning the spawn, so chooses to flank left. It's still a lot of time for the fog to really start making a difference here, but now he and Meow in control as Bobby looks to let loose on the left, going for the more open space as a sharpshooter. Now he just establishing dominance on this right hand in. Sans does have a super. He's now going to try and walk it forward as well as Meow gets the pull off. Bobby forces a super out to get out of jail. Free card is now going to put him in a 1v1 situation as now he has the HP going to walk it forward. The fog closing in, and Bobby knows the inevitable a little heart as he goes to the grave. One more for the heavily desired set number five for Zeta. One game, one round up against STMN. A long road for them to close this one out. And Zeta looking strong. Rocket Fuel comes through, breaks up some of that uh, grass. But at the same time, you see a homemade recipe not really doing too much. Gadget used by Now. He's going to get some heals from that Rocket Rain on the left. Hits one shot onto Sans, but not a lot return on that. Sans going to be moving forward to try and body block this for Zara. That was a real difficult situation for them. Keep in mind, Bobby with no super to get out of this. He's going to be moving to the left. Now a pull going through as well. Sans throwing at the block. The pull as well. Now he getting taken up here. Zara with a kill on the right hand. And now he low HP now. The connection from STMN. The teamwork going through. A team wipe to pile it all up. And how quickly that changed as well. Zane Division looked dominant. They looked like they were going to take this set. But FTMN said no, they're not done in knockout yet. 
Zar ready with his TP as well. Sans got the shield. Bobby with the jump. And only the swing available from Naui. Three supers available now for STM in as well. Naui with one in the back pocket, but Meow and Garo have two that can be big difference makers here, even though STM in are on their heels right now. Bobby is now letting loose a little bit, going towards this left hand end as Naui rotates over. They have a teleport available. Zeta Division need to regroup here. Yeah, they really do. And it looks like they are doing quite well. Gene providing some heals to the Brock and allowing him to stay in the mix. But this TP has been pretty much the issue for Garo all the way through on this Brock. His TP in two shots, three shots, and he does go down. Pull, but jumped over. Pixel perfect from Bobby. Sands has this barricade as well, though. Zar has to retreat, trying to heal up. But Zeta continue this aggression. Shield gonna provide a lot of space. But now the pull comes in. Buster got the slow. One more shot to Bobby, but one more for Meow. He goes down. Now he missed the shot, but now coming in. The swing, he's there. But the TP, no heal. Using the other star power. And now he gets it. Set five, inbound. Holy cow, what a set on our hands. The two lives from Meg really showing off there. Everybody on Zeta Division side can take a deep breath for now, but it's all coming down to this. Fans of set five across the world are rejoicing at this. This is gonna be a special match. Back and forward, back and forward. Zeta Division and SCMN putting on a show for the second day of the Brawl Stars World Finals. Brilliance from both sides, and it'll all be settled right here. This is only match number one of the day, by the way. I expect six straight just nail biters like this all day long. Both of these teams bringing their best here in this set. I was really impressed. We had some insane pulls, some pulls for Sands as well, some tags, some sharpshooter shots. It had everything I love about Brawl Stars. Both of these teams are just absolutely phenomenal. They really are. I mean, Zeta have been off form. STMN have been heavily on form. And both these teams showing their absolute best here at the World Finals. Some great moments from both these teams. And as you say, it's like Meg has two lives. And, you know, you said it in one of the earlier rounds, but in the last, it meant the most. Yeah, it's just such a powerful item to have for you, the utility it can bring to the table. And I think it's why so many people are starting to prioritize this brawler. You know, even somebody like Bobby, if you're hitting the sharp shots, it's great. A ton of damage for Piper. But with Meg, you got two lives. You even get the shield in the mix as well at times. It's just a very strong force in this game mode. And this time, across the board, I think for both sides, everybody looking to be competitors in the numbers category. I mean, the thing is as well, we just heard some comms from both of the teams, and you can see the different, you know, strategies of them. STMN, they're loud, they're aggressive, and that's how they play in game as well. And Zeta Vision, calm, composed, just a nice little nice, you know, nice, well played. <laughs> you know, it was huge. We get set five, we might be able to win, but nice. You know, that's how it is for Zeta Vision, though. Calm and composed, and I mean, it works for them, so why not? Yeah, two very different looks at the competitive drive of these two teams, and it's all going to come down to one final set. We've got Super Beach on the way, some Brawl Ball action going down, and I can't wait to see how it all unfolds here. Well, this is the game, the set to decide this first game at Group C. Super Beach in Brawl Ball, huge map for both of these teams, but I can't help feeling that Brawl Ball does kind of favor the STMN playstyle. I love it. They've got some aggressive W key style. They've really embraced the way the meta works this year. But Zeta Division, they've shown up today too. It's going to take everything from both of these teams here in the final set. The crowd really getting amped up, the arena being filled too. Everybody on the edge of their seat right now. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, definitely something the fans really love in this game, clearly as well, because it's so close between these evenly matched teams should be hopping into the draft very, very shortly to see what brawlers these guys will be playing in the decider. Sans just getting ready to roll. Been playing his heart out today and the rest of STMN have too. And their energy, it's infectious. Yeah, I respect the drip as well. I saw the ice on the wrist. A double watch. <laughs> One on each wrist. <laughs> I mean, gotta show up. Confidence is key, Trav. Confidence is key. Gotta look good, feel good. And they're gonna have to feel really good on Super Beach here. As the bands come in, there's gonna be a dynamite band. Shelly, Maisie, of course. And no surprise on the other end, you could tell that Zaya Division had that first pick because no Charlie, no Lou, no Rosa. Estiman shutting any idea of that down real quick. Yeah, no surprise for it either. Amazing, he's really been making a 
huge impact on the meta at the moment, and it's banned out as well. Shelly going to be along with it. A couple of hypercharges on that side, a couple of hypercharges on the STMN side too. But it is Zeta Vision with this first pick, and I love it. Bit of Sandy. Sandy is so good in the Brawl Ball meta as well. Keep in mind, too, with the gadget, you immediately put an enemy to sleep. So if you're on the goal side, they're just hanging out. One little gadget, a quick toss into the net, and you've got a free goal on your hand. So they're going to take advantage of that utility. Plus the fact, too, it's just a solid brawler overall. So I think putting your faith in this in a set five makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, it really does. And I mean, the plays it can make with the Sweet Dreams are just beautiful. They really are just shutting people down in the goal mouth and scoring that goal. Willow going to be the return pick. No Dynam. Okay, we'll pivot. We'll take a different throw. Why not? I'm interested to see. There it is. I was wondering if Cordelius makes an appearance. I feel like grabbing this on the 2-3 turn makes a lot of sense to me. This is another brawler that I, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but of course, it, it's similar to Sandy, right? Can put somebody to sleep and get a goal. Cordelius can remove any factor he wants at any given time. Make a connection, take somebody to the Shadow Realm. Willow in the same front as well. Can mind control an enemy brawler? You could literally have a self-score like the good old days, Trav, just from a Willow super. So I'm really curious to see if the Zeta Division side responds like, with a thrower like Barley. Instead, they're going to go with Stu, but they got one more decision to make. Yeah, I mean, Stu, you know, he can break down those walls with the breakthrough, so even if they don't go for a thrower, there's going to be a, a way to break through and get rid of those walls so the Willow can't thrive as much as I'm sure she'd like to, and I'm sure STMN would love that Willow to dominate. As you say, make, some, make them score some own goals, but Zeta Division's last pick should be coming through shortly. Going to be something pretty solid, I imagine. STMN still seem to be lacking a mid, though, so going to have to go for that. I mean, you can play Stu through the mid, you can play it through the lane, so I see the Buster come in, though. And I mean, against the Cordelius, it's tough. It's a tank into a Cordelius. You know you're not going to be having a nice time. But I can't help by, but, but feel like Buster's always, always so good. Yeah, I feel like Buster's just been consistent lately, too. I really like the Spike matchup originally for them. But like you said, that's not necessarily a traditional mid for the side of STMN. So I think this is going to be a tough decision overall. I think throwing Cordelius, he doesn't have enough range, especially if you let the Stew loose. It's going to get really tough for you if they're cycling out those supers. Now we, of course, too, by picking this Brawler, they have a wall break option, and it's going to be Jackie. We've actually seen this Brawler this weekend for some Brawl Ball action. I think Jackie actually might be a pretty good shout here. Against the Buster, you know it's a good shot. <laughs> you know the Jackie against Buster's a great, great matchup. It's going to feed a lot of those Sandstorms, though, and I think that's the saving grace for Zeta Vision, because Jackie runs in a straight line until she gets that super. You know, you get it from being hit, so, you know, get hit. And that's what, that's what Sandy likes about Jackie. If you ask me to open up the year and starting off in our first monthly final, if in a set five for the World Finals, one of these teams put their faith in Jackie, I would have called you crazy, but this is 2023, Trav. This is Hypercharge Madness, and this is set number five. Five, Zeta Division and SCMN competing to start this group 1-0. Oh. Well, Bobby already feeding me out, but it's not going to matter. Nice sweet dreams to shut him down. Stop him, though. Long dash coming in from Gero, too. No gas to heal will be seen. And Meow should just be one, two shots off a super and close to finding it. This could be a counter push here for Zeta Division. They pass the ball now to Nowie. Meow with the sweet dreams oh. and a bucket along with it. Early goal here for Zeta Division. Sweet Dreams 2 have already been used though. Oh, the Realm missed and the Sandstorm down. Nice long dash coming in from Gero as well. And Bobby just being hit. Yes, he's got that counter crush, but it's not connecting with anybody. One more is all they need, but now he does get controlled by the Willow. Pushed back, but still in a solid spot. Bobby might find the opening long dash to cover it, but the drag back is not enough. Can't find the goal and a dash from Gero, but he does get killed. Bobby nearly had the goal of his life. I mean, that was moments away on the goal line. Sands returning to action, though, with a super available. The invisibility going to make things a little tougher. Going to take Nowi down to the Shadow Realm as Bobby looks to scout out Meow. Sands moving forward, marching in the Shadow Realm as Garrow up top is going to go against Bobby here. And now dribbling the ball with a hypercharge along with it. Sands, heavy fire as well. Super available, a pull as well, throws the ball forward. Meow there to play goalie, though. Sands and Zar now moving in. Shadow Realm, there's a takedown wide open net pass to Sands. And an easy bucket in return for STMN. Bringing it back then. Bobby hypercharge in hand. And every time we've seen this, we've pretty much seen a goal to follow. They're going to need something special. Willow dropping that gadget. Big bomb of damage coming down. Hypercharge there. Double slow. Taking them down. Sandstorm for the defense. But Sand's there. Great save by Nowy. Gero's all that's left. And a realm takes him away from the goal. SCMN match point. What a game number one. Both teams showcasing why they deserve to stand on 
this stage, but it's back to business. Everybody silent on the stage. The crowd, anticipation on our feet. This has been incredible. One more game to go, and STMN will keep North America undefeated this weekend. Well, breakthroughs there, and that's going to help them out massively. I don't think there was a single one last game. Bobby's caught him off guard, and he gets the kill. Sands moving forward past there too, but Garou's covering the goal. Pull back, but not enough. Saved by Zeta. Zeta Division surviving for now. As STMN look to keep the offense going. Sands does have an opportunity here. Another wall break going down as well. Zar going to be in trouble and a takedown there. Biao dropping the super now as now he looks to climb up the map. A pass forward trying to keep that ball control for the Zeta Division side as Bobby creeps forward trying to disrupt things here as Sands moves up as well. Grabs the ball, dumps it off, takes Naui down to the Shadow Realm with a pickup as well. And now a breakaway here too. Garrow forced back on defense. Willow with the super wide open net. Doesn't use the super shot there. I'm shocked. Misses the follow through as well. Say to the vision, survive. Hypercharge there. Double slow yet again from Bobby. Cleans up. And one minute 30 between STMN and the win. Sands buying his sweet, sweet time here. 1 0 for STMN. A couple supers along with it. An immediate tag into the Shadow Realm as well. Sands taking advantage of the mushrooms up top. Bobby already dishing that ball over to where Sands is standing. He's moving over to the left hand side. Buster with the pullback. The mind control, though. No! Now he dumps it in his own net. Secures the deal. And STMN gets a victory. Huge for them. First win of one of the toughest groups in the world finals. They make it happen and Zeta Division falls short, but how close they were. So many moments, but STMN reigned victorious. When it came down to the final moments, Trav, an incredible way to start off day number two here. As the handshakes go off, STMN, of course, victorious, keeping North America undefeated, but my goodness, Zeta Division are a force to be reckoned with. Nouns who we're gonna see very shortly here are now fully aware that these two teams are gonna be a toughie for them. Well, Zeta Division still alive, but not in the spot they wanted to be. That is not good for them at all, but STMN off to a beautiful, beautiful start as they do have that initial win in their pocket. Starting off 1-0 and is everything. It's a tone setter. They now have a little bit of a security blanket, right? By winning at this matchup, they put the pressure on Zeta Division because if Zeta Division take an L here in a second, it's secured. It's over. We know how things are going to go down. So Zeta Division are really going to have to do it all over again here very shortly. What's that? North America 5-0? in the world finals yep, so far, yep. you know? You love it. Yeah, I mean, I'm European, but that is a convincing statistic to me, Kenny. It's actually insane too. And you know, we did have an interesting year with North America as well. We had North America West, we had North America East. And of course, you know, European region is the deepest region in the world. I mean, I think it's safe to say, but STMN, the tippy top of North America, these three teams this weekend have just come alive and really showcased how far the region has come as a whole. Yeah, and I mean, regardless of the split, they seem to be as strong as they have ever been. Brilliant moments, but look at this as well. He gets the drag back, gets him off the ball, but the Willow control seals the deal for STMN, and look how much it means to them. Even the first, even the first win in this group means that much. Statistics-wise, though, San 6, Bobby H, Zar 4, and, and Zeta over the other side, just not comparable. Bobby on the Jackie little pop off there. I mean, top fragger, exactly what you need to do as the big tanky brawler. Look, like I said before, Jackie is a, a solid brawler, but it's very map dependent right now. And to me, you have to exude confidence in that pick. This is the world finals. There is no room for error. And putting your faith in a brawler historically, that hasn't always been great. That's a little scary, but these boys are simply built different. I have mad respect for making that decision. And it ended up being a huge reason why STMN are kicking off the day one and oh yeah i mean that jackie bold but it works <laughs> you know, if it works it works and it's worked so many times let's take a look at the mvp then because you know i've got a bit of a hunch of who it might be after that last one well actually i was incorrect but sometimes <laughs> it is and i mean he made some great plays he made some really really solid plays almost clutched some games up in knockout and throughout the entire series really was a very very solid player maybe the people at home just noticed along with us of the double drip on yeah, the, the wrist watch. there i mean can't say anything less. At least he's looking good, but he's also playing well on the field as well. Unbelievable start here. A thriller of a match to kick things off. And uh, to be honest with you, Trav, I kind of expect the same thing for our following matches as well. All of the matches today are going to be brilliant. Group C and Group D 
every single match a 50-50. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get six best of fives <laughs> going all the way today. <laughs> You're not going to upset me if we get that. Look, I think the people at home are set five fans as well. I can't get enough of the good of Brawl Stars action. Kicking off yesterday was already phenomenal, right? But taking a step up today. This is some serious elevated competition here on day number two. I mean, I feel for Zeta Division. I really do. But SCMN thoroughly, thoroughly deserve that win. Zeta still have, they still have a chance. They've got to beat Nouns. They've got to, you know, hope that it doesn't go to that tiebreak because you don't want to be dropping those kind of sets. I mean, at least they got some back. You don't want to be taking these losses. So it's a little bit tough for them. But we are going to take a bit of a look at the updated group, see where people lie. And yes, it's only after one match, but Nouns Esports sitting in the middle, haven't played yet, will be up next. STMN 1-0, Zeta Division 0-1 to kick off the day. Yeah, Zeta Division have to make a turnaround here. This is going to really dictate how this final match goes. We have a situation yet where we've had a tie of 1-1, one, 1-1, one, 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 one. Obviously, we have tiebreaker rules for that, but SCMN, if they win one, set and secured here if they win their final match, which will be the third match of this group. But for now, Zeta Division in a must-win situation. Otherwise, we're going to have a possibility of the number one seed in Europe going home before the single elimination bracket. And that would be devastating, but that is one game down. Five more bangers still to go. But we've got a bit of behind the scenes action for you. So let's take a browse. to the behind the scenes of the Brawl Stars World Finals 2023. Behind me are the player lounges. So this is where the players will be doing their scrims and such. We've got like a couple of rooms. Maybe we can check out like a little bit as well, as you guys can see just through here. Like this is where the teams will be sitting down, doing the scrims, watching the matches as well, and really nice and clean. Everyone just being able to relax and just be able to be as productive as they possibly can. It's super casual, you know, really, really nice. You've got the iPads set out here, and got the gaming chairs, fruit, amazing, Pedro, <laughs> and the players, of course, and the staffing team. Yeah, really just a nice, chill environment. Everyone's having a blast. And for me, that's what makes the World Finals so great. You know, it's just a really nice combination of everyone coming together. We don't get to do it very often throughout the course of the year, so to be able to do it like this, and just have so many facilities to be able to support all the players with everything they've got to be able to achieve. There's a lot of stress that comes along with the World Finals, a lot of responsibility. So making sure that everyone's comfortable is the most important thing for us. have it. A little glimpse behind the scenes here at the Brawl Styles World Finals. Pay attention to the social media. We've got more backstage content still to come, but as you can see, everyone's having a blast. Stay tuned for more. Yeah, good to hear from Mark there as he takes you behind the scenes here at the Brawl Stars World Finals 2023. I'm Mitch Leslie now, of course, joined by Mr. Kung Fu Kenny. What a matchup to start up Group C. We knew this was going to be the group of death, but my goodness, it was deadlier than we could have expected. But for those who are trying to chill a little bit, maybe get out of the, the maelstrom of action that's been happening here at the stage, we've got some fantastic areas to chill. So if you are here at DreamHack, whether across the venue or right outside, come on through, hang out with us because it gets better. I can't <laughs> believe I'm saying that, Kenny. It gets better. Oh, uh, I mean, we were living the life here on the Brawl Stars World Finals. Match number one. I, I said before this started, I thought today was going to be maybe the greatest day of Brawl Stars we've had to date. And I think match number one, huge tone setter for that. And there's a real possibility that this second match, though, is going to be absolutely insane. Zeta Division and Nouns are going to have a big battle ahead. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, worth mentioning, of course, Zeta Division having to really recoup very quickly off the back of that crushing loss to STMN. Remember, they uh, let that bell through one too many times there. But again, Nouns are a team that normally we, you know, we talk about how they play in that South American region, obviously primarily Brazilian team. They, though, have been mixing it up with Europe for quite some time now. Yeah, I mean, I was really impressed with them in SPS Season 4. You know, they took things very seriously. Sometimes we see teams boot camp a week, two weeks before. They get the practice. They get used to the time zones. These guys hunkered down, and they won a lot of matches. Absolutely. I mean, when they, they came into the Snapdragon Pro Series, now instead, with a bang. With an absolute bang. I mean, they, and to my understanding, they're in good standing right now to be a feature at the finals. Uh, they blew away teams like Foot Esports as well. Like a number of teams were like, oh, okay, hang on. No. These Brazilian guys are frightening. Uh, they did 
drop off a little bit in that last week of play, losing a, you know, a key matchup to VN Esports as well, but they'll still have opportunities to show what they're made of. I've just got to give them credit. Qualifying through SPS Open to play inside the challenge season is fantastic. Let's bring him out of the stage. Let's go and welcome our players. And for all that and more, we can head over to Frankie. Two more games remain in Group A. So let's get this show on the road. First of all, with a team you just saw give it all they've got in our opening matchup. It's Seated Division. This is a team that has been stuffed with potential. We have some serious damage dealers on this roster and a strong mentality that ensures that this team has been able to regroup and get ready for this matchup. And their opponents, Nouns Esports. Motep and Pekka is so committed to being the best in the world that they spent the past few months in Europe getting ready for this very stage. And it sounds like they brought Brazil with them. It's time for these teams to show us what they've got. And it's going to be commentated by Kung Fu Kenny and Mai Tai Mitch. Gone are the days of come to Brazil, everybody. In this day and age, Brazil comes to <laughs> you. And my goodness, this is an exciting roster. Firecrow, got to be one of the most electric players in that South American region. The third and fourth, uh, the third, fourth place in 2021. This team is the real deal. And again, they have spared no expense to make sure that they are as competitive as possible here at the World Finals. They've been here since like mid-September. So they have spent plenty of time out here. I want to talk about Zeta Division because a lot of people are probably a little surprised to see us not predicting to win any games. <laughs> that is wild because we're talking about the number one qualifying team from EMEA with the most monthly final wins under their belts. And yet there's just something about land and there's something about the energy teams like STMN brought, for example, that makes us doubt them a little bit. And Kenny, for this matchup, we're also on the side of Nouns Esports in our predictions. Yeah, it's interesting, right? We've seen Zeta Division win a land competition this year, and yet none of us ended up picking them. And I think they deserve more credit than that. Yes. I think to the audience at home, trust me, it is a coin flip through and through, but this is incredible. 80% to Zeta Division to the 20% in Nouns, and the fact that Nouns won this matchup the last time they played and people still are going this hard at Zeta Division, I think reflects how, you know, teams value, the people at home value Zeta Division. Uh, but I feel like Nouns deserves more credit than 20%. Yeah, absolutely. And in recency, right, Zeta Division, they, they they, they fail to qualify for the SPS Season 4 Challenge Finals, right? This is like supposed to be your number one team in the EMEA. So some doubts about their recent showings. Whereas Nouns also fell off a little bit at the end of, uh, you know, of that league play. But this is a different stage, a different setting. And both these teams here to bring the energy. I saw Inso, Coach Inso obviously walk off for Zeta Division and he winced at me. I think that last loss really hurt. If you're Zeta Division, you had better hope for a team that tends to be a little lower energy, just as individuals. You'd better hope that lit a fire in your belly and you're ready now to deliver because this is your last chance to stay alive in Group C. Yeah, I'm very nervous for Nouns. The fact that they lost in such a heartbreaking way, this is going to be a real test for Zeta Division of how they recover. Are they going to come out here, sweep it off the rug, and just come out swinging? Or are they going to dwell in the past? And I don't expect this team, oh. number one seed in Europe, to dwell in the past. And for the first time in a long time, we get to see Rosa on one of her strongest performances. Who left Rosa open? My <laughs> goodness, she was insta ban basically every map in that previous series. Let's talk about grasping roots. That hypercharge on Rosa really takes her to yet another level, but she's always been strong when there's plenty of bush coverage. Rosa was the second most banned brawler yesterday. We had Charlie, and then we had Rosa. Charlie being a must ban. Yeah, every time. time. And you're going to see it. We've seen a 100% this weekend rate of if you have the second <laughs> you're getting rid of it on the other end. Oh, it's good to see him on the main stage. It wouldn't no be a world finals way. if we didn't have Dynamite. Dynamite comes in here. I mean, again, a very powerful brawler if you can get the most value out of him. The amount of burst damage Big Barrel of Boom provides you is pretty insane. Great to see it from Nouns. And of course, on a bounty map, not a shock to see throwers in general. Tick obviously still open here amongst others. Uh, and much of our sort of must bans have already been picked up here. Both teams banning Lou. We saw Shelly taken out. Eve, of course, giving Canal Grande with that water in the middle. Sandy locked in for Zeta. 
Sandy gonna be a very solid shout here as well. Again, in a mode where kills are the only things that matter. The Sweet Dreams gadget, you put the enemy to sleep, you line up some shots. Those pros aren't missing. I also love that they grab Gray in the mix here too. The teleport can get you across the canal, which is obviously a big feature on this map. Not to mention too, you can send your big bulky Rosa to the other end into a squishy Dynamite and do some real serious damage. Yeah, Peck is gonna have to have his wits about him here because at the drop of a hat, Zeta Division could be all over now. And so they bring in some tanky presence of their own. Motep is gonna be locking in that buster. Again, we've seen a lot of value gained here from that slow-mo replay gadget, that pull. We've seen it to counter Daryl compositions, uh, you know, on knockout maps, for example, to try and just drag him away from his intended target with that Daryl roll. Bit of a look on your face there. Looks like you might be favoring the Zeta Division draft here. I, I think I am in the sense that just on paper, it's gonna make sense matchup wise to me. You know, Dynamite is gonna have to be a pop off brawler here. There's no way about it. You have brawlers on the other end that are healthy, and he's gonna have to hit his stuns, hit his shots, stay out of gray range with a teleport, make sure Rosa doesn't sneak up on him. You know, they got Sandy over here with a decent amount of HP. I think now they're just gonna play this together and they're gonna have to top frag here. All right, Walking Kane there just. Tugging Pekka in the direction of Zeta Division. Motep wants to charge on him though. Unfriendly bushes are gonna slow Motep down, make it really hard for Buster to find the intended target. It's a trade though. Bear in mind, Nouns have that blue star and their win out there as Firecrow deals with Meow. The fact that Firecrow survived there is actually insane as the stun goes down as well. The Shadow Realm, an immediate <laughs> answer though. Cordelius is a big reason why they're gonna end up being okay into that composition of Rosa. They're still playing this together though. They're sticking close because they know at any given moment a Rosa or a Great TP could end it all. Might need the Satchel Charge to stop this Rosa Hyper Charge that might be an option here for the Dynamite Gadget if required. But so far, Nouns are staving off Zeta's every push very effectively. Now we there, I think goes through the TP, Pekka will fall, and this promotes Motep into throwing up a montage to back away. There it is, the Dynamite turning up in a big way. See, on paper as individuals, the matchups aren't great, but they are sticking together the whole way through. All three rollers now grouped in the back end, which isn't great positioning, but Firecrow with five on him already. The invisibility now, Meow survives. Now he moves up. They're shooting behind their back. They're walking it forward. They have their bodyguard, Motep, leading the way. And somehow throughout all of it, they're surviving. But now, now he wants a piece of the action here. Low HP and basically a wasted hypercharge. They don't need two kills right now to get into the lead. They already hold the blue star, but it's a five-star deficit in general. Gero gonna get rid of Pekka as the Shadow Realm came down. Firecrow looking to punish Gero, and that's four stars back to Nouns. 15 out of 20 with 20 seconds left. It's gonna be after one final push here for Zeta Division. Now he has a teleport and a super available. Gonna be waiting to make his move. They're gonna want to do it as a unit now. A lot of stars lined up. Now he, is now, now he moves in. The stun going down, but the kill on the right hand end as Pekka looks to play defense. He can afford to get in the mix here as Nouns Esports nearly hit the 20 star threshold. Love that from Nouns. They see a pincer move coming in. What do they do? Group is three and push into the weaker arm of said pincer. Fantastic stuff from Nouns, and they are brimming with confidence here, not only to bring the Dynamite in, but to get so much value. They have a stun of their own. Is it as reliable as Sweet Dreams? Maybe not, but when it counted, you're able to connect it. Yeah, and I mean, Firecrow played that Brawler to perfection there. There were a couple times where I thought that man was a goner. A nice dodge off the rip here too. Blue Star going the way of Zade Division. But once again, Nouns grouping up, and they've got bushes to work with on this right-hand end. Gero wrapping back around to the rest of Zeta Division here. Meow a little bit low. It's gonna be a problem, man. It's gonna be the slow-mo ring play to tug him in. But now he's gonna be looking pretty darn scary. Strong stuff being popped, but they are able to stave off the Rosa somehow. Buster lives. Unbelievable. Another moment where it looked like Zeta Division were gonna get away with things. A nice super to get a follow through as well. Awesome stuff there. Zeta Division with a 1-0 lead, and things looking a little scarier for now. This isn't a competition that necessarily wants to be on the offensive. They want a star lead early and to stick together. Motep here again with the super to create some space, and he bounces some shots back at Meow. A key mistake made there. Now he, as durable as he is, is running out of teammates, and my goodness, that burst damage from Nouns is no joke. This is going the way of Nouns all the way through. A teleport, little sweet dreams, and a big pickup there. A huge difference, but the stun goes through the teleport just in time. Gray with a big pull there. Fire Crow trying to line it up. Two stars, and somehow he survives! 13 to 12, Zeta Division with the lead. One star lead here for Zeta. Now we're gonna take that TP to try and back up on Motep. It's gonna be a battle of tanks here. Rosa wins those nine times out of 10. She's desperately the Dynamite Firecrow in the background trying to get rid of this Rosa, but she's just too tanky. Here come the Grasping Roots now, and this is a scary prospect. All of Nouns are getting run over. Pekka able to finally peel the Rosa off him here. It's going to be 21 for Zeta Division.
They hit the threshold and take the round. 1-1 one, one, Z Division with some pop-off plays. The survivability was unbelievable right there from Gray. I don't know how he got by with that. And towards the end of that game there, once Nouns had four on Cordelius' head, it was pretty much impossible with 96 to dodge every single shot from the other end. So we're going to go into game number three with an expected 1-1. One, one. Now we're to keep clear of much of this damage here from Firecrow. Unfriendly bushes popped early. This makes it hard for Motep to try and move up. And there it is. Gero sees two low health brawlers, but Motep is able to trade at least. It'll favor in the end Zeta Division, but Pekka wins it out. Very messy back and forth stuff here. Firecrow quickly wants to return to the fray. Teleport on the ground as well. Firecrow asleep in the moment, but a big bro going down on the map there. Still a lead for Zeta Division. A teleport over, and they're looking to put some icing on the cake. What a jump with a nice jump away, though. We'll survive. Nouns are in trouble now. The sleep goes down. Now he's pursuing, but it's going to be a survival there. And after all of that chaos, one star making the difference. Now, kind of wild to see still such a close game as the dust settles after that engagement. Again, Motep quite trigger happy there with that montage. Really wants to try and close the up another unfriendly bushes so this could be dangerous here for now it's pekka force back blue star yes but running out of teammates garo runs him over and say the division in a position to take this away just one more elimination kenny and that'll be that nouns have to play this perfectly they're moving as a unit pekka jumping in on the action now a teleport going through motep low hp and that's gonna do it there zeta division with the opening set you screwed up your nose a little bit when you saw the buster last pick from that nouns draft we knew that obviously Rosa always favor when it comes to a battle of durability. And with the mobility added by those dimensional doors of gray, very, very hard for Nouns to decide when and where they fight. I felt like Nouns just had to work harder for that one. I was really impressed with how they did. They even took a game off them. And on paper, it didn't look great to me, but they knew more than me. They were better than that. They clearly had a strategy in mind and they went with it. It's a really, really well-rounded composition. Dynamite has a role as a top frag. Buster's there more for defensive measure to expand their way as well. I liked it. I think it was good. But at the end of the day, Zayden Division did what I kind of expected to. I liked their draft on paper. Here we have some moments uh, from the map that was there. You see there's enough burst damage for Nouns to deal with the Rosa in nominal circumstances. But again, when this, you know, the sandstorm comes down, a lot of map control just gets taken by Zeta Division. See the energy here of Nouns, right? That's going to be a huge factor for them here, but they've got to be frustrated to have let this set go begging. Yeah, I mean, all things considered, you know, despite some of the uh, opposition, some of the matchups not going their way, they played that strategy very well. I think that was a very unique way of doing things. You know, Zade Division has three different brawlers, very unique, very diverse in what they bring to the table, but they didn't necessarily have to stay together. They could all use their designated roles and Nouns very insistent upon playing it as a team. Yeah, I feel like at some point Nouns realized they had no choice. They were priced into a fairly close quarters fight. As soon as they see Rosa Gray locked immediately, they're like, okay, well, how do we answer this? We, we, we can't really just like, you know, play something that counters tanks here. You know, we need something that can have some durability of its own. And obviously the utility offered by Buster is a pretty big deal. This is, there was this unbelievably high damage set here. Couple of these bounty rounds, uh, you know, going to 20 stars, which doesn't always happen here. Definitely get a sense, Kenny, that both these teams really wanted to take each other's measure here <laughs> in the on shipping in this first set. And hey, not only uh, has Zeta Division gained a lot of information about their opponents, they've also got themselves on the board early. Yeah, I think it's big that Zeta Division win this, especially off coming off the heels of a very tough loss. I mean, it's wild here too. We have an equal amount of kills for both ends out of those three games. And Zeta Division all putting up stuff. Firecrow, Pekka, Motep, all equal in the kill category. There are no weak players here on this stage. Our next set will be double swoosh. It's time for gem grab, and it's a map where we've seen, obviously, countering the bushes be a huge part of the strategy, whether it's a psychic enhanced Atara. We've seen teams bring Amber into limited success, I feel. So this is definitely going to be a situation where you should ban Rosa again. <laughs> First brawler I thought of, I said, no way they let this one slide again, right? With all the bushes on the map, the hypercharge in the mix too. Rosa, too darn good. Here it goes without saying, but I have to say it. No Charlie allowed here. Lose somebody that I'd be interested in banning here too. Some of the basics there. But otherwise, there's a lot of options here for double swoosh. It's a, it's Look, uh, right now with Charlie being, you know, must ban, uh, it, you're a little bit of a disadvantage as second pick here because you, you basically have to ban her. Uh, if you take the risk and leave it open, your opponents sort of pick it up. Uh, we haven't really had a chance to discuss her at length here because she is just 
so devastating <laughs> right now. So expect to see her uh, locked away pretty much straight away. Yes. So Zeta Division. Oh, the Rosa is oh. open. Oh, why <laughs> is she getting through? This time it's nouns clapping. They're the ones that get it this time. We get the big bad Rosa. Again, the second most banned brawler yesterday behind Charlie for a reason. Very strong, and this is a map that they can definitely use her, even if they start to open up the grass and things like that. Rosa is still so much of a threat in the right hands. Absolutely. And now we have a chance to see how Zeta Division intend to try and counter it. You notice that Gray was banned. So Zeta Division. Maybe expecting, given that Nouns had first pick here, that they go for that kind of strategy. So the Maisie gets locked in. Talking to Drage, I think, a couple days ago, we said, I don't know why more teams don't try to play Max, actually, into this into this Maisie. He thinks that uh, you know, Max definitely can be very effective, especially in a, a matchup of safe mids. Not sure if Nouns feel the same way. We're going to find out either way. Maisie is actually a very powerful brawler right now. And I think to the casual fan like myself at home, you know, we don't necessarily understand the presence of Maisie. It's something that Ark and I went back and forth at when we casted SPS as well. But Maisie had a 67% win rate yesterday and was the second most picked brawler. And my boy Gale going to make it once again today. There are maps where I like him, and this is one of them. And something like Kaboom Canyon, I can see things going really wrong really quickly. But the visibility he brings, the slowdown, the twister, there's just so much. Or the spring ejector for that, too. He's got good utility and can often be a threat into those you know, tanky brawler. That's definitely a case to make for him on Kaboom Canyon. The Spring Ejector getting you back into the center of the map really quickly was, was something that a lot of teams lent on heavily. Here on Double Swoosh, though, uh, perhaps not something these teams are really looking to leverage to the same degree. Jesse here for now. And again, a Kaboom Canyon pick we've seen from quite a few teams. Offers a lot of control, but in Gem Grab, how does that role differ? I think for Jesse, the turret is going to be huge, especially in those mid walls. They're going to be looking to use Jesse likely as a mid here. They're going to be trying to just kind of outrange, get some bounce shots in there. I think Jesse can actually work out pretty well as a mid. It's something I've seen messed with in practices this week a good bit. And I think overall can definitely be an option as Spike is definitely going to take on a lane role. And I think Spike is a very slept on and very solid lane option, not only in this map, but a lot of different maps right now. Absolutely. Really dependable, of course. That life plant in a pinch can add a heck of a lot of value unless you're going up against a penny of course so definitely uh, something you want to bring in here and of course we've seen with hypercharge by the way three hypercharge brawlers for now <laughs> so <laughs> they've made it pretty clear uh, how they're trying to play brawl stars this weekend but yeah obviously just having that availability the raw stat boost plus those extra effects i mean the you know the 2.0 turret for jesse is definitely not something to sniff at here so the cordelius is the last pick here now if you're a division what are you looking to really do or answer with this cordelius well, now you've got multiple options into the Rosa, which is clearly a threat to them. I think Cordelius is a brawler too. The interaction he has with Gym Grab is a very interesting one. When he hits you with a Shadow Realm, those gyms are going to be a problem to pick back up, especially as he drags you down. Now they have multiple answers for Rosa. They've got Gale, who may struggle a little bit into this spike lane here too. Cordelia is not going to have the range as well. They're going to have to play this very carefully, but I think there is an argument for Zeta Division's comp also being very strong. Okay, so obviously, Nouns with a very strong tank, a good control brawler in Jesse, and of course, a dependable laner in Spike. And Friendly Bushes pop straight away here. More so for a bit of information now. Gero has him now to snap up those two gems spawning on his side. But remember, disengage always yeah, available here. Oh, he disengaged into the wall. I don't think that went to plan at all. Gero drops early and drops the gems with him. A team wipe here for Nouns to kick things off. Save the vision not starting this one out strong. Very interesting layout off the beginning, too. They sent three to the mid slash right. They just left oh. now alone, and now they're piling up the kills here. A pushback is all they can do, and a seventh gym now claimed for nouns. My goodness, Zeta Division have to collect themselves awfully quickly because this is going to go from bad to worse. It's already feeling pretty oppressive now. Hypercharge, Spike, super used. Their Pekka really overextended on the left-hand side. Gave Firecrow the chance to accrue those eight gems here. Zeta Division well and truly behind. Meow wants to jump over the top. It's going to be a preemptive life plant now. Gale Force used to a limited impact. But Pekka, looking worse for wear, going to have to try and crawl away from the fight. Zeta Division getting scarier here too. They have complete map control. Nouns on their back foot. Heck, Rosa's in the top right-hand corner just spinning and pinning right now. She's just trying to breathe for a moment. Zeta Division really letting loose right now. Like they're gonna push up here. Here comes the Grasping Roots. Instant Shadow Realm here for Meow to limit Pekka's impact on the rest of his teammates, but he will have to offer himself up as a sacrifice. And Gero, does he know? He lacks the critical information. Pekka jumps on him and walks away with three gems and a sliver of health. That'll be enough to get us into the countdown.
I wonder if now he thought he could get a kill there on the P.E.K.K.A. because otherwise they would have dropped those gems. P.E.K.K.A. now with a super in hand. Fire Crow, healthy and well, but Garrow and Nowy are going to try and get the pinch here. Motep on the return. P.E.K.K.A. popping a shield and all is good here. Narrowly surviving as the Jesse turret goes down. Very well played for now in Esports. P.E.K.K.A. goes so aggressive at the start of the round. He says, I'm going to go forward here. I'm going to use my health as a resource to give you guys some real estate. A huge lead. Built there at the start of the round, but now it's as Gero gadgets into the unbreakable wall with three gems that can't, that can't have been to plan. They're gonna do the same thing again. Rosa and Spike right hand in. This time though, they sit which Meow at the other end, and the boxing botanist starts fighting. And Motep gonna be immediately eliminated. This time things going up much better for Zayden Division as they have made control. Pekka forced to play a little offense Ooh. here, and they're gonna be juggling all of this action here. A nice super there as Garo's gonna survive and hold on to these gems. Micro's done well to get two gems, I think, given how horribly this has started for Nouns, losing Motep all too early. Fyker wants to step up here, Meow has to jump back over the wall here. Pekka starting to set his feet on this left-hand side of the map, but now has that strong stuff available, but a little bit low for his liking. Now he harassing him constantly. Motep into the Shadow Realm here, Fyker trying to back away, but can't escape from Nowy with the Gale Force thrown out. No stun from it, but Pekka will be staved off again. Smooth sailing so far for Zeta Division here as Pekka begins lurking. With low HP, is going to recover for now as Motep tries to do a scouting report. Firecrow collecting a couple here now. And now Ian Garrow moments away, pushing back Pekka in a big moment as well. And now a hypercharge of his own going down. Some extra stat boost as well. Zeta Division piling it up. The double shockwave is huge. You've got to hit two brawlers with that super to cycle it instantly. And Garrow gets to pop it twice in quick succession. That is a huge damage spike and it's enough to keep Nouns well in, or rather, Zeta Division well entrenched here in the middle of the map. Giver with five gems, here comes Pekka, hypercharge, of course, grasping roots an option, but he's holding onto it for the time being while he's in the Shadow Realm. Gero down to six here now, we're trying to move up the left-hand side, Gale Force thrown out, but Motep stays alive. He's thinking about the super, but Pekka's already ahead of it now. The durability lacking, though. He can't descend on the back line of Zeta Division, but many of those gems go wayward. Gero, though, the designated carrier picks him up, and they're at nine. Nouns with mid control, and this is a big moment. They've got nine in the pocket of Zeta Division, but here comes here he goes. Pekka being fierce here. One gym in the hands, and there it goes. A big one to pick up here for Nouns Esports. They have the mid, they've tied the gym count, and they have another turret in their pockets. Micro looking to set Scrappy up here, make it hard to push into the Motep again, though getting exploited by now. We unfriendly bushes popped here as Pekka hopes to find the gem carrier somewhere. Strong stuff used, but gonna be knocked away. Firecro not looking great either. Into the Shadow Realm, but instantly dragged out of it as Motep comes off spawn with a trade. 9 to 11 here. Now it's have to go forward, but Motep is cut short even after the super. Pekka can scoot this gem up though. Oh! Not enough time. He was waiting on it. <laughs> Zayn Division take that round away. Ooh, I had to hold in my breath there. It was a little bit of a buzzer beater there, Uber. Goodness gracious. This has been a heck of a match too. This is what we expected all day long. Everybody bringing it at Zayn Division. Crack the shoulders a little bit, get a little loose. Now they're feeling it. They really have cranked it up in gym grab. Oh, they, yeah, they've recovered. I think it's safe to say they're finding their sea legs so far through these rounds. Gonna be heading in the game in just a moment here for those that are here in the arena now seeing that Gero with the gadget use here. I've gotta say, Motep is struggling on this spike. And this is complete control once again for Zayden Division. They get a tag with Gale as well. A nice pickup and kill there. A drag to the Shadow Realm and the matchup that they're looking for here. A Cordelius into a tank matchup as Firecrow's dealing with things up top. Motep lobbing up shots. Meow survives. A light plant goes down. Keeps Motep alive. But nonetheless, it's now we with five gym. Motep has to throw the kitchen sink just to stay in the game right now, Kenny. It is tough out there for Spike fans. Sticking around, thrown out. Just one tick would have been enough to take Nowy down, but he was outside of it. Still, Pekka with the strong stuff, able to move up and take some space. Nouns need to use this to even up the gem score, but the pressure's too much. The shockwave from Gero, it's a trade. Jesse now with an established turret. A little bit of a slow down there as Pekka fighting things here. Pekka gonna go down as a result. It's even money right now. The Jesse turret is gonna waste some resources for Zeta Divisions, and now they're back in action. Important to have Jesse allow Nouns to stabilize there. That's why they threw themselves so aggressively to the left side of the map. Gero with that hypercharge up here. Bit of a distribution of gems right now as Gero has to be a secondary carrier. Now he not the intended recipient of those five gems, but hey, you've got to make lemonade sometimes. And we'll see Nouns Esports just lean into this now and hope to build some supers. Seven to six. Neck and neck right now. Meow without a lot of range. 
Gonna have to rely on some fancy footwork. A unit now moving forward, though the Red Roster expanding their presence on the map. It's Pekka on the left hand in. And now off the charge. Going down for Motep. He catches Miro in the final moments. One tick. Low HP. Didn't go for the kill, though. Went for Miao in the mid. Because he's in the underworld. Nice plays there as Pekka activates the super. A major pushback. And it's Zeta Division with the countdown. Not good enough there from Nouns. Having Motep taken out of the game was absolutely critical here. Vicro still playing with a decent number of gens. And of course, we'll have another one spawned here. This will reset the countdown. Now we know it could be a problem. Pekka tries to move up. Hypercharge activated. The raw stat boost is there, but there's no super available. He just builds it up, but he has to walk away. The grasping roots may not have an opportunity to make an appearance here now as we're into the countdown once more. Two gems, of course, now up there for Zeta Division. Pekka staying close to the middle part of the map here. He'll get himself one, but they've got to go. It's got to be now. Meow with four. Vicro backing up here now. 12 to 11, waiting for them all spawn, but it's going to be a knockback. A Pekka and Zeta Division will have their comeuppance. You saw the pushback from Gale be a difference maker there. They couldn't grab the gym. Won the round. Being forced back. That's the value that Gale's utility can bring to the table. And now you really start to see why it can shine. High hopes for Nouns coming into the World Finals here. But it seems the sleeping giants of Zeta Division have awoken. What a pivotal win there on Double Swoosh to give themselves at least a feeling of stability now. They are two and zero up in this series. Can you believe that Nouns already staring down the barrel of a clean sweep? And it's crazy too, and I almost feel bad. I mean, they have been playing a heck of a good job here, and they're still the ones, unfortunately, with a deficit of two to zero. It's tough to win a set against any of these teams. Nouns previously won this matchup against the Zeta Division as well, but right now they are feeling it and are gonna have to pull off the unthinkable, a reverse sweep on a World Finals day. Something we have not seen quite yet. That Gale Force in the final moments you see there, again, another buzzer beat. As you pointed it out, there was just doesn't want enough time for Nouns to even up the gem score here. In those dying seconds, a lot of very careful posturing uh, around the gem hatch from Nouns. Completely undone here by the Gale Super. Pekka gets knocked away. That gem is on the ground and gets gobbled up by the Gale instead. Stunning micro play there from Zeta Division. And the numbers simply piling up for Zeta Division. 10 and 9 for Naui and Meow, respectively. Garo, even though high DPS did his role well, and Fire Crow, Motep, and Pekka just aren't necessarily keeping up in that category. Again, it's a game mode, right, where you're trying to pick up the gyms, but to establish control in order to get access to that, a lot of the times grabbing those kills is necessary, and they just weren't keeping up in that race. Now he's sizing up his opposition here. Be hoping to get in the head of Nouns Esports as they have to be starting to feel the pinch here. Zeta Division slowly but steadily have built a commanding lead in this series and we're heading over to a spicy one. It's Dueling Beetles. This map is always a really interesting one. And I'm not hearing a lot of noise from Nouns Esports right now and I think that's something big that they rely on. They're going to have to find that energy, find that momentum again if they want any chance. They're going to have to take it one at a time, and that's going to start right here on a map where, to me, Lou a must ban, Charlie a must ban. Even Rosa has an argument here. Rosa is somebody you still see come out as well. Maisie can do a good job. I mean, a lot of the culprits we had win that last game can easily be eliminated in the ban stage. Looking for strong side laners here to really dominate and allow you and your mid to go two versus one for control of the hot zone. So Maisie instantly snapped up going to be a mid option here. Some aggression, some decent range, and of course a hypercharge as well. Going to make a world of difference. On the other end, you can tell Nouns had this first pick. They banned Stu, Eve, and Busser that are more uh, unique in a sense, that aren't must bans in personal opinion. Cordelius, you know, we have Lou. All of those make a lot of sense. Immediate response though is Colette, who does have a hypercharge, does counter tanks, checks both boxes. We've seen a lot of Colette, uh, obviously in the previous series, as Zeta Division tried to get value out of that against STMN. A very close fight indeed, but Bobby really undid them with that bell pick. So now Antia might be thinking of something a little bit similar. Colette obviously maybe in the lane assignment can struggle, but just throwing yourself at that hot zone with that empowered time to collect, that's a scary prospect here. Two brawls with decent amounts of mobility, and this time Zeta Division say, we'll take the bell for ourselves. 
Makes a lot of sense too, like you pointed out, the sharpshooters can do really well into Colette. Colette's biggest struggle is always those brawlers that outrange her. Colette does really well into these tanky options. Any brawlers with a ton of health points, we even see what it could do into Pam earlier today. It's somebody like Maisie, it's great. And they're gonna go ahead and play a little chess, and they're gonna go ahead, select this brawler, knowing that one, it's good for the game mode, and two, it's really good into their first option. It's possible that, you know, Meow first picks that Colette just to try and dissuade Nouns from picking up a Pam, for example. But they themselves now, they, they ban out the Buster and Bali makes another appearance here. Bit of a niche pick, but very powerful on Dueling Beetles. B, of course, for a very powerful side lane. Big fan of what Nouns have started with here. I think rounding out this composition as well with the B, they now have a long range threat. Somebody that's going to do well into Colette. They have a thrower with a Barley in the mix that's going to do really well into both of these brawlers, especially considering there's an undestructible wall on this map. And then they've got Maisie to just go out there, get aggressive and be a top fragger. Zeta Division with 10 to go are gonna have a tough decision. And Maisie is just so well balanced right now. She has, <laughs> the fact that her super is a close range super that cycles quite easily, but then much of your you know, raw damage comes from long range play and then you have a like a pseudo face shifter of course in that disengage you just have so many options there we see the rose are picked up here this indicates to me an aggressive tendency for zeta division this is going to be an intense one some high powered compositions for both sides here as both of them look to engage on the uh, screens of their tablets. They're ready to go here. Nouns Esports need to come alive right now. We're going to have to see the best from them against Europeans' number one seed. Who walked off stage looking absolutely bloody furious after that loss to SCMN. Pekka with a rattled hive here just to try and put some pressure down on Gero. Sharpshooters matching up in that left lane and Firecrow trying to control as much of that space as possible. But Nouns here falling slightly behind. So you see, for the most part, healing needs to be done by Motep. And here comes that time to collect from Meow, no connection, but again, very much zoning. Meow's away from the point, it's gonna be Motep coming forward with a shockwave, it'll be a trade. Pekka rotating onto the point now, as Gero's been a bit of an issue for the B. There's nothing scarier than the unknown Uber, and anytime you have a Rosa lurking in a large degree of area is going to be terrifying, as Motep gonna go ahead and power up a hypercharge here. Firecrow marching forward, Pekka in the mix as well, but Zeta Division holding oh. strong, and now a hypercharge of their own, make it a double kill there. Clear victor in that interaction, Zeta Division. Absolutely, this is working out beautifully for them. I'm gonna say the grow light is a great gadget to bring in here, covering that point in bushes. Pekka does well to deal with Meow, but now he, he could be anywhere. He could be absolutely anywhere. Iron Hive there thrown out just to try and keep the Rosa at bay, but now he wants to come forward. Firecrow has got to respect it. This last pick, Rosa, is making a world of difference. No way to disrupt the grass. Motep now diving and immediately goes down though. Pekka in a world of hurt right now. Two taps there from Garo. One connects 80% and now climbing for Zeta Division. This draft has been sublime for Zeta Division and they followed through with the gameplay. Pekka forced back now. He says, I'm happy to give it up here for the time being. Meow's getting so much time on this point. Pops the gadget. Firecrow falls. It'll be up to Pekka if he wasn't already marked. And that was one-sided as it gets. That was the strongest showing we've seen from any team in an individual game today. That was domination from a Zeta division. They are really looking at fierce right now. And I do think that the Nouns Esports composition looked good. It's fine. It makes sense. But at the end of the day, the sneaky last pick, Rosa, so good because it's just going to sit there and get some free punches on you. Somebody like Barley, even though he may not get touched by Rosa, he can hide behind the walls. He's certainly not doing enough damage into the high HP brawler. Well, it's now or never in this series for now. And Zeta Division stand at match point here. Pekka here wants the pressure now we're down. I like that. The Rattled Hive just to really punish that Rosa. The Mao's able to come through with the time to collect. Vicro is hoping just to get an elimination. And he does. This allows Pekka here to send now to a bit of an early lead. Nouns have to rely on control here. They can't let Rosa get out of hand. And now Rosa going to get a super down and easy kill as Meow piles on another one here. A trap on the right hand end as well. Pekka, left hand, long lane. Going to be leading here, but Zeta Division certainly threatening now. Iron Hive, but I don't think Meow really cares about that at all. Now we having to set up these bushes and there's not really any bush destruction on the side of Nouns. Motep is marked on that right hand side. Another good rattled Hive here as Firecrew pops down that heel, but Meow pushes straight up again. The Colette shield means she can do what she likes in that super. And well, Nouns are falling behind once more. 
Becca getting really aggressive here, though, and is rewarded for it. A nice pickup there. Now he's still in the grass, and now a dive forward from Motep. A nice connection there, and an engage that works out very well for them. Nouns now with a narrow lead. This all starts with Becca connecting with three players at that Iron Hive, and able to push in and take advantage of the slow provides, but now he's going to come up with the grass and roots. This could be a problem. Motep falls, but Ficro makes himself scarce. Plays around that left-hand side of the Beetle, and now he's able to come in with a point-blank shot. Gero, though, falling now, trying to bring things back with that time to collect, but Motep is back and with a vengeance. Nouns Esport, big moment for them here. They need this game. Zeta Division on match point, and they're at 90%. Now we trying to take a stand here. A bounce back from Motep, but a takedown on the other end. 2v2, a run forward from Kai. Hypercharge! Nero survives 98, and Zeta Division have a chance. Oh, this is a scary prospect now. Nouns are on the precipice, though, of keeping it alive. Just 2%. So to throw yourself at the point. Make sure you can push up here, but that's exactly what Nero is trying to dissuade. Motep's going to fall down. I can't believe it. 2% away, and Nouns can't get any time on the point it's gonna be up to the beam and peck is taken down in advance here comes motive inside that hypercharge but he falls to and zeta sweep them away unbelievable stance there from zeta division europeans number one seed is not going home yet insane performance insane bounce back and now they have to wait i have whiplash from one game to the other zeta division have come alive Going one and one in this group, very, very important. Especially if we get to a situation where tiebreakers come into play, having a clean series win here is so important. Yeah. This team, this European juggernaut, they're far from done. 3-0 is a huge moment. Just keep in mind too, when we get down to tiebreakers, if we have that event, you know, we get set win percentages in yes. the very first category. So being able to come out cleanly, Absolutely insane. Not to mention, too, just the fact that they beat such a powerful team 3-0 to zero here on the world stage really shows that STMN might be pretty darn good and Zeta Division are still right there with them. I mean, it's a very different day than the last time these two teams played in the Snapdragon Pro Series Season 4 Challenge where it went all the way to five sets here. And for fans of Nouns, first of all, we all predicted Nouns to win this. Let's just, let me just want to reestablish that. But for fans of Nouns, like we're going, what's going on? Where's that fire that we're looking for here? This is a team that has invested heavily and set themselves up to perform with the very best with a long boot camp in Europe. So they have got to be absolutely fuming with that result. And how much can you take away from an 0-3? It's tough to really take any form of confidence going up against the, uh, the juggernaut of STMN is waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, the team that beat Zeta Division today is right around the corner for them. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. tough. I mean, I didn't expect Nouns to necessarily 100% win that, but 3-0 was not in my range of outcomes. I think this was really reflects you have to play to your top game in Zeta Division. I was scared for the team of Nouns after that loss, and angry Zeta Division team might be even worse than just a calm-headed Zeta Division. Yeah, absolutely. While maybe uh, their countenances haven't changed too much, they still have that look of grim determination on their faces. This last set was... I mean, that was really one-sided. You get the bell, you get the Rosa, you know, grow light just consistently, adding more bushes over towards that point and, and, you know, daring your opponents to step in there up against the Rosa. The draft was, I mean, light years past what Nouns were able to bring in. Nouns, I like the brawlers, but at the end of the day, the Rosa sneaky six pick made a world of difference. You know, they had good matchups again. Matchups aren't everything. Yep. Zeta checked the boxes in strategy. They had a back pocket there with the Rosa. And even though Pekka put up a big that 452, is, is disgusting. they still ended up losing. It's just part of the game. You got to play the objective. And Zeta were simply better at that. Yeah. It definitely felt like at times we saw Motep, I think back in that first series, that, that spike pick that we were definitely questioning, saying, okay, how's this supposed to work? And in fairness, Nouns get the Rosa pick on double swoosh. Such a powerful way to you know, build up your draft. And they're not able to find any success with it against that Gale. I'm sure you're very happy about that. I can see your, you know, your Gale senses tingling as we watch that draft sort of play out. But having the option to stave that Rosa off, to make it really hard for her to sort of, to sort of connect with you is so important. And that's something that Nouns didn't have available to them on Dueling Beals. Let's talk MVP here.
as always, a number of really key candidates here potentially deserving of this particular war. But I think I, I have an idea of who I would put forward here. It's going to be Meow for Zeta Division, who, by the way, even in that losing series against SCMN, had an unbelievable amount of damage set after set. This guy's on fire today. That's where my head was at as well. I think Meow deserves a little bit of a shout from our chat at home. He's been unbelievable. It feels like his presence is known at all times. The numbers are adding up. I mean, that just makes complete sense for me from an MVP standpoint. Absolutely. And coming coming in now at 1-1, one and one, Zeta Division absolutely have control uh, of their destiny after that match. A 3-0 is really important. They will have to wait and look on and see how this last match goes. But I'm pretty sure that now it would have to 3-0 STMN for there to be any question of how these tiebreakers would play out. So you're feeling pretty comfortable here with an incredible performance up against that top team and then a sweep here. Let's look at our groups here just to remind you guys of what's happening so far. Nouns have found themselves without a win. There is a world in this group of death, Group C, where all of our teams end up at one and one. It depends on the score of this last series, how that would all fall out here, which means there's so much to be decided still in this last match of Group C. STMN Esports versus Nouns, rehashing a rivalry that was built up, built up over that North America, South America play over the years. That one's gonna be a blockbuster. I think so too, and I did pick STMN to originally win this one, and I'm definitely sticking with that. I mean, it's hard to have a ton of confidence in Nouns after that. They're still a great team. They could shake it off and all good. Sometimes they're like Samina, right? They're the kind of team that thrives off the energy and motivation from each other, and sometimes that's enough. I think Nouns just need to see themselves get one. If they take an early loss or two in sets, I really think STMN might run away with it. We said that STMN have a tendency to start a little bit slow sometimes, so there is an opportunity, a window there, for now, if they get out to an early lead, they might be able to take the game over. But there's something special about watching two teams that are extremely momentum driven. You know what I mean? Two teams that really rise and fall off of, you know, how the previous map's gone or how the crowd's sort of getting behind them, right? That's going to be a fun element there. It's going to be a quite an element of variance, though, as we look forward towards this next match. Bobby uh, didn't get MVP in that last match. I think that was a mistake for me. I think he was unfreaking believable. That bell especially on Ring of Fire, I mean, that was the only way, those constant marks connecting, that's the only way they were able to deal with that hypercharged Colette. I'm curious to see how this one plays out, but let's not waste any time. Let's get him out on the stage. And we're gonna head over to Frankie. Yonjiping, are you ready to round up Group C? Yay! This is going to be an interesting one. We know Nouns have to put on performance of their lives, but they need to do it against this North American powerhouse. Is STMN! They came through the last chance qualifier, but going by their performance that kicked off today's show, they are ready to keep fighting because all that matters is the final destination of this trophy. and their opponents, all the way from Latin America. It's now Esports! <laughs> the pressure may be on this team's shoulders, but they know they have the voices of the Brazilians on their side, fans watching around the world and here as well in Sweden. And I can see so many fans piling in. They know the match is about to start. Yonjiping, take a seat. Get ready to make some noise for these players and give them everything you've got as we head over to our Carter's Ark and Uber. Thank you, Frankie. It is time to witness the conclusion of Group C, a very tightly contested group here. But with Nouns getting swept in that previous match arc, there's a very clear condition for STMN to satisfy to advance. Absolutely so, you know, for STMN, they're actually in not the worst of positions here, providing they can get a set. If it comes down to that set win percentage, they're gonna have that little bit of an edge, but oh my word, I'm just blown away. Watching backstage, the caliber, the quality of the games that we've been witnessing today is just, next level. Absolutely. That first match, that STMN Zeta game, you and I were sat in the green room hooting and hollering <laughs> some of the best brawl that we've seen in quite some time. And it got us very excited to see STMN hit the stage once more. But let's be real for a moment. That was not the nouns. That was not the level of play from nouns that we were expecting to see at a tournament this big, this important. 
100%. Nows need to bring their A game. This is actually a matchup that Sans was very keen to display on socials that he was wanting. He was waiting for this one. And they've never faced it together on an international stage. And for the first time, we're going to be able to see the fireworks go down. 77% on event.brawlstars.com siding with STMN on this one. 23% from Nouns. But I do believe it's very true what you're saying. We have yet to see the best from Nouns. The question is, will they bring it now? Couple of holes in their drafts, perhaps. Couple of brawl picks they should have left in the drafts. <laughs> and STMN here, I mean, they looked incredible. And you, you make a great point. Last year, we saw this team take the stage with OG. Sands could not be here. Yep. Someone who was really titled as a, as a rising star in North America. And it makes sense, right? We actually haven't seen the, 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 the squeak yet from Sands. That was something we kind of expected to see brought out a fair bit here. We also saw Zar put in some very difficult lane assignments. A lot of Mr. P, or just playing like the weaker brawler in some of those matchups, you know, providing utility to the rest of the map here. Curious to see if he still has that role here, Ark. Cordelia snapped up straight away here by Nouns, of course, as we had to split. Yeah, just to add to that as well, you know, for me, Sans is playing out of his mind for what is his first World Finals. You've got to remember, on the side of Nouns, Motive is his second. For Peckers is his second. For Firecrow is his third. You know, there's a lot more in terms of world experience on the side of Nouns. Let's see, though. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm glad to see the Luban. I mean, I was saying this all day yesterday, right? You kind of have to ban it regardless of the map when it comes to Hot Zone. The things that Zulan did with that are probably banned in multiple countries in the Schengen zone, I think. So <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think that was uh, particularly ideal to see. Bobby walked off stage after that match, said, I can't believe Sans got MVP. That is absolutely rigged. He was furious about it, so. <laughs> Let's see how motivated he is here to put up another big performance. Ruffs. Picked up here by STMN, of course, you have that wall break potential with that supply drop. And again, the indirect damage from bouncing shots makes you a pretty strong side laner too. At the Rosa to supplement the pick. Ooh, that What's... is edgy. That is edgy. I mean, there's a lot of harder counters still available to it. So, I mean, if Nouns want to pick up something along those lines, they've already got the Cordelius. I mean, they're picking Rosa into Cordelius already. They could double down and bring in a Shelly as well and just have that additional wall break advantage to be able to then choose your sides. I mean, this is this is a dangerous game, actually, that ST men are playing, but they do know that Nouns are that similar kind of a caliber of team. They like to bring in their tanks. They like to bring in a lot of El Primo and such like that. So I think just kind of preempting that Dynamite coming in and, you know, you might snarl at that one, but don't get me wrong, this Brawler is bang back in the meta and definitely causing a lot of problems along the way. Yeah, again, uh, we saw Nouns pick it up as maybe an answer to the Sandy of Zeta Division on Bounty. As a the tank. Sand <laughs> what? <laughs> is this the Frank? It's hammer time. <laughs> oh, okay. You had better You had better get me up to speed on this one because it's been quite some time since Frank has been flavor all of the month. It's kind of wild. Not going to lie, it's kind of wild. But that's why I quite like it as well. I mean, it's a very entertaining brawler to watch go down if you're able to cycle those hammer shots. But I cannot remember the last time I really kind of saw it come in. It was uh, always not a bad one to have on Split. Maybe on Siege? <laughs> uh, you know, anyone remember Siege? What a throwback. It was a lot of time machine. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Shelly, like you called it. Yeah, so very robust brawl picks here. And again, having that huge damage spike might give STMN the ability. Of course, the wall break's crucial, but just dealing with this Frank now is, uh, is definitely going to be on the agenda. I mean, it's certainly going to be one of those really tough brawlers to make work. Uh, in a Mo Rosa matchup, if you're just able to kind of juke your way and dance around those shots and try and get behind the Frank each time, it's really hard to land those hammers. Uh, and I think for Nouns, they've got to be very cautious as to how they play it. It's certainly a brawler that's very difficult to shake when on the zone, but I think that final pick of Shelly on the side of STMN, I mean, that is a scary one. Now remember, as we pointed out at the start of this match, it's likely that STMN only need one set from this entire match to guarantee their movement out of Group C. A horrible start though for the Shelly there as Sands gets pummeled on the left-hand side of the map. Well, Pega connects really nicely there with the gadget and that's going to keep him on the zone, but Sans will just be charging up that super, and as soon as he gets it, with the help of the gadget there as well, gets a double splash onto Firecrow, but that's a nice break from Zaha. Meanwhile, it's still now in the lead. Some serious back and forth here now, as Zaha has been sitting on that right-hand side. Obviously going to be very hard to shift. And there's Pekka blowing open that wall here. Much of the wall taken off the map already. Sans able to do a Firecrow here, and able to double down with that raw stat boost of the hypercharge. Job done for the Shelly. 
Really nice from Zanz. I mean, every single shot landing the mark and not done yet. Firecrow goes immediately Ooh. down. Lovely left-hand side lane control, but the big bomb from Motip will seal that side. And meanwhile, Peggy is going to go down on the right, and that's going to be then enforcing that Nows have got to go to that side ready for me. Now, Bobby, big hypercharge there. The clay pigeon gadget, though, for Sands has been crucial for some of those longer-range shots. Firecrow brought down. Zar, bloody to tickle the point, but oh my goodness, the super from Motep connects. Bobby and Pekka, big bad bustling brawlers going out of it. Bobby's fists of fury come up second against Pekka's hammer time. And now Nows take the lead on the right hand side. Sans has got a lot of work to be done. A good connection, but now falls into the realm, and Bobby has got to go in. It's neck and neck tied game. Nows are doing the unthinkable so far. And they're looking good on the right-hand side. Sands needs some more time there. This is dangerous stuff for STM Enders now to get further and further ahead. Shadow Realm used there by Firecrow to suck Sarah into it. Now Pekka going to throw the hammer down. And Nouns with a bit of a stronger grouping on the right-hand side are able to sneak a game win away early. I'm quite surprised, honestly, because I feel like SCMN had a pretty firm handle on that early game, especially on the left-hand side. I mean, Sands was just Play fantastically for me. Really, really was bringing everything out of the stops. But that right hand side is, is where it all came down to for me. And I think fair play to Pekka. You know, Frank is not an easy board to make work, and he made it work. And the irresistible attraction gadget means that those walls disappear awful quickly. And you can get drawn into your death, which is a bit frightening. Motep going to blow up some of those walls as well. Bobby lurking. Pekka trying to punish here. And my goodness, he does. That is all too easy for the Frank. Well, lovely helping hand there from Motip as well. It's just a really good amount of synergy, good communication coming from Nouns and Pekka breaking up that entire right-hand side. Bobby coming in, trying to decide as to which way he's going to go for. Oh. Getting a few taps onto Pekka, and the final blast from Sands will prevent him and stop him in his tracks. It's not bad there. Sands coming to the rescue on that right-hand side, but now still have a significant lead, and they're capturing both points at the same time right now. Sands pops the gadget. But very quickly, Vicro slinks away. Sand's gonna pop out in front of Pekka here. This is a scary prospect now as Shadow Realm drops it. Sands to fall. Sandbags thrown up, and now the Grasping Root's gonna be activated by Bobby. He's looking for Pekka, but Nouns have that right hand side. Now to take. Left hand already locked up, and SC men have not spent any time on that left themselves. Sands now has to go. It's not unwinnable here for SC men, but it is a lot of work to be done. A lot of damage coming in as Pekka's gonna fall as well. That's, That's exactly start. the start that SC men needed to have here as they approach 70%. Keep this up, it can be turned around, but Nouns are going to turn up the pressure cooker now. Zans can 1v1 anyone on the left hand side, but Nouns are paying attention to the right. It's going to be Bobby now again with the super, but Firecrow brings him down. Sans oh. to juke the damage out from the front here, but it's Nouns with Firecrow, the last player standing. And that's a set to Nouns already. That was the start that Nouns needed to have. They have had little to no momentum so far, and that could be the start of it. Very nicely done there from Firecrow. It's normally Pekka who takes the mantle with that Cordelia's pick. So I love the way that he was going uber aggressive. And you can see there just dancing around Sans. Sans was not really able to do much about it. And as quickly as that, the set just ripping away from STMN. We were saying this backstage, STMN tend to have these kind of late showings yeah. when it comes to their matches. Well, start. Once they get going, they don't stop. And we're talking about a team here who tried to blows with none other than Luminosity over in that NA West region. Very spirited back and forth with that team and has put himself in a position to compete here. Let's talk about the role that Frank plays here because he was so fearsome, especially with that frequent gadget use just to win the one versus one against Rosa. This is what I love about the World Finals. These are the brawler picks that are kept in the back pocket, the ones that you don't talk about and just keep for the times. We saw it yesterday with Reply Totem in that fifth and final set, bringing in the Rosa, the Max, you know, and it just worked out as a strategy beautifully well. No one saw that Frank pick coming, but into the Rosa, it just worked. It was going to be a tough one to make work. Work, but credit to Nows in that regard. They know how to play their tanks, and that's what makes them a scary team. They've got to be happy about that. It's such a slow start here. Remember, a clean sweep for Nows uh, would be absolutely massive and throw this all into chaos. Sands with a whopping 414 DPS. 10 takedowns as well. I mean, you know, it, it, for all intents and purposes, the man of that set, but it is all about the objective in Hot Zone, and that's where STMN struggled to gain that control over what Nouns brought to the table. But, however, a chance now to reset, to rethink things through. Again, this was the matchup that STMN wanted to have. They were very excited watching Nouns perform throughout the SPS Season 4 in the EU and MENA region. And, well, they've got their wish granted. The question is now, 
How do they respond to this? They are behind. Such an interesting group here for SCMM because they've not played against Zeta or Nouns in the last year or so. This, this, these are not teams that they're particularly experienced with in the first-hand sense. We're headed over to Brawl Ball now, folks. It'll be Pinhole Punt that we dive headfirst into. Certainly, for Brawl Ball, you've got to highly consider brawlers like Lou. We didn't see it necessarily as much banned out yesterday as I would like to have seen Charlie's day. I I'm going to put out on a wager that I don't think we're going to see Charlie once this World Finals. And if that happens, what a meme that will be. Yeah, the <laughs> team picking second basically has two band slots. Yeah. That's kind of the, the reality that we're in at the moment. But certainly, for now, you know, bringing in a couple of tanks wouldn't go amiss for me. Primo is very much up there in terms of what they'd be thinking. Buster for sure as well, which is not banned in this instance. Who's open? Is the Lou, and that's a scary thing already. I mean, those things are wide open. I mean, B and Spike banned by both sides here with the Rose to take it away. And of course, the Charlie the must pick, the must ban Charlie rather there for nouns. This is fascinating. When you have teams that have the same bands, it opens much more of the roster up, but the Lou, he gets slurped right on up by Sands. Sitting at breakfast with Corey from Tribe yesterday, uh, I was discussing the hotel, why did on ban Lou as much against you? His eyes went wide. He was like, exactly, I have no idea. What are people thinking? <laughs> I mean, Nouns may have missed the trick, or are they expecting that? Are they playing into some kind of strategy here? But certainly, you know, against tanks, Lou is a fantastic wow. pick to have. What's the answer against Lou? Because it's really the hypercharge that puts him over the top. Yeah, an instant stun, you're really left to the environment to, you know, encourage a takedown. Buster, I really like. I do feel like that is a solid, solid draft from now. Still, of course, can be very difficult to take down. That additional speed, the dancing and the dashing around the map, going to be something of SCMN to really harness in and you know, allow those shots to land. But, you know, Nouns have got a good starting hand. SCMN now going to pick two brawlers to follow up. Bobby, brother, pick Frank. Do it back to him, my guy. <laughs> Crow going to be locked in here. Slowing Toxin, very important. And when there's an opportunity for an all-in, get on there and dive. Love the Sandy pickup here as well. It's so important to stop a player in their tracks. Basically translate that to a kill in many cases. You've got to stop the stew from running away with it. Exactly that. I think the sand is probably my favorite pick. Actually, the crow, it's pretty solid. It's pretty decent. Again, that slowing toxin, like you already mentioned, is really the key there. But so much CC on this STMN drafts. Oh, am I coming in? <laughs> I mean, that, that's definitely it's, daring. It's so based. Keep it coming, bro. <laughs> I mean, a lot of teams were saying that they were considering Dynamite yesterday and didn't bring it in. Well, Nouns are really doubling down on that. It works in the first set. Why not keep flying it out there and trying it again? And I quite like it. I think that it could be okay here. Yeah, look, con consistent damage. It's very scary if you start getting caught up in the cycle of those shots. Also, Satchel Charge for a stun. It's been a frequent answer to Santi. Now, give us some form of stun. It's less reliable, of course, than Sweet Dreams, but it's a great answer to have. And against the mobility of a crow composition, it uh, wouldn't go astray. Motep here loses half of his HP the second he steps up here. Sands wants to try and push back. No gadget used just yet. But now it's with the speed zone. Have the initiative in the middle part. Yeah, that trickle down of the poison just eradicates the two-dream stun because it's just going to bring you back into the mix. And Pekka now on the three versus one tries to find something, not going to land it. And that's exactly what SCMN need to do to stay alive, keep that healing quality coming in, move the ball gradually forward, and keep the pressure on. Sands making a play here. Yes. And it's there! Oh, and it goes my. in! Lovely play there from SCMN as an opening hand. you got to respect it. It's well-known, commonly followed strategy of that Sandy stun into shot. They were not ready for it though. Fire Crow blown to smithereens here as Pekka wants to step up and equalize it. These two teams, no respect. That's the beauty of having a wall break, isn't it really? There's so little that can be done to defend against it. There, Motive with the shielding, trying to push his way forward. No connection though with that gadget. And this is the Fire Crow. Man, so long on that left hand side. Sans going to seal it. But the meanwhile, Motep is still standing, which means the SCMN have got to slow themselves down just a little bit. That burn from Fire Crow, crucial there to secure the trade. Bobby, with that super available, Fire Crow definitely steps out of it, but almost gets frozen up here. We'll try and wrap around. Sands also threatening now. The Sandstorm deployed. Over the top goes the dive, and Pekka is annihilated. Motep's in trouble, and you better believe this one's hitting the back of the net. What a response. What a night and day difference to that first set from SCMN. That was a walk in the park as far as I was concerned.
And what a calculated process towards the end as well. Having that hypercharge on the Lou, it was just very straightforward. Just stun out the Buster. It's a three versus one. I mean, but they are making those moments happen for themselves. They're not playing it bad. They're playing it absolutely beautifully. Now, though, got to pick up the pace here. Got to start to come through and make something for themselves. Now, Ficro there. Got stopped in his tracks once more as he tried to step up here at STMN. Oh my goodness, this one might be slipping away from now. It's awfully quick. Frycrow will be forced back inside his own goal area now as STMN jockey for position to look to convert on this map control. Yeah, as now it's going to be very cautious for Sands here. If he gets a gadget at just the right time here, Sands not going down, and that's where the unpredictability comes into play. Now he's just trying to find any motion for Sands in the left. Oh, he's going to get some taps as well. Two will fall, three will still stand for STMN. It's just Pega. He's popped the gadget early on with his actual charge, and that's making STMN think twice. Yeah, definitely. They don't want to walk into a stun there and have things turn around on them. A defensive speed zone deployed here by Firecrow now, as he knows Nouns need to get back to midway down the field. They'll call on the ball for the time being, as they know they really need to get, regain some map control, but Firecrow stunned up there by... That's Lou ultimate, and here comes Zard, diving on in, Pekka Lowe, oh! walks it in! What a pass to the feet, I mean, that had to land. And SCMN didn't falter, a good stun there, but not going to find a connection actually from Pekka. That's probably going in very aggressive. Oh, Motip. Motip still standing though, stands full HP, going in really hard on this left-hand side, but the big bomb from Pekka in just the nick of time. Lycro's going to burn down there, that poison ticking is such a pain, especially combined with the sand of Sandy, you can never heal if you're playing in the middle part of the map as Nouns. Such a powerful composition here from STMN. Blue super up. Sands as well, looking to threaten Motep, who will be stunned instantly. That's the buster out of the equation. Zar picks up the ball on the right-hand side of the map, but Pekka has the damage with Firecrow moving ahead. Zar now has to give ground. This is dangerous. Firecrow just walks it in. Yeah, Zar there too low to do anything about it, and that's what Nouns needs is when they did. It's 30 seconds left on the clock, so going into an overtime scenario, not the worst of places to find themselves in. Zar going in, gets some good trickle damage. The pass through from Bob Angel. Can Zar find it? There's no gadget on the side oh, of the in. And the goal is there! And with that set win, whether they know it or not on stage, SEMN may well have secured their passage to tomorrow's Championship Sunday. The one said was all they needed, but you know, just as well as I do, this team will set off for nothing less than a W. Such a calculated set, and we were saying it coming into it, STMN starts slow, but when they start cooking, it gets hot in that kitchen. I really felt the draft was a better one as well. The Lou, the Sandy, it hey. just works. The Crow's good. It's not my favorite in terms of three, but I mean, when you've got a gadget that just can secure goals like that, you're playing the objective at its best. I mean, it's all too easy. Walk up, hit him with the gadget, super shot into the goals. Again, like we talked about, once you have that, that Sandstorm down, and you have the crow damage, you have to basically move into your own goals to heal at all. It's really oppressive. It was actually a disgusting composition picked up here by his team and they got everything they could have needed. We know that Buster is Stu, so powerful, but when you have a slowing toxin and a stun, all of this CC on your gadgets to, to slow up the stew, there's not much you can do. I love the energy there from Sands, and this is what I'm saying about S team, and they are that momentum team that thrive upon how they're performing. 11 takedowns oh, for that man. 375 nasty, DPS, amazing from him. Sands already getting one MVP for the day. It might be on a crash course with his second here. Eat your heart out, Bobby. Sands being put in a position to dominate, and they've let him off the leash. It's his time to shine here at Worlds. I've got to say, though, when you just remind ourselves of the fact that it's Sans's first World Finals, I mean, I can't really remember a time that I've seen someone display so much talent in their first World Stage appearance. It really is something to marvel at. Gem grab up next, the last stop coming in thick and fast. I want to see the nanny bands, the 8-bit bands. They are such prominent mids. Mega as well can have his place. Tara for those lane side. Buster as well. There is just such a diverse brawler pool when it comes to this map. Yeah, look, SCMN let the 8-bit get through in that matchup uh, against Zeta Division a couple times, and it honestly it really hurt them. That's something they're definitely looking to avoid, I think, if they, they possibly can. The 8-bit is pretty scary. It was on Kaboom Canyon, I think. They let that one get through. See what the bands are here. Squeak taken away here by STMN, no less. Meg, Piper banned away. But there's plenty of options for sharpshooters still on the table. Certainly so.
make band out by nouns, which I quite like, but I feel like the nanny first pick wouldn't be the worst of things. A bit has got a lot of weakness. We saw it yesterday with Reply Totem. Lola gonna come in for STMN. Does open the doors a little bit towards a bell as a response from nouns. It's very difficult to do much about that kind of interaction. And as the first pick, oh, that's, that's a strong one. Oy, the nanny oy. mid is very, very good. Um, I'm already liking what I'm seeing. Oh, it's gonna come in. The Fat Splatter gonna be doing a good job on those lane sides to try and win it, try to seek and destroy, try to get that trickle down of poison. I really feel like Nouns are cooking something nicely here. It's a good tank deterrent as well. So with the eventuality of a Rosa or something else coming in, those problems are kind of gonna be kept at bay. Such a strong lane of the Otis is. One of the best duelists in the game, of course, if that super is available. Muting your opponent means that uh, you basically can't lose out in that matchup. Already very well-rounded draft here from Nouns. ST men though have to realize, okay, well, the, the bell is still open for us. That's an option. Pick up the Tara. Maybe Psychic Enhancer okay. to help out with those bushes. You also have help from beyond there, just in a pinch to as like mobile sandbags, if you will. Then of course that gravity is really crucial when it's time to go all in, throw that super down, and lay waste to your foes. It's one of my favorite lanes to have here and Lou coming in. I mean, this is a strong, it's strong so good. from STM. Tara man. Super, Lou Super. Oh man, that's filthy. Low limit as well. Very hard to avoid that spray when it comes in. And I mean, the bow for now, it's not my favorite. It's really not my favorite. It's like one of those brawlers. It's one of the safe ones to go for. But, you know, in the current meta, I mean, there's no hypercharge on the side of Nouns, and the Lu is the strongest hypercharge brawler in the game, in my opinion, currently, and it wasn't banned out. I just don't really feel like this draft has gone the way of Nouns. And we saw Tribe just exploit Lu constantly. Uh, you know, Zulan absolutely dominated on that brawler. Uh, already very strong in his own right, but yeah, with that hypercharge, that, uh, that really gets out of control here. We are one apiece in this set. Nouns were fighting for survival, but their destiny might already be sealed. They may already be out, but now they're here to fight for some pride. Firecrow here dealing with their help from beyond and takes Sans down as well. Well, the, na the Nanny is certainly my favorite pick on the side of Nouns, and it is making some good things Ooh. happen. And meanwhile, that stun from Bobby is huge. The Fire Pecker on it, Fire Crew weak on the left-hand side, and Sans has 700 HP. But that positioning from Zar will help get the pinch. Really nice from Bobby there. Obviously, he doesn't have the hypercharge for that. He just tapped Pecker a couple times, starts to slow him up. Oh, remember, with Super Cool, they already go to 50% exactly. freeze inside that Super. So the star power already gets you halfway there. All the connection from Sans, but the Mew was really well played by there by Firecrow. It meant that he was able to come out alive in the interaction, making that three versus two mines place oh. behind Bobby with the hypercharge stun. Immediately takes down Packer. He's not able to get even in this game at all at the moment because of what Bobby's bringing in. Ah, nice freeze frame there from Zara, meaning that there was no way Nouns could trade him for Firecrow on that left-hand side. We do see STMN give up a lot of map control through individuals, kind of feeding uh, there. The Zara obviously extremely healthy, able to play back still. A nice eight gems here. Sans has to use help from beyond to try and close the gap on Firecrow and still could be scary. Definitely dodges away from the mute though. That's a nice look, but still gets caught halfway through. Otis is oppressive on that left side. Turn to center there from Motive on Zara, but Motive is very, very low. He can't continue to contest this mid too much unless SCMN can start to push this forwards. His mind is now further placed deeper there by Peck on the right-hand side. And Actually, look at the gems. Nows are catching up. They're almost eight to eight now and have just done a wondrous job at making up for lost time. Bobby needs to retake control. I think that's the pivotal part of this map. Get your Lou winning that matchup against the bow and go for it. Firecrow's finally taken down as Zaz able to assist, but he couldn't get pinched here. Packer started to approach and Sands in no position to assist. He jump pads across the map. He's gonna go for a big play with that super, but where's the opportunity? It's just Firecrow. Sure enough, he falls. But it's Motep with the gems arc. Two gems spawning in the mid. SCMN can hold firm, but they cannot move away. What about to spawn any second now? If now it's going aggressively here onto Zar, he might drop them. He's low. 120 HP, but holding on in just the nick of time. We got him. Countdown back in the way, announce. Gems spilled all over the ground. Neither Bommy nor Sands can go for them right now. So Firecrow steps up and takes them from himself. He just needs the two of them. Zar can't even get back to the drop. Gems here now and five seconds left in the round. STMN are being cut. What a start on Jim Grab. Just 
a little bit of loss of composure there for us here, men. They had such a fantastic start. I mean, Saar was doing work in that mid, getting the gems in, Bobby on the right-hand side, continuously taking down with that Lou. But as soon as they lost that control, that's where Nouns really started to pick up the pace, make up that lost time, get those mines on the both side placed in a bit of a deeper position. And getting out of that spot is very difficult to do. Talk about the elephant in the room. Do we need to swap Sands out of that side lane against the Otis? It wouldn't be a bad shout. To be honest, the Fat Splatter has a good interaction with those shades and they're tearing through them. You know, Sands is not really having the best of times here. SCMN certainly needs to make some form of adaptation. We saw this happen earlier. This is what forced Zar out of mid in the first place and gave all that map control over to Nouns. Pekka here, another catch of foxes. Bobby has to step ahead of them into a hail of arrows. Pekka is low. Bobby is also dicing with death. 16 HP to 24. Bobby stays alive. That is actually massive. I love the freeze frame there from Zaha. Just keeping the shade far away and getting a lot of spray on his behalf. Let's see now how SCMN will hold. Sans doing a good job down the left hand side. That fast button not going to do much. And that mute is going to go straight into a shade. So good patience from Firecrow to land it when he does. And now he cleans up that left hand side. That's what you expect from someone like Firecrow. He plays around the counter play. Patience. Love to see it. And now it's going to be Bobby Hypercharge here. Pekka gets stunned up pretty much instantly now. He throws another super. He's going to cycle this. Motep caught out as well. We're at eight gems to one. And Firecrow doesn't get out unscathed either. This is a very similar situation to what we saw in the previous game, but this time round, SCM and hold firm, but there is a gem split there with Sands. If he goes down, it might reset. Saul needs really one more from the mid, but in the meanwhile, Firecrow goes down, SCM and are safe and sound, and bring this one back to tied sets. Much better here from STMN. Bobby fighting it out there against the bow. He survives with about 60 HP, and that freeze frame from Zara in the mid allows them to just collapse onto the right-hand side. That turns into map control, and it translates into a pretty early round win. But you can see how risky it is if STMN don't hold themselves firm. Nows have already demonstrated that if they find them to be able to push back to that spawn, they can go from bad to worse quickly. A good start from Sans, though he went down immediately. He did get some good value, some good uh, cutting through of those cards there onto Firecrow and Motep. It's just Bobby now, two gems sitting in the mid. Really, that's just waiting for Motep to scoop him up. I mean, it's fine to give Sans up there, but they needed Zara to stay alive. Those two gems get surrendered to Motep now. Good little damage and pressure at least on Pekka, but he's kind of not the issue. It's Motep here with the peep. Zara goes low, just one follow-up shot from Firecrow was always needed. One more shot would deal with Firecrow from Sands, but he cannot connect. The mute, though, does connect with some help from beyond. No good. Going to mute out that shade there. Firecrow knows it. I love the piloting, though, as well from Motep just to be able to scoot around and find the connection onto Zar. And meanwhile, Pekka is still on that bottom right-hand side. That peep is going to find Zar. And now Zar is going to drop all three gems. Now are now on nine. And SCMN are all over the place. Sands, though, is deep in enemy territory in a good spot to deploy the gravity until Motep catches him out. Zara in no position here to challenge Firecrow. He's a little bit too low. He's going to go for the Megalomania. Regardless, 1700 HP left on the Otis as the gems are distributed here between two Nouns players. But there's no way for Zara to get there. Pekka is waiting for Sands to step up. And it's a convincing set win for Nouns. I had Nouns down for me as being one of my top three teams in this competition alongside the STMN and for Esports, of which we'll see later on today. This is kind of what I was expecting to see more of from Nouns oh, earlier. We didn't predict them! <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy, not in this matchup anyway. We definitely thought they'd have the edge over Zeta Division, right? I think our expectations were sky high for this team. And now we're starting to see why. The question is though, Ark, is it too late? This is the question. This is the question. I feel like, you know, with that sweep against them, that they might be just fighting into the wind at this stage. We shall see how it goes down. Obviously, the head-to-head -head and the set win percentage is where this one is going to be decided ultimately. At the moment, though, at least, it's great to see that both teams are still giving it their all. And for SC men, certainly, you know, looking ahead of things, they've got to keep their game up. They had a very, very convincing round in that set. I mean, you know, but now's responded to it and showed them you know, this comp, despite it being my favorite, actually was the weaker of the two with a bow of all things, third and final pick bow. I mean, th those are ideas that shouldn't really be working. The Tara Otis lane for me was where it all fell apart. I mean, I don't know if there's a chance that you can swap the Tara maybe into the bow. 
But, I mean, Sen's got absolutely flattened time and time again by that. He's got a couple cute moments where you're able to block the mute out with some of those shades. It looked really good, but you're dealing with Fire Crow, for God's sake. He's not someone that is going to fall foul of that trick too many times. Finally, some uh, celebratory moments from now. Still staying relatively composed, though, and I think that's probably wise. 11 kills for... I'm just always looking to the left at this stage to see what Sans has been doing, because, I mean, his numbers are just crazy. I mean, eight, 11 takedowns Ow. is more than the entirety of Nows. And, I mean, 375 DPS to add to the mix. It's his first 12 finals. How... how 11 takedowns on the Tara? <laughs> You're kidding me. Can't be right. I demand a recount. Stop the vert. Stop the count. <laughs> I demand a recount. I don't know how he comes out of such an oppressive lane with such a solid stat line. But uh, you know, essentially, we saw you know Bobby do really well. I think at threatening that bow down a couple times, just like tap you a couple times, throw the super over here. Very standard stuff. Without hypercharge, able to freeze that target solid. And when he's able to do that, they push in. We saw the bow just start to slow down though not get hit as many times, not take a direct challenge, throw some supers out to clear some terrain, and that was it. And all of a sudden, Bobby didn't actually have the ability to help Zar. He couldn't collapse into that mid with him. And with Sans basically dying off spawn every time, it's very, very hard to translate that into any sort of gem lead. Yeah, for me as well, that mid battle, I still feel like Nani is probably the best mid now. A bit, I feel, is definitely a very close second. It's definitely got some weaknesses there with the slow and such, but we, we have got from Rosa coming with the unfriendly butchers and such. Shooter Star up next for Bounty, the long ranged affair. I want to see this kind of immediate bands really for me of the Piper, because we've seen what Bobby can do with it. You know, he saves it almost to fall those world finals. The Brock as well, the Fang, I feel, has got to be considered here very, very highly. I mean, if that Brawler is left open, it's a very aggressive one that I think Nows would thrive with. Yeah, I mean, the pop-off potential, uh, you know, the all-in, of course, of Fang is absolutely terrifying. Also, a really powerful Brawler that can, you know, generate his super pretty comfortably with a lot of that sort of long-range damage, that sort of less uh, less impactful poke, so it can still be a factor. Shooting Star has these powerful diagonals, which is where the sharpshooters tend to thrive. That's part of the reason why we see uh, the Piper take it away. I love the Mortis Respect band, by the way. That is absolutely classic. Charlie is just not going to get playtime. Hey. Andy, first pick. STMN are wild wow. right now. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm just going to straight up say I don't like Mandy. Okay. I'm still waiting for those moments where her super just decimates the entirety of the opposition. I mean, and what better time for it? I'm all, I'm all open to see it at the World Finals. No better time. But it is that really risky thing that just allows so much into it. I mean, if you're going to be charging into this kind of comp with a max, plus, you know, that kind of thing, it's be so difficult to really make it work. This may be why STMN has banned Grey and Mortis, right? The two most important brawlers right now for that all-in strategy. You are trying to hedge downs into a composition that has to play from longer ranges so that Mandy can't be threatened. Her biggest weakness, of course, is that she has to stand still for that extra range, for that extra impact. So make sure that Nouns can't just clobber you at close range and maybe you can exploit them at long range. Bell for Nouns. Okay. Going through. Pretty safe for me. I'm not necessarily you know, too excited by it at the most part, but the RT for you know, certainly all intents and purposes going to be a good pick. The legs, of course, you know they're going to have a moment to play around in those top right hand pockets and left hand sides, but for the most part, just the amplified shot, the hacks gadget to get that immediate damage is where you can get those kills going your way. And bounty, of course, that objective so important to remember to play and reserve those stars, but of course, kills and deaths is what it comes down to. Yeah, hacks reminds me a little bit of Kooky Popper, right? Just land exactly. that one shot and then, you know, have this burst damage that kind of comes out of nowhere. Being able to detonate those marks is really important. This is the first tick pick we have seen all weekend. I'm not liking this draft. And I feel like Nows are not exploiting the weakness of this. I mean, you imagine just going into this with a max. I mean, the Mandy can't do anything. Max, the tick yeah. is going to be struggling so hard here. I don't really feel like STMN are thinking this one through. Can you pick Max yourself? Eve here for STMN. I mean, I mean, I know Travis is just rolling his eyes to the back of his head right now. Again, understand why. Shooting star, right? Uh, again, this is a very much a sit back and wait composition for STMN. We were saying as well backstage in, in the hotel, Max is a very underrated brawler yeah. picked by a lot of the pros. Trace was saying, like, people, yeah. people need to be picking this brawler. He's very good. 
still good. Again, it's very, very serviceable, very solid, very well-rounded, safe pick, which is why I think we see the bell on like RT to some degree, right? Like I think, you know, Nouns haven't really committed to anything and here it is, the Carl comes out. Now, Nouns flash a bit of that all-in potential, right? Flying hook to close the gap, protected pirouette to make sure you can roll over these very immobile, long-range brawlers. That's a pretty scary prospect for STM and they had best be ready. Yeah, last hurrah has got to be on the cards for that tick. Yeah. Ultimately, that's the best deterrent of the card. It can take you out of the protected pirouette. But it's definitely the way that I was expecting this draft to go okay. more towards the side of. You've got to have that aggression. You've got to keep the brawlers like the man, the, the tick at bay. And I think Nouns could have done a bit more, actually, to really enforce that kind of comp. But hey, here we go. Let's see if STMN have got the, uh, the whole thing thought through and how they defend against these aggressive pushes from Pekka. It's important for Bobby, of course, to play pretty statically here. Increase that range again. Extremely long range is Ooh. Mandy. That Sugar Ray also very important. He's dominating the bell in that matchup there. Fire Crow goes down. And it's been a little bit hard for the Carl to have a say in this round so far. Yeah, the connections from Sands were wonderful. He's just landing everything. And wow. I mean, he's just, I mean, he, I'm not saying he's got the backpack, but nonetheless, his accuracy is. Oh! Bobby finds the right-hand side. The Pekka comes in and wants to punish it. Three stars there would be the bounce to take away. But That's the blue star. Yeah, he's going to hand it over. Devastating here. Bobby super available now. Waiting from the line up. Motep definitely needs to have his wits about him. And Bobby slaps him down from downtown. Five stars now for him, and he's making the supers count. I want to see the lineup, so I want to see all three go down with the result of it. But now the push coming in. Fire crows low on the side of Nows, but Motip finding the sounds on the left-hand side. Oh, the missed mark, though, as well. And the hatchlings now are going to just be able to advance upon this push. And Nows back into the mid. Motip can't get close enough to guarantee connections with these marks, Ark. That is huge. Remember, the mark does not come off you. So hitting it on a five-star target is absolutely crucial. Micro getting closer though, you know now that all-in potential starting to show itself. Sour a little bit low, that's three stars going over to now. They're still behind by four, but that's enough now as we head into the last 30. It's going to be a really, really tough defense here. Bobby's trying to get that additional range down the bottom left. Pops the gadget as well, but finds the pick up of Lycro. Ten stars to four, he's bought some time. But one final push, Pekka reserving that super, waiting for his teammates. If he lands it with the flying hook going in now, we'll touch up away. He does got to go gadget, he's going to get some value here. But STMN, Enough. stay strong on those back lines. 17 to four, what a defense. That was epic stuff. Bobby lays the law down on the Mandy. We raised our eyebrows at that pick. We said, it's risky. It invites a dive composition from your opponents. And to some degree, that's where Nouns went. RT can walk up on you. We know Carl wants to try and close the gap, but Bobby was absolutely ready for that dive there. The caramelized gadget to slow your foes down, give you enough space to find the burst damage to remove Carl before he can get on you. Well, it's a slow start. Blue Star, of course, going the way is now, as you'd far expect as a result of that Carl pick. Quickly into the mid for SC men. Three nest egg placements already there for Motor, but one more still remaining. Now to play defensively, and I don't mind it in this regard, but with the Blue Star in their pocket, it does invite the push. And SC men are that team which will go in and try to come out with the goods. Nouns mathematically, unfortunately, are still eliminated from the world finals as it stands. So this matchup is one for pride to take back home. Bobby marked up here by that RT. Confidence now brimming for STMN. They do lack the blue star here. But they've taken much of this map control now. Pekka, Firecrow, Motep, all starting to get poked down. Last to right here for Star, Zar rather, as he walked into a nest egg to answer it and Firecrow falls to the tick head. What? Hash is coming in now as well. That's just gonna buy a little bit more time for SCMN. It's just that one star differential at the moment. Motive slowly, and there's the super pickup as well from Bobby. Not done yet, getting another tap there onto Fire Grant into the mid, but it's just three now. And now it's with one good push, but that's the slow gadget again from Bobby. He's really making this man the count. I won't be eating my words. I tell you what, Bobby now tips his head. I think he feels like this is the time to show the pocket Mandy. And Pekka is the next to fall. Bobby now can move up here with five stars on him. 25 seconds left to play as Firecrow is desperate to find a way in. 
Yeah, 20 seconds, not much time for a response, but plenty of stars on the side of STM Man. They're going to be making the dive now. Pekka there with a the protected pirouette, but the slow connection for Bobby. The stars trading over. They're going left and right. 11 to STM Man, 9 over to Nows. Motor weak going to fall to Bobby. The Stuart to finish it all. And STM Man finishes strong. A strong start translates into a powerful finish for STMN. Headlined this time by Bobby. His North American team snatches up another set and you bet we're going all the way to five. There's no better time for it. We love to see it go all the way at the World Finals. I'm still not thoroughly convinced on that Mandy, but in the hands of Bobby, oh, on. in the hands of Bobby, I might be changing my mind on it. Sorry, he I'm played phenomenally well. I'm signing up for that one with five easy payments of 99.99 a month, my guy. I'm calling <laughs> in. I am absolutely convinced that was the pick there. Stunning stuff. Bobby is a specialist when it comes to those sharpshooters, Ark. This might be one of those moments where the stats are actually going to not be Sanzes to pay attention yes. to for the first time, realistically. I mean, that was a performance from Bobby to stay composed. I mean, the stars were pretty much always above his head on the side of STM. Yeah, we talk about, of course, Mandy's sort of apparent lack of mobility, but she does have answers. She has options. That was a caramelized gadget there on Fire Crow to make it impossible for RT to make a play with that super. Used earlier on to stop Pekka, I think, in his tracks as he tried to yeah, spin his way on in here. See, Bobby slows him up here, and Sands at least was there for the trade. And at this point, you have a blue star, and you can just throw Zara or Bobby in. It doesn't matter if they go down here. So you can give up one of those players, and they don't even have to do that. So they have redu <laughs> I love that. They have redundancy. And there it is. Spades. And there it is, a whopping 10 eliminations for your boy, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby's convinced me. For, for when he picks it, I'm down. I'm all here for it. It's a very tough brawl to make work, so credit for them to be as bold to pick it first. Many wouldn't, especially with what's at stake here. And I love the experimentation. Tough round there for Firecrow, just 55 DPS. I mean, that is really on the low side. Absolutely. I, I will say, like, the composition really struggled. It was a more of a mid-range setup that Nouns had. Mid-range with the option to close the gap, right? You had the RT, of course, and you had the Carl who, yeah, and it doesn't necessarily do great against sharpshooters. I don't think I ever saw like a flying hook engage there. It was very, very hard to even approach this setup here for STMN. But if you love sharpshooters, if you love the high skill cap, sort of uh, very complex mechanical brawlers, then you look to Bobby to really produce in situations like that. And yeah, Sands got out of the spotlight for a bit. He was on Eve though, he was doing the job. He was holding down that button for the boys. Heist, it'll be safe zone for our last set of this series. They're decided here, but as we now know, STMN have already advanced to our final day of play. It's such a great map for brawlers and for action. Uh, I'd love to see the 8-bit band out here. Ultimately, we've seen already with STMN going towards that particular brawl on Heist and being able to get that objective shredded out. Chuck as well, I feel, is one of those brawlers that I don't mind seeing uh, not banned. I think the best counter to that particular brawler, it is banned by both sides, but just to go in and get the damage, no one wants to take the risk, and I respect that. Charlie banned, of course, as well as the Colette, Nanny, and the Grom. But again, the Brock, the 8-bit. Collect for me has got to be a ban on this particular map. Sometimes even Luke or d is going to be a great thing to have when it comes to those defenses. A lot of options here as well. We've seen Lola taken at times on this map. Oh, oh baby, oh. it just keeps getting better. The Piper logged in and there's a good chance that one's going into Bobby's hot little hands. Yeah, you'd love to see it. You really, really do. Always an exciting thing to see Bobby with the Piper. Let's see how Nouns want to respond with this. Certainly range has got to be there on some level. Bonnie is going to be a brawler, which has kind of drifted away a little bit from the meta. But I feel like it still has very much a place getting those shots to land and then jumping off those assassination attempts onto the safe as well. It's definitely going to keep yourselves continuously back on that defense. But the cool deal is still open here. And if Bobby, you know, if SMM want to pick that one up and then have that to be as a counter pick, I suggest that Nouns want to really combine it. And they do. Yeah, I like that strat. No, I mean, Bonnie Great so well-rounded in, you know, in, in terms of that long-range damage over time and then being able to drop on in. Cordelia is such a great answer. Go aggressive with it, take a player out of the game here. So STMN now have to think how they manage this. They do have an answer to Bonnie in terms of Piper's range. Piper definitely fears the Cordelius in many cases here. You do not want to be going face-to-face -face with that Brawler here. 8-bit still open, though. 
that's absolutely an option. That cheat cartridge also can be pretty crucial here just to avoid getting assassination or get yourself out of trouble. And the, the EVE again, STMN really favoring this pick. Yeah, it's really going to be good, quite, you know, good, good into the Bonnie matchup. Those hatchlings are going to be very difficult to take down. The slow and sluggish shot, along with the movement speed of Bonnie. Right. It's so be... important that, I mean, Bonnie cannot store shots. Yeah. It's one shot and then reload. So dealing with, like, minions is very frustrating for her quite often. As it is for Piper to have to deal with if now want to pick up. And there's the A bit. I love this mess here in comp. This is a solid, solid draft. Really well thought through. And. I think that Nouns are going to struggle. Sure, they've got the Cordelius on defense, but when you look at the amount of range to the disposal of STMN and Brock, sure, I mean, it works, but I'm already kind of sold. sold. You're sold, bro. <laughs> five easy payments, 999. I'll give you a discount. If I refer you, you get it a little cheaper and I get a kickback, all right? I'll tell you, we're making this happen. Look, I, I, like, I like Sands on the Eve here. Uh, he was really, really good. On a brawler that generally doesn't, isn't able to create these, like, you know, explosive moments of high burst damage and, you know, attract all that attention, the utility is undeniable. Obviously, spawning the hatchlings, but also just being able to opt out of playing in that middle choke. So there's less options here for, you know, for now to sharp shooters to get easy damage and easy supers. Yeah, and we saw uh, no, Sounds was playing beautifully on shooting star, so let's see whether he's going to be taking the same pick. Pekka on the Cordelius is a dangerous thing to see immediately oh through God. the mid. Bobby was Sit up. down. Beautiful gadget. I love it. Love what I see when I'm thinking here. Break off the mid. They're just not wasting any time at all. Yeah, a lot of a fun way to start up, but that is ultimately traded, that elimination. Fire Cronel oh, just walks into that one from Bobby. Your boy is cooking. Sal wants to move up on that right-hand side of the map. It sands this time on that 8-bit. So that extra dual ability and filthy amounts of damage here is so big. Pekka, though, able to dodge away from much of those shots. Azar has to try and jump across the gap, but gets caught out by that incendiary field from Motep. Sands no more than happened to maybe 1v2 this. Damage amp to block those rockets here, and Bobby to the rescue. STMN are clean with it. I just love how STMN have each other's back. I mean, Sands was just ignoring that right-hand side, and Bobby with the pickup. I mean, it's that sort of team synergy that is just worthy of lifting gold. Motep with the right-hand side is going to trickle down the poison. Yes, he will go down. Pekka going on the aggressive, but it's not going to matter because oh, everything man. is solid on the side of STMN. Here we go. Time to fire some shots off at this safe. STMN get their just rewards for being able to dominate the game in the middle of the map. Motep, well, he's dead again. Now, back in spawn once more. Firecrow and Pekka getting absolutely hammered here now. Cordelia's trying to step up to put pressure on the Eve. But at what cost? The hatchlings are going to work here on Pekka and eventually he falls for that ticking damage. Yeah, it's a matter of time now. With the position of Zara is in with the hatchlings about to soon then come and help out. But Pekka will clear things up. Sans taking some damage, but it's just a measly 5% so far for Nails. SCMN are way out in front with 45 seconds left on the clock. All they got to do is hold firm, land some more taps and keep this pressure on. Yeah, we may not, we may well not need all that time left in the round. Here's a damage amp now as Pekka wants to step up and try and put a bit of pressure on Sans, but he's so healthy, so tanky, so durable. Pekka, though, is better in the 1v1. Will be removed again as Bobby intervenes from across the map. These guys play cross lane so effectively, it's like they're mind linked. 20 seconds for a final push, but Firecrow is not going to be present for it. He's going to find himself back on the defense, especially with that pick of a Packer. As Bobby now goes towards the mid, fires a safe 19%. Sounds from the left, popping gadgets, landing little connections there with the extra credits. 12% is going to be enough. SCMN moving on to match point. You said you were sold. You bought the stonks of that STMN draft, and so far, it's been paying dividends. Immediately, Bobby comes out of the middle of the map. It's a homemade recipe, you tap to follow it up, and it's an instant three versus two. And that was a story for basically that entire round. It's something they can absolutely replicate. We start to see why Eve is so punishing, so difficult to deal with. We mentioned about her super being powerful, the ticking damage, and also the mobility of the jump. Zar doing at least as well as Sans did in that previous set, as ST men get value after value. Oh, look at these trades going left and right. But Firecrow is going to try to find a connection on the safe. Not actually going to be able to land it, but Sans will. Meanwhile, he's already got damage booster as well. And it's the same old story. SC men just launching themselves into the game and not wasting any time at all. Oh, they, I think they took now it's way too long to get rid of that damage amp there. They got completely, I guess, befuddled as they tried to go up against Sans as he threw that down. 
So a decent lead. I mean, Sanchez lined up the safe a couple times. There's Bobby once more intervening in a side lane. Motel with the rocket laces here, but Sands has seen that trick before. And then he has another damage boost to the throwdown in moments. And Pekka running, chopping at the bit to engage. Sands will be drawn in the Shadow Realm heal. Try and keep Pekka busy for a time. 21% damage on that safe for now. Nice jump there from Bobby Packer, low on that left-hand side, 116 HP for him. Lovely pick up there from Bobby, just popping the gadget there. But still, Packer's got to make his way forwards here to keep his pressure on. And Zara now can try to see it off on the bottom side. The egg as well, just going to take some shots, but Sands too low really in the mid. Might go down with his jumping from Firecry. Bobby there should get the pick up, and that leaves his motor alive. I mean, Nouns are playing so recklessly here just to try and get any damage on the safe. There's a sense about them. They feel like they might have already let this one slip. Homemade recipe doesn't quite hit the mark this time as Pekka is out of sight. Step at Ficro and he will step forward again as Sands is forced to give a bit of ground. Hatchlings, though, will be popping out in just a moment now. Frustrating, as we mentioned, for Firecrow to deal with. Zar throwing in some extra shots as well, and Firecrow is devoured. Motep on the back foot now as STMN takes some mid control. Now, which boosted down, there's the extra credits connection from Sands. We're forced into the round by Pekka. Really nice little defense from Nows here. Dirty. They're going to stay firm in that damage booster, and that is more objective damage heading the way of STMN. It's almost too much. Arc for now, it's to come back from now. Down to 50%, that's safe, and Peck is not in a position to try and create openings for the rest of his team. Firecrow taking that ticking damage constantly. Motep finally able to deal with Zard. There might be an opening here. Firecrow looking to jump on him, but instantly blown to smithereens by Sands. 10 seconds left. Peck wants to step up now, but they should be hitting the safe instead of each other. Nouns fall in front of the objective, and STMN will advance to Championship Sunday. What a day for the boys in green. A wonderful display, some fantastic drafts, and the additional boost, that buff with Sands. <laughs> my, oh my, that boy's done well today. SMN will sleep well tonight, that's for sure. A slow start to 2023 for STMN. Finally getting the take to the stage at Worlds with Sands in tow. Bobby supporting them as well in that coaching role from behind. This team has all of the pieces they need to create a winning mixture. And they'll have a chance to reach for glory tomorrow. I've got to say, honestly, you know, I was surprised that Nows were the team to fall away from this group. They were in my top three, but SDMN still surviving on foot are still in my top three. They're yet to come. I mean, commiserations to Nows. They did bring a good game, but it just felt a little bit too late, didn't it? Absolutely. I mean, this Group C has been incredible. We expected this to be one of the most competitive collections of teams here at the World Finals. It's a slow start. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that for Nows. You're going to wish desperately that you had that back. What we saw from them there in this matchup against STMN, it was very clear they were tooled, they were equipped to compete. They just took too long to get their sea legs. And unfortunately, it didn't really matter what happened here after STMN got that one set and Brawl Ball was, whew, that was it after that. One more, Bob, one more. And as well, like when you think back to their matchup with Zeta, it was punishing to not gain a couple of sets along the way. It came down to that head-to-head -head set win percentage. And that's credit to Zeta, all credit to Zeta because of that mammoth matchup between ST men going all the way to the fifth. I thought that they would come into that second match and be deflated, but they just came back strong and thoroughly deserving of going through as well. But for now, certainly not the result that they were hoping for no. in their region. No, and again, of course, Nouns really invested heavily in this year. I mean, that was such an important fixture in Europe. They will continue to be as well as we head, of course, towards their SPS challenge finals but this will be a, a bit of taste in their mouth going into that tournament they'll at least have a chance for revenge but if you don't give bobby mvp you're freaking dead to me this guy is so sick <laughs> i mean straight out of bounty into then another sharp shoot to match 19 takedowns 423 dps some really really strong stats for him and i think for everyone on the side of sd win today sans was doing his bit time and time again as well czar really came through for me as well they are looking like, for me, the team to beat in this competition right now. Yeah, is that, is that, are you, are you I feeling from like the that? Beginning, I still feel it, you know? Well, man. SCMN and Foot, I mean, let's see what Foot bring, but for me, SCMN are scary at the moment. It's all MVP. There's only one person who should be getting that. One person. I don't know. Give it to him now. 
Sands takes it again, the MVP. I mean, I gotta say, those first few sets were huge. That E play was stunning. Bobby molding right now with that result again. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Wasn't up to me, buddy. <laughs> I mean, but this is what I love about his team, man. Because if someone has a bit of a slow game, someone else will pick up the slack. They've always got each other's backs, and they really are that kind of team that have the essence of family. And you can see it. You know, backstage in that first match, it was later. We were like, did we make a wrong decision in our predictions? And then they started to really pick up the pieces and make up for that lost time. Awesome stuff. He knows it. Sands celebrating, and with very good reason too, as STMN set themselves up now. With the top seed coming out of this group, I think it's really important. It means they might have a favorable matchup to start things off. Let's have a look at Group C and remind you of how the standings sit at its conclusion. It's STMN with a clean 2-0, but that was after 10 sets of Brawl Stars. Not easy by any stretch of the imagination. This team is absolutely getting maximum value out of their time on stage. Zeta Division, of course, with that sweep against Nouns, cements their spot at second here in the group. And Nouns, like we explained, had to win every single set in this last series to have a chance of making it through. That's just too much to ask for in the group of death. And you've got to remember, you know, how much SDMN had to go through to get to this stage that's in itself. LCQ was a really grueling group for them there. And today, bringing out all the goods, they are so deserving of going all the way, in my opinion. And they just don't give themselves an easy ride, but they're still looking this good, despite that mammoth journey along the way. And I mean, it's just beautiful to watch. I mean, not only is Ark bought in on the STMN hype, he's joined the pyramid scheme here, ladies and gentlemen. This guy is absolutely sold for it. <laughs> That's Group C finalized. Group D coming up next is, it's bloody delicious. We'll have much to say about that on the other side of this break. Don't go too far. Group D, our final group here before we head into finals kicking off right after these messages. Seventeen. Seventeen. No? Seventeen. The sixteen was the brother the beta. Twenty eighteen? Twenty seventeen. December twenty eighteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Eighteen. I think. Twenty eighteen. 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 Tw
a two-time world champion entering the stage in the form of Tensai. He's accompanied by Shitambo, who won alongside him in 2021, and Moya, who has also won an MSI. So this is truly a team to be reckoned with. And they will be playing from the last chance qualifier, Europe's SK Gaming! This is a team with two very experienced players in Yoshi and I Chaos, and they're joined by the rising star power of Frenchman Opie. Just two more spots remain in tomorrow's playoff bracket. And both of these teams want to get off to the best start possible with a dominant win. But who is going to be taking it? Let's start the action with our casters. Thank you very much, Frankie. Let's get it started. It's Group D time. I'm excited, man. We get to see Crazy Raccoon, the world champions from last year, at least one world champion on their team and uh, also a grand finalist as well on their team. Uh, I, this is the question for me, you know, is this East Asia region going to keep up the pressure on the world? You know, we saw a little bit early this year at SPS Masters and, you know, you know, for Tensai coming third, that's a devastating thing for him. He was actually in tears in that interview, and I gave him a load of credit on social for it because you can see how much this game really means to him. For him, there is nothing less than first, and for them today, they've got a, a worthy opposition here with SK Gaming, who had a phenomenal performance throughout the LCQ. This is without a doubt. I mean, they had a flawless victory there, winning every single match that they went up against. And now they need to continue that kind of success. It has been a very difficult journey for them, though, going through that last challenge. The most recent challenge with the Snapdragon Pro Series has been tremendously difficult for them. So now they need to bounce back. We'll start off here on field goal. Yeah, they didn't, didn't drop a single set at LCQ on the side of SK Gaming. But as you rightly say, they have fallen off just a little bit as far as SPS is concerned. Well, no time for that on the world stage. Certainly as well, in terms of those drafts, Pedro are going to be contributing a great deal towards that. OP's kind of land experience has really come into the forefront for him this year. I've been really impressed watching him flourish at LCQ. And for Yoshi as well, you've got to remember, he's been present at the World Finals, but has never been on the stage. He's always been on the bench. So that man today, I really want to see come into his own. Well, it's his time to shine here on the big stage, getting started in our very first set momentarily. And it's going to be exciting to see as well how things start to adapt as well with Hypercharge now being a consideration. That was something that we did not see at LCQ. It's something that we have yet to really see in a large capacity from Crazy Raccoon. And this is very more favorable to a more aggressive meta. So will that really adapt with SK's gameplay style? This is the question as well, and when it comes to Brawl Ball, I mean, we all know that SK's play style is to go super on the defensive against a team like Crazy Raccoon, who are just very, very aggressive by nature. Um, I don't know whether that is, for me, the play style to go. You've got to find that balance, and sometimes leaving the goal, uh, leaving the ball rather in that corner towards those final moments, it encourages that push. But certainly, for many, I've been hearing on the pro side of things that the reason why we've seen a slight drop off and decay on the East Asia side is coming down to draft so that's where my attention is going to be here today with crazy raccoon and already i can see that some of the some of the note work is already out so that's a good sign well, I mean, you talk about this draft, right? And historically, especially from what we've seen earlier on in the year, yes, it has been the central pain point for the East Asian region uh, and, and the Japanese players in general. Now, this is kind of interesting, though. In a recent interview, Rely, the coach for Reply Totem, did say that they don't expect teams to outdraft them anymore, which is a huge statement, especially knowing that they're going up against some of the greatest drafting minds, especially region-wise. We'll start off with a Sandy pick here from Crazy Raccoon. I think a fairly strong way to start off a draft on field goal. Yeah, certainly we've seen a great deal of Sandy play this weekend and Sweet Dreams done, it just opens up opportunity and objective goals scored. Spike is a very safe starting hand for me, but a hypercharged brawler that does bring a great deal amount of versatility 
a good tank counter as well, and area control, area denial with that super exacerbated by the hypercharge itself. And Rose are coming in as well. There's still those big tank counters open, though. Shelly is open here for Crazy Raccoon. Okay, two purples on the side of SK Gaming. We got to see some hypercharge ability come out from Crazy Raccoon, lest they don't think it's really that ticket to success. They need to also be considering this last pick that's available at SK Gaming. But they have already gone one of the big, like, tanky brawlers that you usually see as a last pick. So I think this is a fairly inventive draft from SK Gaming. Clearly, they've got some things stewing up over here with what appears to be really gutsy with Rosa, but also a little overly safe with the spike. Finally! Finally, someone's bringing in Max on Brawl Ball. A really underrated brawler and one that Crazy Raccoon know how to play best, in my opinion. This was the champion brawler which really catapulted the team onto the scene and back in the days prior to draft. But the aggressiveness of which it brings, I think, is very understated. And a great pairing as well with the Sandy. But they've got to have that tank counter pick to add to, and to combine with this. And I think it's got to be a Shelly. I mean, SK have locked, knocked out a lot of the opposition. The Cordelius, the Lou, they would have been a fantastic thing to have. Maisie, though, going to come in. That is my second favorite thing to have. I've been a bit more sold in the World Finals when it comes to that brawler. And you know, when it comes to the Rosa, it's very good at keeping her at bay. Look, no complaints here with the Maisie, especially when you have these walls to consider. If you look at just the geography of this map, you're able to hit that super through walls and you're able to recharge it very quickly, just charging the super by using the super. If you get some good contact stew here as well to break open some of those walls, create some goal scoring opportunities and might be able to keep up with some of these enemies on Crazy Raccoon. The struggle, I think, is going to be hitting those shots once Max has that speed going. I also want to talk about, like, what is the mid here for Crazy Raccoon? It could be a Max. It's going to be hard to shoot those shots around in the bushes, so it'll be a difficult lane victory to win. Maisie also makes sense as a mid brawler, so there's a bit of versatility in what the lane matchups are for Crazy Raccoon. For SK, it's less so. I think the spike mid is really the way to go. Let's see. So we head on in. To the opening of Group D is a fierce group, no doubt about it. Speed zone already for SK, and they're pushing themselves immediately forwards. IKS is going to take the right hand side, pass through to OPE. A few dashes around from Yoshi, both sides trying to find their first sign of some super, some utility to hand over. OPE is already quite low though, 10 sides getting a good amount of. Oh my word! Dash away just in the nick of time. The Shitama goes in. It's a three versus two now, and a push forwards for Crazy Raccoon. Yoshi's still trying to defend. In fact, passes that ball all the way to the goal so that I Chaos can take it. Ope also trying to fend off this charge. A super in from the Sandy. The Shitapo now provides some backup for Tensai. Coming around the left flank. It's a team wipe around the goal line. Moy's got to slot this in. Ope's trying to defend on just 40 health. Tensai walks it in. 40 HP. I was surprised that Moy didn't come in for the helping hand. A close call, but one that is still a goal. SK pushing forwards, popping the super there on the side of OP, but the push of the speed from Tensai and the push back there from Shitapo. A lovely use of gadget, a good solid defense. Three versus two now, and SK have got no choice but to come back. Yoshi's just a sole defender here at mid, needs someone to come on this left lane. In fact, no one comes though, they're all running it down the right lane, they're gonna try and spearhead some kind of charge. Chitapo overextended and exterminated too. It's just Tensai Moya on the defensive. A little bit of Root Sands action enables Moya to push forward and push forward this metaphorical line of scrimmage, a good kill onto Yoshi as well. As SK are full on the defensive, Ope on dangerously low health, tries to rotate over towards that left side, but there doesn't seem to be a good matchup for the guy. I was just about to praise Moe, but then that gadget, that really premature gadget that was shot into the wall. Bit of a misplay from here, maybe some early signs of nerves, but the speed from Tenso brings him back into life as OP's making a run for it. The hypercharge pop, one down, Moe is going to fall, Tenso is remaining, but OP's being a bit, a bit struggling to make the play and make the move, and it's taken down now as the defense will stand for Crazy Raccoon. He was a one-man army over there on the right lane. Yoshi wasn't able to push in, very timid there around the super from Moya which is now renewed on the side of SK, but way too aggressive. They won't be able to get any of the benefit of that invisibility or the diminishing of HP. Thanks to the Rude Sand star power, Shittampo and Tensai fully on the defensive. Only 15 seconds remain, and SK Gaming have to generate a goal. It's now or never here in this game for SK Gaming. 10 seconds here. Ikea is going to try to make the champion play, but Moya is still going to stand there on the defensive lines. Yoshi coming now with the speed for the ball. Push to the left, and it will stand as Crazy Raccoon take the first game.
Very solid stuff here for Crazy Raccoon. SK kind of quiet on their front. We saw a lot of supers going over that Sandy. I think that was the most important thing here for Crazy Raccoon. Once that Sandy super is down, there's just no pushing into it. We did see some times where it was actually placed a little bit too aggressively, which enabled SK to move past it. But in perfect moments, we saw things like Openg ready to make a goal, but there was no support from Yoshi. He did not want to push into that super. Well, much the same from SK, that early speed zone here, just to keep then Crazy Raccoon on the back lines. Moya's gonna fall, which is Tenzai Shitapo. Will pass over though to Crazy Raccoon to decide where they wanna have this. One speed zone here for Yoshi would be nice to have, but still, Crazy Raccoon looking very quite confident in these defensive moments. Renewed speed zone here for Yoshi. More speed for Ope if he wants to move around, but there's so much CC available to Moya and Shitapo. Tensai also is working hard for that super that will enable them to push out of here. Great oh. super placement there from I Chaos. That is the win condition, but they need to convert on it. Moya and Shitapo still holding their own, but the ball slips through the left side, and it's a goal to start for SK Gaming. That was great. Fantastic from SK. They've got to play this slow and patient into those brawlers like Macy. They've got those stuns, that knockback potential. And it was beautiful. Let's see, though, whether they can hold up their defenses. Crazy Raccoon now are chasing the goal. The speed coming in from Tenzai. She's having from the right-hand side. Has got super, and you can just see how good it is. Hypercharge, and he almost got the double, but goes down, and SK defend pretty well. All out onslaught now here for SK Gaming as they get not just one, but two kills. Moya is still trying to defend around that left side, and everyone's looking alive and healthy on the side of SK, but they really need a Rosa super in order to do anything. Ikeos would also prefer to have his super to combine it with his hypercharge. There it is, it's instantly popped. Moya's just on the edge of this. Ope is gonna try and force this through. Tensai just on a fraction of health left. Moya trying to rotate over, but it's an open goal. And SK Gaming close out this game. When you look back to how SK started, that was a learning. That was a learning for me. And they look like the cold exterior team. The ice in the veins was on much more their side of things. Crazy Raccoon couldn't keep up that style of defense and for the most part it worked out well until SK just displayed that they were willing to wait and when they've got time on their side, that's what makes them a very scary team in this matchup. It's precisely what you're saying, it's the patience really. And I think yeah. especially from Ope, he's going into the Sandy matchup knowing that if he feeds that Sandy super, then it's gonna be devastating for the rest of his team. He's still gonna be pushing in though. Looks like a goal scoring opportunity. Yoshi's on low health. Same for Ope, the stun as well. And it results in a kill for Crazy Raccoon. SK Gaming now have to fall back, but they wanna maintain that mid control. The ball is sort of out of their possession. Yoshi is thinking about picking it up and putting it in a more optimal place. Moya now around the right side, throws down that super. It's an opportunity for Tensai to push in, but he's being quite timid as well. SK Gaming, they're alive and healthy. Ope lurking on the right flank, but still no big moves just yet. Ball trying to be pushed forwards by SK Gaming on the right-hand side now. OP has got a super, as has Yoshi, and Yoshi now coming on the aggressive, fighting ten side just a little bit here. Moira as well. Tampo has super now. OP is going to think twice, and then that's wise under the circumstances. One tap, two tap, three tap. Four coming in as OP is instantly eradicated. Now SK have got to push this ball around here, try to get it out, buy some time, get those respawns back on the back lines, but oh, Shitambo's not done yet. Man, Yoshi was really overextended there. I Chaos is gonna have to pay the price too. Ope, he's a one-man army over here on the left side. Tensei's on dangerously low health, but Ope has no choice but to push in. Crazy Raccoon, they reign control over this mid despite the best efforts of SK. And now, with the Sandy Super in, this is going to be difficult for SK Gaming to push out of, at least for now. Tensai moves over to the right side. He's still without a Super. It would be magnificent if he can get that onto Moya, who manages to pick up the kill onto I Chaos. Shitapo in with a Gadget and Super combo. Still no goal just yet. Moya has the combo. Here it comes. No, not right through. Ope missed timing on that Gadget, and I Chaos can still defend. That was so punishing, so punishing there for Moy. You've got to land those moments. That was a goal for me. For the ball to the left-hand side. Ten side trying to get that additional speed in, that additional maneuverability. Stun from Moya to deflate the hypercharge. The ball's still firmly in the corner. 20 seconds on the clock. We could be going to overtime, which may not serve SK as finally. Nice connection though for my on the left-hand side. And uh, Shitampo now struggling. The hypercharge pops, now expiring. I Chaos, wow, completely beamed down by Tensai. Now trying to speed through some of this area. Ope unrelenting, going for Moya. He won't convert on that kill, though. And it's everyone from Crazy Raccoon now going to the side of SK Gaming. All of these obstacles fall as SK are woefully without any cover for Ope. Now approaching up the left lane, trying to protect this ball. Might opt to push it forward. No, over to the right side. Yoshi's gonna keep this safe in the back right corner. They're trying to play keep away from Crazy Raccoon, but they keep on advancing. Ope will be the first 
first to fall, it looks like, if we see that final shot. Tetapo, a pass over to the left. It's an open goal and a set for Crazy Raccoon. A very important opening hand for Crazy Raccoon there. They looked a little bit sheepish for me, which is unlike them. And making a couple of mistakes along the way. For Moya specifically, I want to see him settle in to this set and really come into his own. But again, the Max really underrated and it did help the aggressiveness shine a little bit more so for them. For SK, I liked the way that they approached this. I think even despite the loss, going in just a little bit, you know, unsure of themselves, maybe at times, but also playing it patiently, which is what gave them the goals. But in overtime, you know, that's not going to really necessarily work with the combo they've got. They had to get a goal earlier than overtime. That's really the deal. And you saw Ope playing super aggressively, trying his best, but it was that Sandy first pack that really came back to bite him. Just constant supers, especially if we look back to game number one where Moye was getting these supers back to back, and Ope being the main contributor. He has the most, uh, most health to work with here, and we'll get to see what the stats exactly were for Sandy in just a moment here. Wow, fantastic reactions for SK. I mean, they did make some good moves here. This is the kind of thing that we came in here wanting to see from SK. Yeah, that, that for me could have been a set that could have gone either way. It really could have been SK set. It could have easily gone that down that path, but just that singular goal really to separate it through. Good round there for Shitampo. Tensai and Moira as well, both on seven. Yoshi had the best round on the side of SK. OP just the form, the 82 DPS, very much on that lower side of things. Yeah, I mean, this is the result of being a tanky brawler facing into not only anti-tanks, but brawlers that have very valuable supers. It's a paradigm that you see uh, present in both Sandy or something like Nita, notorious counters to tanks that farm up their supers so easily off of a beefy target that keeps on pushing in. Julian Beatles, lose open, I was gonna say, he's picked before I could even have the words escape my mouth. Why are people leaving this brawler open? It's the best hypercharge in the game and it's immediately picked up by Crazy Raccoon. Bands there though of Jesse, of Squeak and Barley, Charlie, Maisie and Cordelius. But how did that one escape through the net? Had to be intentional. I mean, at this level of play, it has to be. What that? I mean, you, you got Charlie, you got Maisie, Cordelius on the side of SK Gaming in, in terms of their bands. There is such a thing as there being bigger fish to fry. You know, maybe we need more than three bands in order to get Hypercharged Lou out of the equation. But we also saw situations where Lou was countered just yesterday, even though it was like selected as the last pick. When it comes to Hot Zone, though, this is a win condition, without a doubt. Time available here for me. That's a beautiful brawler to pick up. I think SK have got to go with the opening of the map approach here. Otherwise, I mean, the Gale's certainly going to have... Uh, this is what makes me worried. The Gale's going to want the walls to be there to get those additional stuns, but... I know that Kenny is sold, <laughs> but I'm not necessarily <laughs> as much. I asked Kenny what the win rates were for Gale. 50-50 so far in this competition. Let's see, though. Crazy Raccoon do want to double down on this loop pick. You're gonna have some range though for those lane sides. Rosa, though, the tankier approach, gonna come in for them. Building the bushes into the mid as well. And there's that long range approach to have as a decent brawler for me. One that I expected to see a bit more of actually in the World Finals. We, we gotta see something from SK to break open these bushes. We know that this is gonna be the strategy from Crazy Raccoon. And it does force SK's hand just a little bit. There are probably other things that they wanted to counter here. Maybe something else for the Lou. I think that Stu will be one of those options that can be fairly decent for dealing with Lou because the number one thing with Lou is that his shot can be difficult to hit. And I think Stu is fairly good at dodging those out. It is LAN, after all, the zero ping Stu can come into play. There's the Sprout. And this is not gonna be great for DPS, but it's gonna be phenomenal for denying the Super Delu. I was about to say, I froze, you saw it already. I was thinking, <laughs> this is, there's no wall break on the side of Crazy Raccoon. And obviously for Eske, they were not gonna be going with that opening approach because they wanted the Gale to have the stun. It was kind of calling out. And I Chaos on that Sprout, in my opinion, the best player in the world to have it. If SK get this right, it could be theirs. They've convinced me now with that third and final pick. But Rosa has got a wealth of HP. The amount of shots they're gonna have to land onto her, it's gonna be a bit of an uphill struggle. Maybe not, maybe they'll convince me more so, but for me, the Lou is just, it's a bit of a win condition brawler right now in terms of the meta. 
Well, wind condition already present. Here comes the very first super from Shtetampo and a trade as well. With the wind condition of SK Gaming, they need to get this hedge up all the time. We'll see a kill onto Tensai, which is a good start, but still, SK Gaming have no presence on this zone. They don't have a whole lot of HP to work with. Yoshi is really the healthiest one on their team. Shtetampo already has a hypercharge. We're only a few seconds in the match. Yeah, SK just haven't been on the zone. I mean, it's allowing Crazy Raccoon to walk all over this. Walls are all good, but at the same time, Crazy Raccoon are working their way around them. OP, low HP now, and down to just 300 hypercharge goes in. Vicious Tampo gonna get maybe a double stun here, not gonna fight either one. I'm very surprised, but the positioning from SK was good. But still, almost 50% on the zone to the five of SK. Where are they? Greed overwhelming there with a hypercharged super, but still it stuffs SK Gaming back into their own spawn. Tensai's gonna get a piece of the pie too, goes for a bit of damage on Yoshi. He knows he wasn't gonna get it facing him that super. And as a result, actually, Moin Shitampo are very backed up. SK Gaming will get their first chance at advancing on this point, but iChaos cannot afford to get hit here. Shitampo, there it is, just one shot, and he's already got another super up. What a lovely rattle time there, really was. Bang on point there from Moya. Will the second be as well? It is. OP just tries to aggress his left hand side. There's still the slow, the, the hive there from Moya, but not going to find something for it. SK have got so much time to make up for 83% for Crazy Raccoon. They just need that 17 as Tensai goes in. Hypercharge there, working his way forwards, having that additional buff. It's going to be all over unless SK really now knuckle down and secure every single opening. It's certainly possible, but I Chaos is out of gadgets. Maybe it's looking a little bit less possible. Shitampo needs a super desperately. Tensai's also slowed down. Yoshi's gonna keep pushing him back. If Shitampo gets this complete denial to the hypercharge, but it can still come up mid. Needs a shot somewhere. OP completely jukes him out. Shitampo getting shut down. Just one more shot to eliminate him. And SK Gaming are really coming back. Crazy Raccoon have got to push as a team now. Tensai just trying to keep himself alive in the mid, and it will be done. The game will go the way of Crazy Raccoon. SK was slow at that matchup. They were able to build a great amount of pressure towards the end, but we need to see that more at the beginning. Really, the most difficult thing for them here was a hypercharged Lu. Right off the beginning of that game, it fell flat on its face. They gave a super to the Lou immediately. He had that super down. I mean, Lou was already an insta pick here, or at least a highly favored pick here, before the hypercharge. Letting that one slip through the band seemed to be a big mistake. SK Gaming have to play their picks perfectly. And so far, we just have not seen that from iChaos, getting the hedges up in the right position. Nice plays there from OP. Did a really good job there. Landing that gadget just to tank a shot and then just dancing around the situation. This is better from SK. They've got some confidence despite that game loss. So Chaos moves forward now. Placing this wall. Going to be crucial to keep themselves. Oh, there it is. Forcing Tenzai to the left. A much better start this time around. SK Gaming just have to work this angle. They have I Chaos using the gadgets, using the super, even generating another wall. It doesn't fully shut out Tensai, but this right lane is fairly locked down. Yoshi just needs to position himself over here. The Rattled Hive is out. Shitampo's looking for the super. There it is. And this entire point is blocked off. Yoshi frozen in his tracks. Ope with a body block and a tank. And Shitampo is shut down on the right. I Chaos now frozen. Tensai trying to advance on him, taking a lot of damage in the process. And this is exactly what SK Gaming wanted in game one. These are some of the best bra walls I've seen in the game. Ikeos really just showing how good he can be with the double stun from Shitampo. Forces things back. Tensai's got his as well. It's 86% though to SK. That early game really has put money in the bank. It would have to be the comeback of a century of Crazy Raccoon want to take this one back. There's so much util on the side of SK Gaming. They even managed to fend off Tensai using the hypercharge and the super combo. Just need to win the 3v2. Shitampo in with another super. No gadgets remaining. Surely he's close to that hypercharge, though. Ope's trying to keep things off the point. He doesn't have that much damage in versus Tensai, but he's gradually chipping him down. Another super available to Tensai. An attempted push in, but it might just be a bait of that super. Still, no footsteps on the point from SK Gaming. They just need 13% here. And Crazy Raccoon have come all the way back from just 13%, now climbing to 70. Lovely wrestled hives. Really, they are landing on the mark from Moya. Onto Ikeos, who is the best person for it, but it is just Tensai here holding his own. Moya from the right hand side, and he gets the pick up onto Yoshi. A 1v1 in the mid. It's back to OP, but he will fall. Crazy Raccoon are bringing it back. They've got level. There's the hypercharge from Sancho Tapo. Oh my word, and it is done. Crazy Raccoon out of nowhere. Steal the set. An absolute rug pull here 
from Crazy Raccoon. What a comeback. As soon as SK found their footing for the first time within this match, it was immediately stolen back from them. I respect it from SK, the Sprout pick. It was bold, it was strong, it brought home some real goods, but it wasn't enough. You gotta bow on the loo. I just gotta say it again in a mode like Hot Zone. It is just so fierce, and Shatambo played it beautiful. This is one of those cases where I'm tempted to say they outdrafted themselves. They left that Lou open, and now it's very evident that that was a mistake. In the moment, though, it seemed like SK Gaming got exactly the sort of draft that they wanted. They were very okay with having this sort of Sprout strategy, combine it with the Gale. It was inventive. It worked for a while, then the hypercharged loose started to come back. We saw Crazy Raccoon claw their way back from what seemed like an unattainable victory. And that was all, that was all Moya, by the way. When Ikeos was struggling to, um, well, he's just going to town with the walls. Moya coming in with the rattled hype there, just really focusing his time onto Ikeos to force him out of the game and force him back to the you know, size of their spawn. He couldn't be present for those walls, and that is when Crazy Raccoon got the momentum forwards. Look at him, 11 kills with a Sprout, which is a broiler, which doesn't do the most amount of Damage, I chaos always the glue in SK as far as I'm concerned. But a great game for OPE as well, juking a ton of shots, keeping the pressure on, and for the most part, Crazy Raccoon couldn't find him. But 252 damage for Moya there as well, just the one for Tenzai. But it's again not necessarily about how many kills you get when it comes down to Hot Zone. It's all about the objective, and brawlers like Lou just can carry that for your team. I mean, seeing these good mechanics and seeing some high numbers on the field does indicate some good mechanics. It indicates uh, where there could be improvement in draft. You have to wonder where this comes in in the mental, though, and I think really the damage has been done. It's up to SK to recover from two set losses in a row and a very near game victory. Yeah, for me, this is a must-win set for SK. You know, one that caters to a lot of their little brawlers in the back pocket, brawlers like Rico, which they will save for these moments as pop-offs for Ikeos in particular. Certainly the 8-bit mid I quite like here as the gem carry, but Rosa has got to be up there with those bands. Cordelia's potential as well. Sandy, I feel Macy's a worthy ban, in my opinion, now on this map. And when we see them, the Ruffs, the Lou, the Rosa, the Stu. Charlie, of course, no surprises there, let's be honest. But first pick going the way here of Crazy Raccoon. Will they go with the aggressive lane side? Will they go with that mid controller, the gem carry? And it is gonna be a first pick, Macy. I really warmed to her on Hard Rock Mine this weekend. Maisie is just one of those brawlers. She's a fairly good brawler. She fits a lot of different scenarios, but more importantly, she counters those tanks which could be arriving up any lane here. SK Gaming have that last pick, so that makes it optimal for them to pick something like that. Tanks can just be some of the best counter brawlers available in this game. But they have two, three, what do they go with? Maisie isn't really locking SK into any sort of strategy here, but they need to be thinking about what their mid is within these next couple of picks. You don't want to waste your last pick on a mid. It is going to be that Rico for SK Gaming. I love it. I really do. But at this stage in the draft, it's very early. I mean, the you know, Kryptonite for that particular brawler is breaking open the map, hence the, you know, the ban of the roughs there as well. And if Crazy Raccoon wants to then go with that approach to follow up, it might not be as effective. Buster, not a bad shout. We've seen some great promise with that brawler, really kind of catapulting its way into the meta. I really quite like it. I know it's a bit of a talking point here on the casting desk as to how effective it can be, but I really do like it, especially on a mode like Gem Grab. I think this is also a theft of Buster from Crazy Raccoon, who in the scrims have been running this brawler a lot. And Crazy Raccoon do seem to prefer to run a lot of the same brawlers repeatedly, but as they've gotten better at the draft, they've had to diversify their sort of brawler repertoire, if you want to call it that. So coming into this, they have to find something that can effectively go up against the Buster. They're going to be going with Max, but what synergy do they find for that Max? Could it be the Sandy coming in? Really a big struggle for them is also going to be finding something to deal with the Rico, who can shut down a lane entirely, but if they decide not to play the Rico lane at all, if they get a kind of draft and they get a kind of gameplay locked down where they don't even need to engage with the lane Rico, then they can ignore him relatively. SK will have a response for a tankier option. If Crazy Raccoon wants to go for it, I love it. Yeah, I love it. When, I mean, when has Max Sandy never, you know, when has it ever been a bad thing? It's always had beautiful synergy. I was kind of wondering whether they might have gone with a hard counter to that Rico. I hope they're prepared for it because SK certainly are the team to play it best, in my opinion, on this map. It can be devastating. Let's see what they want to add to this. It's not really, for me, a gem carrier, so it's got to be that. A bit for me, normally Yoshi to be the one to play it. I think that's the way to go, but can it be 
troublesome into the max. So I don't mind it. There he is. I mean, I love this comp from SK. It's going to be a credit and a testament to Crazy Raccoon as to how they go around and deal with this. But this is a good starting hand now for SK to get themselves back in the game. They are two sets down. It's got to be one that goes their way as far as they're concerned. I can see SK Gaming really turtling up here, which I think could be a big problem. You gotta be playing aggressively here. That is just how the game works at the moment. There is no doubt that Crazy Raccoon are going to be playing this way. They're gonna put that max up at mid, or maybe they'll run it on the lane. They didn't seem to be too unkind to running the max on the lane previously, but that's not really the ideal place to put it. Maisie, I think, has a lot of potential to switch things up. We'll have to see how it all works out. We see the Rico already armed and ready. At mid, sort of doubling up with Yoshi. He needs to get that first super. Nike Chaos on the right lane, absolute deletion there from Shtetampo. Nike Chaos attempts to fend off Moya. Bit of a pinch here on Moya, eliminates him. But Tensai has already walked all over this mid, claiming his first super and four gems. Nike Chaos trying to sneak, but Tensai there with the pickup. Nice patience displayed from CR in his early moments and the speed now coming in. Continued aggression onto Yoshi, just trying to get a sign of a gadget to whistle those down. So crucial as the 8-bit has that escape mechanism there with the cheat cartridge. Shitabu coming in with a slow auto OPE, but it's seven gems into the pocket of Crazy Raccoon. And SK might be playing the slow game here, trying to get that late game steal, but is that wise? Oh, he's still trying to lurk on the back lines. He actually does manage to get one kill, but Tensai cleans up with eight gems to his name. The first gem now going to Yoshi, the ideal brawler to have the gems on, but Tensai pops his speed. I Chaos now trying to defend this right side. Crazy Raccoon have done a good job of kind of not playing into the Rico so far. Anytime they try and rush up this lane, I Chaos is there to shut them down. Shitampo's going to try to make a big move. A complete solo play, which was shut down utterly by Ope. Well, now SK is starting to build some steam here. Face shift away from Shitampo, or up from 10 side to ensure the gems are safe. But Yoshi just going to keep a hold on this mid. The plugged in star power going to have that additional speed for him. As OP signs the, shows the signs of that gadget, he's actually going to fall still into the hands of and Shitampo comes out on top. I Chaos beaming a super. Not gonna make any contact on a Tensai, at least not significantly. A seventh gem going the way of SK, and a super down from Moya, trying to afford some room for them. Shitampo also, dangerously overextended on the left side. Yoshi gonna try and fend him off. It looks like if he can discover his position, take down onto Ope, looks scary. A countdown for Crazy Raccoon as they look to run this one back with 10 gems on top of Tensai, and Ikeos still trying to fight this right lane, but no one's gonna bite. They're just gonna stay on the other side. Tensai is so aware to like chaos. He's actually going to be running into the spawn. This is dangerous territory, but with three seconds remaining, the gems are safe and sound, and Crazy Raccoon move on to match points. This is looking deadly, deadly, and dangerous for SK Gaming. With the Rico selection, it did look quite promising when Crazy Raccoon decided to move up that lane. Anytime Crazy Raccoon decided, yeah, so the objective is at mid, and we're not gonna play that lane where you win 100% of the matchups, they seem to do fairly well, but Moya still needs to occupy this side of the map. We'll see I Chaos make the lane switch up onto the left side this time, which is not ideal for moving into the enemy spawn, but it could be where Crazy Raccoon decide to lurk this time. It's exactly what they expected. Shitampo eliminated firstly by I Chaos, and Yoshi gets the first few gems. An adaptation there from SK, just all three pushing the mid, and it's working. It's much better for them, five gems this time round, and where are Crazy Raccoon? Really struggling to find the space to move. And like Chaos there on the left-hand side, just that final now. Gadget from OPE forcing in there, Moya. Oh, there's a lovely, beautiful angle from my Chaos. It's six gems. Crazy Raccoon have got to start to adapt, as SK did coming into this game, as this one could well be evening up the set at this rate. Particularly like to see the adaptation there from I Chaos. We see a bit of action on the other side. SK Gaming have their spawn threatened by Shtetampo. This could be the biggest pinch that we see. Yoshi's completely turtle up into this back left, and it's sort of what we expected. A little speed on Moya. Panicked gadget there from Yoshi. He has plenty to spare, but still gave up a lot of room. Here comes the super combined with a hypercharge from Shtetampo. No major damage contribution here. Everyone's safe and sound on the side of SK Gaming, but they're not playing that objective. Now tied up six gems apiece. It's the awareness of Crazy Raccoon that is just so scary to me. They're always able to find SK when they're lurking and trying to foresee it coming. Gems, though, could be in a dangerous spot here. OP there, they're just shielding things out. And Tensai will just keep his health alive in the mix. A closer game. We are all tied up now as the speed comes in for Crazy Raccoon. 
It looks good for Shetampo. He has that super ready to move. Tensai has nine gems. Just one more is dropped by Ope as he falls. I Chaos to match. And Crazy Raccoon just got to run this one back. Ten gems and 15 second countdown to victory. SK Gaming, they don't have the speed. They don't have the mobility. They're going to give it their all, but it's two people on the right side. Moya running all the way to the back lines. Shetampo keeping everything alive and healthy with the seconds ticking down. Crazy Raccoon take the win over SK Gaming. That was very convincing. It's going to be said. East Asia lay down the gauntlet once again and start their group off with a bang. Bringing again all those lovely brawlers back into full force. The ones that have been forgotten by many teams here at the World Finals and just showing us still how much bang they've got for their buck. What a 3-0 shutout here from Crazy Raccoon. I wanted to see more from SK. We'll get to see more for them later on when they will face Foot Esports. But Crazy Raccoon, wow. All of the doubters are certainly quiet now. Can you imagine now? Can you imagine if it comes down to that Foot SK match, the tension, the rivalry, the storylines that are gonna come to the surface with regards to that one? Because so far for me, I've got to say Crazy Raccoon are just looking really, really confident. As we've already, we've always seen them on the world stage. They are so locked in, so focused on the task at hand and just all the glitz and glamour and pressure that comes with the world finals. It just doesn't seem to affect them in any way whatsoever. Well, I mean, I mean, this is just Saturday for them. This is an ordinary day in the life of a Crazy Raccoon player. They've been up here repeatedly. They've won the world finals, at least Tensai has, and the same goes for Shetampo but he took second place last year and he's looking to claim it once again a nice way to start things off here for crazy raccoon as we roll back the tape and look at where they succeeded in this last set sk gaming had some good moves i think crazy raccoon were able to shrug them off fairly well they're sort of playing their own game we talk about the overarching meta and we don't really see anyone else running that max crazy raccoon this is a tried tested and true staple of their brawl stars diet if you want to call it that and it works well with the brawlers that are currently meta like sandy we had massive hopes for East Asia in the LCQ, and Tensai coming in tweeted out saying that he was looking to do his region proud, and you know, he is doing just that so far. Fair play to him. What a great round for Moya. Six takedowns, 252, but I Chaos was doing all he possibly could. 11 for him, 371 on that Rico pick that I mentioned from the very beginning is an SK brawler, but he just needed that little bit more help. Yoshi with just the one kill, OP with eight. Against a team like Crazy Raccoon, you've got to bring out all the stops. You cannot skip a beat because they'll punish you for it. Look, I think solid draft here from SK and really good mechanics. You see Chaos getting 11 kills here, but that's not the name of the game. They just got out mechanic. And this is sort of the returning storyline here for Crazy Raccoon, is they repeatedly get the mechanics diff. We see it repeatedly. Last year, they ran the same comp multiple times throughout the tournament. They just could not be seen to uh, deviate from the Carl and things. Maybe we'll see Carl make a resurgence later on, but for now, it's the Max and Sandy that needs to be shut down by any of their opponents. I felt like in terms of the draft, I just preferred what Crazy Raccoon were doing. I mean, leaving open the Lou as well in the hot zone, I don't think you can afford to do that. I think as well, some of the predictability of the SK drafting is starting to shine through for me. I can kind of tell what I'm expecting to see and more often than not, it shows its face. And I think for many teams, not, not really kind of drafting or kind of scrimming against the idea of Max. I think that is proving to be a problem now as people remember just how uh, effective that brawler can be. Got to prepare yourselves for it as we check out our MVP from that series. And I mean, for me, it could be Moya, it could be Shatampo, it could be either one of them, and it is going to be Shatampo. A fantastic performance from him so far today. And I guarantee that Crazy Raccoon, they're not done yet. Shetampo, I mean, it had to be. He's the all-time GOAT, and we'll get to see more of them in the upcoming match, which I'm very, very excited for. But still, what a performance here from Crazy Raccoon, leaving some to be desired from SK Gaming. We got things teed up for the remaining matches in this group. It's such an exciting group. This really is, I mean, just the caliber, the quality of all the games we've witnessed so far today have just been exactly what you come to expect from a Brawl Stars World Finals. And I think the group stage as well really do draw out the weak links in this process. The format, I just love it every step of the way. The Crazy Raccoon, again, the perfect start so far, but they've got to keep it up. 
And that's going to be the tough thing, but they have the momentum on their side. They have the mechanics, they have the drafts, they have the victories, they have the numbers to show for it as well. So they've got a great start, leaving SK once again with some stuff to be desired. But Crazy Raccoon, now they have the wind in their sails going into yet another match right off the back of this one. Again, this next matchup, it's a scary one for esports all year long. Have really been playing, in my opinion, at the top of their game. And I feel Crazy Raccoon, I've got to read that draft. Drage is a bit of a mastermind when it comes to it. He's got a lot of tricks in the book, and I think this is the time that he's going to bring him out. We've seen them do fairly well lately as well, so that's leaving some really high expectations for this region. We'll get an update as well on how this group is looking at following the victory of Crazy Raccoon in the fall of SK. Now we've seen it. 1-0 here for Crazy Raccoon, SK Gaming 0-1, with Foot Esports still waiting to stake their claim. This is going to put Foot to the test, in my opinion, and I feel that they are ready for it. You know, they've been displaying some really interesting ideas, keeping us guessing along the way, most importantly, which in the World Finals, I feel can be that real trick in the book to bring out. They're reserving some of your ideas trying to put things together in scrims and experiment there and then bring in all those learnings to the world stage. They are looking very, very aggressive for me. One of the favorites for sure in this group, but as we've already seen, upsets can happen along the way and they've got to bring that level of consistency and just try to wipe the safe clean. It hasn't been a good World Finals for Drake historically either. So against what I've just seen on the stage, Crazy Raccoon, I mean, they mean business today, as you thoroughly expect. I mean, for Tensai, the chance to make it third time champ. I mean, how often in the history of any title, any game do we you know, ever get to say that? Well, I mean, this is also the region that they're facing against is the one that sent Drage packing last year. So there is a little bit of revenge here, but also it's a storyline that's been brewing all the way since the World Finals last year. So it's going to be an interesting one to watch play out on the big stage. When it comes down to it, predictions wise, are you still where you stood earlier today? Are you want to switch things up, change things <laughs> around? I was regretting mine when it came to that Zeta matchup. So I just got to put the question, you know? I mean, I okay. Look, pr predictions are predictions. Okay, I'm still ahead of you, by the way. I just wanna, I just wanna throw that out there for the audience. Hey, I don't claim to be the predictions master. I'm doing pretty <laughs> well. Talk to that guy backstage. <laughs> but, but regardless, no, I still put my faith in Crazy Raccoon to make this one happen. I made the mistake of doubting these guys, the, doubting these guys last year. I'm not gonna be making that mistake again. But maybe I'm making the mistake for putting my faith in them. We haven't seen Foot play just yet. Yeah, absolutely. So I feel like as well, like watching back that season four SPS season, you know, foot were put to the test by you know, teams like Nouns, and Nouns didn't have the best time here today. So they're going to have to really bring out all of those learnings from watching those team scrims. And you know, it has been a delight to watch the scrimming process in the World Finals. Many of the teams saying that there's a lot that they weren't accounting for and a lot of learnings from that process. You know, all of that has got to come to the surface. Well, with that all said and done and everything teed up, we're going to go to a short break as we get ready for our second match in this group. You lose! 8-bit, eight eight yeah. What do you think it is? I think it's 8-bit. Oh, loses. yeah, it is 8-bit. Okay. But it might be his first specific skin. The only one I would know is Saloon. I'm never guessing this okay. skin. 8-bit. 8-bit eight eight losing me, okay. I'd beat, I think. Yeah. Sin dolor, no hay gloria. El primo. 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 El primo. El primo. El primo. It sounds to me like Morty Super with tor Tornado or two, but I think, I don't know. Amber Shots or M Super, probably. Amber, maybe we can try. Let's try Amber. You can say Amber, I can say M then. We have two guesses. We can get one. Okay, I say Amber. M Super. It was us. Uh, oh man. It sounds familiar. What is that? I keep thinking Willow, but I don't think it's Willow. Maybe. I don't know. It sounds Maybe. like a splash brawler, so like. I, I say we go with it. I okay, think Willow? M's. Oh, and she pops super. I would have never got that. I don't I play didn't with think sound. about that. <laughs> what is this? Maybe like a, a Jackie Wilt or something like this? Willow? I will still go with Jackie, maybe. Okay, it's Frost Freeze. I think Gale it's Super. Gale, yeah, for sure. Will. It's Oh, I know what it is. Gale. 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 
if I have to guess, maybe something with Lou. <laughs> yeah, like, I guess Lou. I, 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 I have heard this sound so much, so many times in my life, but uh, I don't recognize it right now. I, maybe Lou. Let's try Lou. I have a guess. It's not Lou, is it? My guess is Janet, the Janet turret, but I don't know. I don't know what it sounds. Sandy Super? Oh, that's what it is. It's Sandy. Sandy? It's Lola Super. Oh, what? Lola Super. I thought I had it. Mandy? Lou, I would say. Welcome back to the Brawl Stars World Finals 2023! This audience is packed because we're about to witness greatness as our East Asian representatives return to the stage. It's Crazy Raccoon! This team is known for their trademark aggressive style. But can they keep that under control in this matchup and dominate their way to the playoffs? and making their stage debut at DreamHack Winter. It's Foot Esports! <laughs> Lana, Symantec, Drej. They may not have any world titles to their name, but these boys are battle-hardened, and they're here to show exactly what they can do. Just two more matches before we find out who our top eight teams will be. So let's get it on with our latest casters. It's Reddy and Trav. Let's get it started. Crazy Raccoon versus Foot. What a matchup this is going to be. I mean, this group overall is just absolutely incredible. That first game, it didn't really live up to its, uh, it didn't really live up to its promise, to be honest with you. But I think this one is definitely going to be a bit closer in my eyes. I think so too. We've seen Foot pull off some really impressive performance lately, especially because they're going to the challenge finals for Snapdragon. Uh, not the same can be said for SK, but in those uh, in that challenge, we've seen Foot doing fairly well. They're coming off of the back of some big wins versus some huge teams in this region, and they're also sounding very confident about their performance. Yeah, I mean, you've got to be as well. You know, through scrims and stuff, I think they've been looking pretty good, and I think that's fair to say it goes for both of these teams that have been looking good through scrims. Many teams saying they're pretty afraid to face both of these, and I think this is going to be an absolutely incredible matchup. You know, I'm kind of thinking maybe in the 3-2 realm. You know, we've had a 3-0 now. We've kind of got to, we've got to bring it back down. Well, it all gets started here on Super Beach. Check out the difference here. 64% to 36 on the prediction count. Super Beach has some interesting drafts here as well. Now, going back to what we've heard from Rely, the Crazy Raccoon coach, especially with what he said during an interview with BSEN, he said, no, people are not going to be out drafting us anymore. So even if it looks like an outdraft, maybe we'll have to start uh, going back and questioning it or uh, sort of decide on whether it was after we see the results of the set. Yeah, exactly. We've been pulling out Max so much, and especially in that last game over uh, that we just watched versus SK. Max, Max, Max. It's what was working for them, and I'm guessing it's what, probably what they're going to stick to. But, you know, we've got some talented drafters on the other team as well, especially Drage. He knows how to draft so well, and it's what's been propelling him to the top of European Brawl Stars. And it's probably what's going to propel him to the top of World Brawl Stars as well, considering how strong he is. I just think it's going to be very back and forward with these drafts. Well, he was also relatively confident versus this region last year, so this is going to be an opportunity for revenge. We're going to be getting into this draft. Some of the greatest drafting minds around the world now go head to head and talk about that first pick crazy raccoon they've gotten rid of that hypercharged Lou, the charlie as well as the sandy they've run that one themselves they know just how strong it can be gotta wonder whether the max makes a resurgence here on super beach has to be a mid and might not be the strongest option but crazy raccoon certainly know how to operate on it well, Stu's going to come in for foot esports here. I like that as a first pick. Pretty versatile. Going to be able to have that pretty solid mobility back and forth, back and forth, able to avoid and not feed some of these supers. And obviously, uh, you know, Crazy Raccoon, their aggression is definitely one thing that's really unparalleled by any team. So they're going to be wanting to go straight to him, and Semantic should be able to avoid. Got to have something to block up those shots from Stu as well. Maybe something with spawnables could be an option for Crazy Raccoon, should they want to counter it fairly hard. 
it's going to be difficult for them to run a tank now. They have that last pick still in the pocket. They can still make it work. There's wow. the Max. Wow. What a surprise. Yeah, what a shock that we see Max from Crazy Raccoon. I mean, this is just unheard of. Well, I mean, if, if it works, it works, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to complain him for doing it. It's been absolutely incredible today. Tensai on that Max is pretty much unparalleled by any other player. Uh, Crazy Raccoon, though, do still have this second pick, so something's got to be brought in that has good synergy with that Max. Sandy, obviously, out of the way, so why not a Rosa? Bring in a bit of a tank. Now, they've run the Rosa before. Combine it with the Max, and you've got a great delivery mechanism for sending that tanky brawler right into enemy backlines. Big problem, though, is that Stu is going to be able to keep his distance from Rosa fairly effectively. Once the speed is at play, that's going to be a different story. And once she also has that hypercharge at play, it's going to be an even more different story. But Fit Esports have some other options to start countering this out. Maisie is a very popular brawler right now to deal with some of these tanks. It'll be more difficult to line up your shots on Max with a brawler like Maisie. Her shots are a little bit slower. Gale is the brawler of choice now. A wider shot, much easier to hit. You can also opt for the slow star power that can slow down any max pushes without needing a super or anything like that. And also at the same time, you know, if you don't take that slow in effect, then the stun can be very dangerous in Brawl Ball as well. When you're in that goal mouth pushing towards or even defending also, it's very, very solid to stun them out and get it going. It's pretty much the same as, you know, one of those Sandy gadgets. Uh, it has the same effect when trying to score. So I definitely think it's a solid pick coming out of Foot Esports here. And they're going with a ball as well. And I mean, that's a Lenane special. I actually don't hate it. And it's going to be decent against that Rosa 2. Hypercharge is ridiculous on it if used well. This is true. I mean, Bulls hypercharge ability. It's not really the strongest. I don't see a whole lot of players looking to deal damage to Bull in transit when he's going to be uh, seriously immune to damage, but he does still have that damage boost, and he has the speed boost, more importantly. That's going to be the main striker for this roster. I think really everyone here on Foot Esports has the capability to make a goal. I'm certainly looking mostly to Gale, and especially Bull, to make that happen. The Crazy Raccoon have the opportunity to either counter this out or double down. Shelly will be their brawler of choice, and this is going to be good for countering out Bull if he gets in close range, but also for scoring a goal. Yeah, I think I think the same. I mean, you know, Gale's going to have his work cut out. I feel the same with the Stu because Ball's going to have a very hard time against that Shelly. Going to have to be swapping back and forward, ensuring that they've got these favorited matchups, uh, especially with that Ball on the Rosa and the Gale, uh, trying to keep people away as well. But I mean, Gale's good against Rosa, right? But, you know, the other flip side on the other lane would not be as strong. Getting into it then, game number one between Foot Esports and Crazy Raccoon. Crazy Raccoon already 1-0 in their group, looking to guarantee their spot. Yeah, and otherwise it could be going down to the set win percentage, which would be certainly dangerous. Now let's get started. Foot Esports, immediate aggression, and Lana is the first to fall. But Drage and Semantic need to hold the line. A pass up to Drage, quickly abandoned, as he doesn't want to push further in. Knew that he would get pinched super hard. They afford some time for Lana to come right back to the forefront, trying to keep his distance versus Moya. The dash in and the slow. Another chain super together, but now he's overextended. Moya looks for an opportunity to score a goal. A pass over to Shitapo. It looks good. Good. No use of the super to pass it in, but Moya can still slot it through. Yeah, just hitting that right-hand side box, but bounces straight into the path of Moya. Not going to complain about that, but a little bit of wall break coming through now as well. Great slow there from the Rosa. Hypercharge coming through from the lane. Not going to have the most effect against the Rosa, but it will against the Max. There you go. Nice super from uh, Semantic coming through. Also pass to the left-hand side, and Lenane finds the goal. Beautiful. What a pitch here from Foot Esports, already one to one. And we're only a minute into the game. Drage is keeping his distance from Shitetan, who has the hypercharge ready. Same goes for Moya. Really, the icing on the cake would be a super from Tensai. We see that gadget on cooldown. Shitetanpu's going to take an opportunity. A lapse in control on the right side. Here it comes. Moya now with the hypercharge and the super popped at the same time. But Drage and Semantic refuse to let this ball through. Still, it's two versus three. A pass over to Tensai. One up to Moya. A full team wipe and a slot through from Crazy Raccoon. Crazy Raccoon taking game number one for Esports, falling behind early on, and it was a pretty convincing game at that. You know, for Esports, they had their moment, they had their goal, and it was from Lenane making some brilliant plays on that ball and putting himself in a position to be passed through too. So really nice stuff from him, but I still think they've got a long way to go to defeat Crazy Raccoon here. Foot Esports, I think especially Lenan needs to rethink the bull strategy here. He did get some good damage in, but he didn't finish off the kill on Demoya, and even then he wound up being fairly overextended, leaving a void in control on his team. Foot Esports now looking to get possession of this ball to boot. Moya on the left side is farming up some hypercharge, and then Na has a super to show for it. Semantic also trying to chime in. No real movement so far. Tensai would especially love to have a super here to combine with Shitampo's super that he's now gotten ready. No big moves just yet. Here comes a super in from Shitampo. The Clay Pigeons to match. Another super with Lena shut down. Semantic, he's not in position to make this happen. He will be able to pass that ball to the back left, which affords some time for Dredge and Lena to respawn. But the three versus two is in full force. 
So Drage now trying to make a break for it, but just going to get rid of that ball and ain't coming in with the super. Going to be able to knock Moya back, stop him from using that super. Gets the damage done and gets the kill along with it. Now Drage and Samantha going to pinch in on this side. A little bit of help from Lenane as well. Has that hypercharge, has that super, and that can be dangerous in a position like this. Semantic now pushing the ball forward. Lenard's going to be the first to fall to Moya's hypercharge. Semantic now backing up. Moya can receive this pass. Drage doesn't have the damage output. Here comes a super from Moya, and they're just going to walk it through running back style. Crazy Raccoon get the first goal. Almost defended there as Tenside did pass the ball to Drage. But Lenane couldn't quite get it. Super hypercharge can be used. Lenane going forward now. Same play as last time. Can they make it happen? Super from Semantic. The damage coming through, but not the goal yet. Cleared by Zutampo, but not far enough. Drage gets the goal and evens out this game. What a fast goal there from Foot Esports. Crazy Raccoon are going to try and convert one of their own. Moya now in with the super. Tensai is ready to get the pass up, but Lenai is just too beefy to be shut down. Tensai takes him down in transit. It's up to Shetampo to shut down this right lane. But more importantly, Foot just want to retain control of mid to allow Lenai to respawn. In the same time, though, Moya is rejoining the ranks on the left with a hypercharge and a super to boot. Here it comes, the combo. Semantic with the pushback. Lenai goes for the solo play, but it's no good. All the way on the back line woefully behind both Shitapo and Tensai. He's gonna go for the damage, but it's no good. Moya needs this goal. A pass up to Tensai could be the win condition here. Dre just trying his best to defend, but not enough DPS. It's a win in the set for Crazy Raccoon. Brilliant stuff then from Crazy Raccoon, taking the first set. And you know, although we did have a bit of pushback from foot, a goal here and there, the overall game was definitely sided towards Crazy Raccoon. And the only real place from foot were coming from that hypercharge of Lenane. You know, he, got, he, he goes towards uh, Moya, gets the super off the Rosa, and then continues his aggression forwards. And it worked, but it just didn't work well enough. The overall team play, the overall comp from Crazy Raccoon just seemed that little bit better. Once more, I, I mean, I think this is fairly visionary. I think this is uh, fairly inventive from Foot Esports. It was just too reliant on that comp working exactly as it needed to. There wasn't really fallback. There wasn't really a way for this comp to evolve. We didn't see a whole lot of difference in gameplay or strategy from one game to the next. Yeah, well, replays coming through. I mean, it was a very close game. We had some good moments, some good defenses, but overall, just dominance from Crazy Raccoon coming through. And I mean, there really wasn't a lot of stopping them. Uh, you know, Drage did, did fairly well to be able to get away from Moya, but the hypercharge is just too much. And I feel like in certain circumstances like this, even if you have the ball, even if you have the Gale, there's just no stopping it. Drage tried his best to get a little bit of a break to open up a bit more room uh, when playing through here. But overall, it just kind of seemed like the Shelly dealt with his lane, the Rosa dealt with his lane, and Tensai's just there to do what he does best. Pretty much just shoved that ball through the gold. Drage, he was trying to get that DPS through, but it just was not enough. I think that was one of the biggest issues here for Foot Esports is that Crazy Raccoon, they were able to consistently force that Rosa through. And I think also we saw a bit of a lane diff there from Shtetampo. He was able to consistently get damage on Moya, but more importantly, Moya was getting that super fairly quickly. And you can hear it there as well. A few of their comms coming through. And this is actually probably the most excited we've seen this region come to an event as uh, East Asia region. Usually quite silent, usually quite, you know, chilled out, relaxed, just as we saw Zeta Division being earlier. But in terms of kills and DPS, I mean, kills wise, it's definitely the side of Crazy Raccoon. 5, 7, 6, 2, 4, 4 for the side of Foot Esports. Just wonderful stats here on, on both sides, honestly. I think we saw a pretty scrappy match from Foot Esports, but obviously the victory does go to Crazy Raccoon. They had a much more scrappy comp, really good at shoving that ball through the goal. While we saw Foot Esports, theirs is more reliant on getting the ball in front of the goal and then passing the ball up to him, which is not something you can do very reliably. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's it's just the moment, isn't it? You're only able to get that done when you have the hype charge, when you go aggressive like that. It's it's a once in it's a once in a game thing, and that's why they had the one goal in each of the games. Split, however, is up next. We're heading to Hot Zone to see if Foot Esports can claw this back to one one, or if Crazy Raccoon will continue their dominance over the European region and move yet another set ahead. And thankfully for Foot, this is also a change of pace. We move from a less fast-paced mode into more of a control-based one. So the momentum breaker, not all the way, but at least halfway there for a change of mode. Here it comes. The band's already flying through. Crazy Raccoon getting rid of some of the usual suspects, plus Gale, which seems to be a Foot esports preference. The Dynamite ban on the side of Foot. Yeah, well, I mean, I think even without seeing this counter, it's pretty fair to say who had the first pick. The yeah. bands, obviously, Gale, Lou, and Charlie. Pretty much the three, well, three of the most banned brawlers throughout this duration of this World Finals. But Ruffs is going to be the first pick coming in from Foot Esports. I like it. Bouncing around some of the sides. Wall breaks so they can pivot to a little bit more of an open comp later on if they need. And I think overall, it's a, it's a very solid first pick. 
Well, 2-3 coming in from Crazy Raccoon. Have to be considering what they can do about Ruffs here. Ruffs would ideally not be running the second gadget. If you can throw down the bags, that's fantastic. It prevents a lot of things that Crazy Raccoon might prefer to run that are single target brawlers, so it also frees those up for Foot Esports to run. Crazy Raccoon could decide to brave the storm and go directly into those bags anyway. Barley is going to be a one-size-fits-all solution for any sort of spawnables that spawn a large group. It's going to be very easy to take out any of those bags. Foot Esports might opt to run it anyway, though. Yeah, I mean, Barley's a very, very smart pick into the roughs. But at the same time, a little bit later, so, you know, towards the end of the game, the roughs is going to be able to break up, get some stuff done. And I mean, Rose is going to double down on that idea. Yes, it's going to be very good at early game, same as Barley. But once stuff starts to open up, it becomes a lot more difficult. Not that Rosa still can't do it, because she definitely can. We saw her in the last game. Stu started opening up, and the whole map did. And then she still kind of dominated. So we'll see if they're going to be able to bring that kind of same idea into the second set. But for Esports, they've still got a lot of time. Two more picks uh, to be able to try and counter this one out. Okay, some kind of anti-tank would be ideal for Foot Esports, and there are plenty of options to go by, but the ones that are a bit beefier, have some more health, have some more resilience on the point, would be Ooh. far ideal. There's the Jackie. Th this brawler, you get punished for staying in close range versus her, so this is going to be a fairly good way to deal with the Rosa. The biggest struggle is going to be for Rosa to get her super before engaging with the Jackie, since usually that's the only way to reliably come out unscathed. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't feel like the Jackie's like that good into the Rosa, you know. Rosa, Jackie matchups can be pretty similar, but then once you get that super, you're going to be dominating. And I feel like that's a bit of an issue for esports. Yes, the hypercharge can help, but they might even not be sending that. They might not even be sending the Jackie towards it, as now they've got that Colette hypercharge along with it, the spirit to follow along with that super. And Colette is a very solid brawler, but it's going to rely on that map being open, or she's just not going to find the angles. For some reason, I was expecting something like a Grey, maybe to break open some of these walls, right, deal with the Barley, and also as a good way to get Jackie some much-needed mobility. It's a very valuable thing to have for her, but the DPS must have been lacking for Rosa, and also accomplishes relatively the same thing as Colonel Ruffs when it comes to breaking open those walls. But Crazy Raccoon, Tara as Ooh. the final selection. That'll be able to shoot right through the sandbags. It'll be a phenomenal counter for Jackie, and also, now that you have those shades spawning, it'll be a good way to deal with any damage that Colette has to offer. I think that this is a phenomenal pick to deal with every single brawler on the side of foot. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be good against the brawlers of foot, but just on this map, it just feels weird to yeah. see Tara come in, you know? And I, I, this is me, the, the biggest Tara lover in existence, <laughs> questioning Tara. Uh, so, you know, there you have it. I kind of maybe doubt it a little bit. Yes, it's good against the brawlers. Yes, it has decent matchups, but I feel like it's the same as the Colette. You've got to be able to build those angles for her. Otherwise, her peeking ability is just not going to be that good on this map. It'll be a bit of a struggle. We'll see how she fares inside some of these bushes. If she decides to take that route, here it comes around the left side. Semantics already bullying Tensai over here with these ricocheting shots. He's struggling to move through. On the right side, though, it's looking like massive profit for Crazy Raccoon Tensai. He pops down some of those shades on the left, but it's to no avail. Semantic keeps on stuffing him back as he's opted also to run the second gadget since it would be useless to run the bags into Moya. Moya's now getting the idea of rotating over towards the left side where he knows that Semantic can't counter him effectively. On the right, Lina is forced to fend for himself. Tensai tries to chime in. He's going to look for an angle, but Shitapo, he's got it all covered. He's got it all on lock just by himself. So far, it's a lead for Crazy Raccoon, but no significant steps on that left lane. And now they're looking good for both sides, that's the thing, you know, like they've got Moyo in this matchup against the Colette, against the Ruffs, and on the right-hand side, you've got the Rosa and the Tara against the Jackie, that seems pretty solid for me across both sides for, uh, for Crazy Raccoon here, but Somatic, he really can't catch a break, he's just gonna be able to eat some shots and try and move through it, but Last Call comes in, gonna be pushing him into a bit of a compromised position, falls low, Drake has to cover, and Moyo gets a few percent here and there. It's very brave for Moya to be moving in here when he's all out in the open. Semantic's going to be breaking open these walls, so it diminishes the value that Moya is able to offer. On the right side, big assault here from Lina. Shtetampo tries to stay alive using the super. Lina completely shut down by Shtetampo with the shield active. And now Crazy Raccoon even get to make some advances on the left lane as they start to capture this zone. Yeah, I mean, some advances seems like a lot of advances, to be honest. Lenin going forward, though, hypercharge, giving that extra speed, and he gets two. Now the pinch should be there for Shitampo as well, and Foot can start building this back up. The majority of Crazy Raccoon's percentage, it's all on the right, which is a zone that they should have been guaranteed anyway, and the wall breaks start to come through. 
Shetampo needs this combo. Here it comes. The hypercharge and the super popped at the same time. Guarantees a victory over Lina. Tensai on the left side with so many shades spawned. And Shetampo's going straight for the spawn. 80% captured for a crazy raccoon. Just gotta see some control on this left side. Lina's gonna look for whatever he can. Drage even with a super and shut down on the way there. Lina, the next to fall if Shetampo gets the kill. There it is. And a supply drop from the sky isn't enough to shove him off this point. As we count up to 100%, Tensai just needs to stay alive. There it is. And a game win for Crazy Raccoon. Ah, uh, ready, set. Is it more East Asia dominance throughout the entirety <laughs> of the Raw Stars Championship World Finals? Because this is looking exactly like it's going to be. Free Sports just really aren't getting a bit of a look in. They're getting the percentage they should on their side, and barely even that. You know, w when Barley rotated over to the left hand side, Semantic couldn't move, and the Colette couldn't move either. It's just really beautiful from Crazy Raccoon, and every little matchup, they just know how to win. What development can we even see from foot? I mean, Lina pushing in here versus Shetampo. He knows now not to engage when Shetampo has that super active, just to wait it out and let his ammo do the work once he survived those initial punches. So already a lane victory for Lina on the right lane does look promising. Moya is forced to rotate away from this zone on the left so that Drage can move in. Lina, he's all the way in enemy territory. Tensai's debating using his super. Decides, no, it could be better used somewhere else. Just save it as a last resort because so far Crazy Raccoon are doing a fine job of capturing the right side. There's a kill onto Lina and maybe a push in from Moya and Tensai on the left side. Being very apprehensive, but they baited out every single gadget from Symantec. Yeah, I mean, that's four, possibly three, depending on what gadget he's using. Already used, and Shitampo dominating the lane. He's just having to run away, and even whilst he's running, he's not healing, because he's shoot, got to shoot towards some of those support from beyond. Shitampo coming through, gets one, should be able to get two. Semantic Falls as well, gets the trade. But what does that mean when CR are dominating both sides with a 40% lead? Lenard's going to try and push in, go right for Moya, or maybe just try to inhabit Crazy Raccoon's back lines. The attempt of using a super comes up empty-handed. Shitampo on the right side is actually in a very suboptimal matchup. He's still going to go for it, pops a hypercharge, and gets a kill versus his one hard counter on the opposing side. The capture for Crazy Raccoon on the right side looks very, very promising. Foot Esports have a colossal comeback to achieve here. I mean, Tensai just going to move over, not even going to fully focus this left-hand side along with Shutampo, probably get that right and then try pinch round. Shutampo pushing forward, gets a few percent, but not enough to secure this game just yet. Now Hypercharge coming in from Lenane, gets both of them down, beautiful from him, but still 40% deficit for them to build back. Shitampo has the super. We gotta see some moves in from Moya. The last call could be activated. Shitampo now gonna push in with that super. A counter from Drage. Another super! The double kill looks crystal clear, but Moya's still here to fight. Drage has another super also to counter. 90% captured so far by Crazy Raccoon, and they only had this left zone to make it happen. It's gotta be quick action from Foot Esports because Shitampo's so alive and healthy, they're gonna make it happen. It's just Lina left to answer, and Crazy Raccoon close it out more close games, but it's just not close enough for Foot Esports. They're getting the percentage back, and this is what we said, you know, early game, yes, CR should destroy them, but late game, when the walls start to be broken up, when Rosa and Barley are a little bit less useful, then Foot should be able to come back. And they did start something. They started to come back, but they couldn't end it. 2-0 to Crazy Raccoon, and they're getting the same treatment as SK. The comp just ain't comping. We need to see the counter strats from foot. But so far, it seems to be all a crazy raccoon story. Even the things that looked sort of promising, like, you, I mean, you, you disagree with me on this, but the Jackie and the Rosa, it seemed like there was some counterplay, right? We saw Lina be a little bit more patient. I think in this particular matchup where, no, never mind, not this one. <laughs> Shit, Tampo still shuts him down. But later on, he learned, okay, let's let the super ride out, and then we can take the win from there. But that's only one instance among many of Shit Tampo winning that matchup. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's just, you know, slight impatience maybe, but it's hard to be patient when you see your opponent just building up that zone over and over and over and dominating you time and time again. It's really difficult to be able to remain patient and not try something special. We did see a few trades. Drake had a few moments down this left-hand side as well when he did defend well. But it's things like that, you know, you're not breaking the walls. You're not really... I mean, I suppose Ruffs is going to be pretty decent at bouncing around, but at the same time, I feel like some wall break was needed. And they did get some wall break in there. They were able to deal with Moya quite effectively once that wall break was present on the left side. On the right side, it wasn't so much of an issue, but they did opt to get a supply drop on the right lane, which was relatively helpful for Lina later on. But here you can see the difference. Wow, so many kills for Shtetampo. It's what you come to expect from Rosa, which he's been running a lot. 
10 kills and 343 DPS is definitely something that Foot Esports have got to be scared of going into future sets. Twice Crazy Raccoon have picked up that Rosa now, and twice it's been the dominant force that is against them. They've got to pick up on it. They've got to have some kind of countermeasure. I mean, not that they haven't either. They had Gale. You know, they had Bull in the first. They've got Colette. They've got Ruffs in this one, but nothing seems to work. I mean, these seem like counterpicks, but they don't seem to be doing the job of a counterpick. Hey, and I mean, you, know, you, you said it yourself. They, they, Crazy Raccoon apparently don't lose draft yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's clear now. Uh, according to themselves, they do not lose draft <laughs> anymore, and no one will be able to best them, which is a harrowing thought for any opponent that will face them down the line should they close it out here on last stop. It could be Foot's last stop, unless yeah. they're able to stop this momentum. Yeah, there's a lot of stopping to be done. And the first of it is trying to get this one set on the board. Because even in the, in sets like this, you know, it, it really does matter. You've got to start building them up. I mean, it's, it's very, <laughs> at this point, 2-0 up to Crazy Raccoon. It's unlikely we're going to have a tiebreak. But sets mean so much if there is one, you know. And I mean, it's got to be three in a row for Foot Esports now. And I don't really like their chances after seeing what Crazy Raccoon have brought to the table in the first two. Piper going to be the first pick on last stop. It's been a little while since I've seen some levers. Usually we go for the 8-bits. We go for the nannies before Piper, stuff like that. But maybe they've kind of expecting something from Crazy Raccoon and wanted to preempt that. Well, also the way to execute this would be to break open the bushes to allow Piper some vision. So that is going to have to be something that is achieved with the next couple of picks, which might be challenging if Crazy Raccoon decide, OK, we'll run the Amber. Then that's one of your major options for breaking open the bushes now completely belonging to Crazy Raccoon. So they have a couple of picks in a row. Otis is the direction that they want to go through. And I think this is a fairly good option if you want to fight in that bush, if you want to hide in the bush. Meg is going to be soaking up so much damage here. A fairly good mid. Yeah, I mean, Meg, on last stop, it's it's decent. And I, I, I don't hate it as much as I usually would. <laughs> but uh, we are back over to Foot Esports for their next two picks, see what they bring to the table. But the Otis, it's always been a very good pick down one of these lanes. Fat Splatter can cover it for a few seconds, you know, similar effect to what, what Sticky Residue would do or something like that. But, you know, Squeak's still on the table, still something that we can see. Uh, so Foot Esports, next two picks. We'll see what they do choose to go for. You said they might need to f some form of grass break, something like that, to be able to help the Piper, unless she does it herself. But it's going to be the Eve, and they're going to be bringing in those babies. I do like the Eve for precisely the reason that you said. You have the spawnables, and that's another one that could be taken out of Crazy Raccoon's playbook. I don't see it doing a ton versus the Meg, since she has a lot of damage output, especially when those hatchlings get in close range. Maisie now available to foot esports, so they've decided to go for not any uh, breaking of bushes, breaking of walls at all, which could leave Piper quite vulnerable if Crazy Raccoon go for a big, big counter pick, something that threatens the Piper a lot. We've seen them run the Max. Max is a great way to deal with Piper. Well, I mean, I'd love to see them play Max again. It really is something special when we do see it, and Tensai might be the one to pick that up. So we shall see if that's going to be their last pick. It's going to be the Amber, and they're going to be the ones burning down the bushes, apparently helping out Piper a little bit down these lanes. But at the same time, if you do it in a controlled fashion, if you burn up opponents' bushes and not your own, then I think you can help. That's one option. The other is that you can get some slowing if you're using the gear to do it, so you can make your opponents a little bit slower, a little bit easier to line up some of those shots. She's got solid damage as well. No serious complaints here, but it's not much of a counter pick necessarily. It doesn't directly address any of the brawlers on the opposing side, just a good brawler for this map. Yeah, I mean, overall, pretty solid. But I mean, maybe play down one of those right lanes, I'd imagine, just trying to burn down some of those bushes, stop them from aggressing as much as I'm sure uh, that they'd like to down that right. That's usually the lane that both of these uh, both of these people do lose. But actually, we're going to see it on the left, playing against Eve here. Going to be trying to burn down some of those babies that she's going to be bringing in. Lenane playing the Maisie down the right, and Moya already out of mech, which is something we kind of expect, I feel, against a Piper. Sort of what you wanted to expect. She also does have some resilience, though, throwing down the toolbox to tank a little bit of extra damage. Only three gems over his head and already taken down Semantic. Looks to chime in on the left side. Big damage from Tensine. Gets to finish off the kill. Drage with a nice prediction and a tap on the left. And the Hatchlings come down to deal with Moya. It's only a temporary solution. Drage has a lot of help to chew through on Moya, who pops down this gadget. It's additional reload speed, too. A nice kill there for Moya as he penetrates the back line. Six gems over his head and two more waiting at spawn. Lana tries to come in here. In fact, almost pops Moya out of that mech. But still, seven gems over Moya's head. Two more at mid, ready to be picked up. 
You know, great taps from Lenane and Drage over that right hand side. Now the babies do come in. Tensai's gonna have to use a lot of his oil on that and Moya. Not gonna be in the most favorable of matchups through the mid here against this Piper. Does get brought out of his mech by Lenane who had that hyper charge now coming in. Gonna throw out some shots. Shitampo gonna go down. Tensai should follow as well. Another hyper charge super, but doesn't get Moya just yet. Starting to bring these gems back though, and Foot Esports have a sign of life. Well, possession of the bushes on the right side completely belong to Foot Esports. Shitampo's gonna try it. Totally pinched by Drage in the knot. Executed. In the same moment, now big push in from the knob, push back on a Tensai, and Crazy Raccoon are fully trapped in spawn now, unless he can find some angle, which is going to be difficult. Shitampo opts for the lane switch, Tensai now trying to occupy the right side of this map. Lenaz on super low health, big pinch, and this is the beginning of Crazy Raccoon beginning to rest back control. Drage with a nice tap on the Tensai though, and it's not all over just yet. Drage needs to tee up some big shots. No contact just yet, but Moya's as vulnerable as he's going to get. Now here's the mech coming down from the sky, and two more gems for Crazy Crazy Raccoon to tie it up 9 to 9. Well, down goes Drage now as well. Lenane's got to make a move. Try to protect these gems. Stop Moya from getting them. There was one on the floor there. He does get the kill. Now shoots out some more with the hypercharge too. One gem lays on the floor. Drage might be able to claim it as Tensai just covering these gems for his teammates. And it's 11 to 9. And I think that just about makes it so... Oh, no, they can definitely even this one out. Moya needs to pick up a gem at mid. That's the win condition. Drage is holding on to that ammo. He's forced to jump back. Lena looks for a kill. Moya swipes him out of existence. And it's all tied up here. No countdown until the next gem is picked up. And it's going to be for Tensai. Moya's safe and sound on the right side, but it's only temporary. He needs this mech back. Lena has so much health, but he finally manages to chew through. One more gem is the win condition with just a few seconds left. Foot Esports cannot tie this up by picking up anything at mid. A kill on the Tensai or Moya is necessary, but they're fully out of reach. Crazy Raccoon, approach match point. I mean, what's to be said about it, to be honest? I feel like Lenane rushed it a bit on that right-hand side at the end there. Kind of just jump padded in and walked in a straight line. Seemed a little bit off for me. And I'm not sure if that's kind of the pressure getting to him or just a bit of frustration. And now facing this match point for Crazy Raccoon. Difficult position for Footy Sports to come back from. They haven't even won a game yet. Never mind winning this many in a row to be able to bring it back. Almost a flawless victory for Crazy Raccoon. They can close it out here. Or Foot Esports, this is where. You see the reverse sweep born, but they need to make big moves. Drage froze on the spot there for a moment, and Crazy Raccoon get to reap the rewards fully. Lena on the right side also shot down, and Semantic all on his own. And a two-man pinch. Semantic still manages to get the jump on a Tensai and a kill. It's a fantastic comeback for Foot Esports, but they have to play this objective, which is so difficult versus Moya, who has so much health. I mean, look at the placement of this oil as well, slowing Drage in his tracks pretty much permanently if he doesn't burn it down. And Semantic too low to do too much on the right. Lenane falls on the right, sorry, and Semantic's low on the left. Drage being burned down, toolbox placed as well. Moya just trying to stay in this mech. And now that's the eighth gem in his hand, and not a single one for foot. Lenaz looking vulnerable. There's a kill from Shitampo, and things are crumbling from Foot Esports. Just complete silence on their end. No major plays just yet. Need to see one more gem. Moya, he's perfectly in position to pick this one up. Running it back with 10 gems in a countdown. Only 15 seconds remain for Foot Esports to get a kill on Moya. Yeah, Tensai's there for the defense as well. Semantic now joining the man. I think he's got no jumps left to be able to get over this wall easy as well. Now, Lenane coming in, does have a dash. Gonna be able to use that super, but not enough. Moya's out of mech, and he does go down. There's a launch pad there, but no Nobody can get the gems and get out. Drage could have picked up two and escaped through this super, but it's not going to be enough. It's a reset, but now Crazy Raccoon are established in this defensive position. A near miss here for Foot Esports. They can still bring it back. They have to fight all the way to Shtetapa with five seconds left and no one in sight. Crazy Raccoon, they close it out. A full six games, zero losses, flawless victory for Crazy Raccoon. I mean, that, that looks good for Crazy Raccoon going on into the next days. Some doubted them after Masters. Some said they weren't going to be the team they once were, but they've came in today on day two of the World Finals and proved to everybody once again, do not underestimate East Asia. What a statement. All the doubters now silent. Crazy Raccoon reigns supreme for now, as they will be representing their region on the big stage on day three. Incredible stuff then from Crazy Raccoon straight to that third day, and there's going to be many more tough matchups for them ahead. Or shall I say, <laughs> their first tough matchup by the looks of how they've handled this group, to be honest, because that was flawless. 6-0 and oh in terms of sets in this group.
still just absolutely decimated Europe. And it's not a good look for those two teams, but they will be facing each other next. And that is a decider game. And it's a massive grudge match. Oh man, I mean, what, what a grudge match it's going to be. What a, I wouldn't have it any, any other way, honestly. For the purpose of the show, it's such a spectacle to behold. We'll see Foot versus SK next, but rolling back the tape and reflecting on what Crazy Raccoon had going on here, and especially Foot, because there were such high expectations for Foot coming into this match versus Crazy Raccoon. They felt very confident and were also playing very well in the weeks leading up, in the months leading up. They were doing fairly well in all their matches and in all of their scrims. Foot Esports, when it came to their drafts and versus Crazy Raccoon, they looked fairly solid at times, but Crazy Raccoon still shut them out without a speck of opportunity for victory. I mean, this is the thing, as you say, Foot Esports have looked so good leading up to this competition. They've been looking absolutely amazing, you know? they they they. they qualified to World Finals through those Season 3 Gamescom Finals for the SPS, and they looked good at that live event as well. Didn't really look like they were having many mistakes. Through Season 4, they've now made it to the Challenge Finals for that as well, which they'll be playing shortly after World Finals, just a couple of weeks after. But they just don't seem to be bringing the same energy. And if they are, then how good does that make Crazy Raccoon look? I mean, look at these stats too. Look. I mean, everyone's getting their kills, everyone's doing their part, but the objective, it just was not even close. 6-0. I just want everyone to remember that. 6-0 in terms of games won versus losses. <sighs> Ready, set. What do we say? What do we say about East Asia? You know, even I underestimated them. To be honest, you know, we've, we've kind of been discussing who we think was going to be winning Worlds, and to be honest, they weren't even really in my top two, top three, you know? I was kind of like, okay, after Masters, I've kind of lost my faith in them, you know? And I think a lot of people did. But they've definitely restored that faith in themselves today because that was a really, really solid performance. You talk about faith in themselves too, and I think that's a major storyline that we'll get to see some development of. As far as our most valuable player, our MVP, in the last several matches, we asked you guys online to vote, and you all selected Shtetapo, the all-time GOAT of East Asia. And no surprise, really, to be honest with you. He did play that very, very well. But I say, uh, you know, he played that Rosa well in the second set. Moyer in the first set played it perfectly. And I think they were a bit of a cohesive unit in that third. So any of them really could have been uh, that main man. But I'm really hoping we get to see some more really nice plays from him tomorrow. Uh, and the same from the rest of the Crazy Raccoon boys as well. It's something I think is always worth pointing out about these players is that they work as such a cohesive unit. And it's something that I think sets them apart from everyone else is that they don't necessarily play the individual lanes. They like to duo up. They like to create these unwinnable 2v1 scenarios for their opponents, and I think they really do it better than anyone else on the block. Yeah, no, they really do, and I mean, it's it's so tough to be able to face up against a team like that. So SK and Foot Esports, you know, they, they, they're clearly not at the pinnacle of their uh, of how well they've been playing throughout the year. Uh, you know, SK they were very back and forward towards the end of the year. They've started to look a bit worse again. You know, LCQ they looked incredible. After that, they looked a bit sketchy to be honest with you. So I understand why they kind of took a bit of a hit, but I don't think many people expected Foot Esports to take a hit that hard. Three hour and didn't even win a game either. Not like the games were even that close. So I don't really know what's going to happen this next matchup. I mean, if you want to use the transitive property, if you think back to your math class, then yeah, okay, this does mean a, a foot loss, but I don't think it's really that cut and dry. Yeah, I mean, let's take a little bit of a, a, little, little bit of a look into the group as a whole, because we know that Crazy Raccoon have qualified with flying colors 2-0 as well. So they're going to be sitting right at the top of the group, 2-0. SK and Foot down on 0-1, and one, and we know what that means, really. We know what that means. Grudge match. It's been building up to this for the entire year. One of them will be going home, and one of them will be going to day three of the World Finals. And it's the very last match of our group stages as well. It really does all come down to this one match for SK Gaming and Foot Esports. Can SK Gaming redeem themselves? And can Foot Esports fulfill the expectations that they've created for themselves and all of the fans watching around the world for the entire year? I mean, you know, we've had some we've had some harsh words being said in interviews and stuff like that. Many of you will remain at Gamescom. Drage kind of, you know, threw a bit of shade at SK across, uh, across the stage. And I think that's something that SK are going to want to rectify today. They're going to be able to want to bring it back. They're going to be able to want to throw some shade back at Drage. And I think that this match, they might be able to do just that. What a throw down this one is going to be. It's going to be scrappy. Some words are going to be exchanged, and we're going to see some probably player reactions up on stage as well. But the mental is really the biggest thing. We're going to welcome them up to the stage. Frankie, take it away. This is the best way I can think of to end the group stage with the ultimate European grudge match. So first of all, please welcome to the stage SK Gaming! 
I Chaos said that the start of this year was incredibly tough, but since then they've made a team change. They brought in Ope and they're hoping that he is going to give them the boost they need to take this all important victory and their place in the playoffs. And next up, their last opponents of the group stage. It's Foot Esports! Not long ago, Symantec was the poster boy of SK Gaming, his rival today. And by his side is Drage, one of the most experienced players in the Brawl Stars competitive scene. So we're sure to see fireworks in the arena today. All right then, DreamHack Winter, let me hear you. Are you ready for the game? All right then, let's head over to Trav and Uber to call the action. And one final time in the BSC, it's time to renew the rivalry between Foot Esports and SK Gaming. In the words of Drej, of course, with the knockout of SK Gaming, forced them to go to LCQ. He says, bro, I hate SK. I hope they have fun at LCQ. But they did. They got through and they made it here to do it again. I mean, it's going to be it's going to be an absolutely incredible game. I cannot wait to see the heat that it goes on on the stage. There's going to be so many words thrown back and forward. The player reactions are going to be absolutely phenomenal. I'm sure you'll be able to hear Semantic absolutely screaming his head off across that stage, and I'm sure SK will give it back. I said to Semantic, how do you feel about SK obviously going up against your old team? And he looks at me for a couple seconds and he goes, what do you mean they kicked me? What do you think I feel about this team? And that was all I needed to hear. That's right, only a bad blood and it's sure to come to a boil in this five set series. We're gonna be starting on heist. It'll be time to head over to Kaboom Canyon. I mean, a map we've already seen played out quite a few times here. We've seen a lot of Cordelis play some Gale as well. We've seen obviously the, the bounce pad gadget brought in to those maps. I actually got a chance to watch Foot scrim this very map last night. Some interesting picks they've worked in. I think it was against STMN. Great scrim to watch. They've definitely prepared themselves. And SK Gaming said, no, Gale, not about it. We do not want to deal with that at all. Colette and Lola banned out here by Foot Esports too. Yeah, I mean, the Cordelia is also going to be taken off the table. Charlie and the Colt. I mean, we've seen some good stuff from Foot Esports with that Colt as well, burning down that safe and obviously hypercharge. Kind of doubled down on that damage as well. Opens up that super, allows it to be a lot easier to hit. OP going to secure himself the nanny early on. Yeah, of course, that hypercharge on Colt widens that bullet storm, but it means there's more bullets in it, and that's enough to sort of connect with that rather large hitbox of the safe. Nani here, of course, a really popular pick. Often see, you know, that Warp Blast used to swap places with the peep and get in that bottom corner of the map to draw a player from your opposition back, force them to deal with you. Bonnie gonna come here, here for Foot Esports, a great long range option with that all in potential if it comes down to a race. Tara going to be joining it as well, has the ability to tank it out with this support from beyond. And if you don't want to use it for tanking, you can use it on the safe and a lot of damage comes down from it. Same with Bonnie, jumping on that safe. The amount of DPS that she can unleash when she's in that smaller form is absolutely deadly towards the high safe. Yeah, that's going to be a great pickup here. Natara again, adding to that all-in combo potential, should you want to go that way. It's been quite the road for SK Gaming and a, a big ask here for Ope. At, uh, you know, again, pretty inexperienced Atlanta. Obviously, that new addition to this team. Going to see the Meg locked in here. This is really going to allow SK to bully their way into mid initially. Yeah, I mean, the Meg, it's going to have a lot of HP, but when it comes out of that Meg, the damage that it does is so minimal, and the HP that she's got is even less. So it is really, you know, you've got to hope that you can get the control from it, put your Nanny in a position where that damage gear can be activated, where she can get so much DPS, and Griff. I think this might be one of the first times we've seen this piggy bank to, piggy bank to break open that mid, maybe send the Meg through a little bit earlier on, probably a very solid idea, but the DPS that he can throw out as well is very good. Burning through some of these uh, Tara gadgets is going to be a great, great thing. This is also a brawler taken away from Semantic. He loves the Griff on this map. I saw him screaming that very pick here. So that might throw a spanner in the works now for Foot Esports as they try and figure out their last pick. It'll be Chuck Whoa. coming in again. So a really interesting now. Both teams have these elements to get behind enemy lines and draw people back, right? You know the Chuck is just going to go for the safe. There's some all-in potential. But I feel like the Chuck forces both teams into committing. 
If you see that Chuck go behind you, you just go all in on the enemy safe and know you have a three versus two if they try and fight you. Chuck's DPS overall in that safe doesn't really measure up to some of these other picks here. They might, they might just try and race him. I mean, this is the thing. I was speaking to just Insert literally backstage just before I hopped up for that previous game. And he said, you know, if you've just got a Chuck, sometimes it struggles. But if you've got a Chuck and you've got a Bonnie, you know you can go towards that safe. One of them's always going to be there. And that forces them into a heavy, heavy defense. Here it is. Let's put pen to paper in another chapter in the foot esports SK rivalry. No pleasantries exchanged. We're straight out of the gates, hitting hard and fast. As Lenar's the first casualty, Semantic also struggles on that right hand side. The impact of the Meg, even though she's out of the mech, she got the job done in controlling mid. Well, Lenane's just going to be working towards the super now as well. Another post for Lenane to, or for Semantic to build up here, getting ready to chug towards that opposing safe. OP back in the mech now as well. Griff soup comes down, but a Tara soup from Dre to counter it out. Gets the kill, but Nanny, first signs of life, first signs of damage on that safe. And it's quite a lot early on. Semantic finally. Stepping forward here to get OP out of the mech once more. So there's a window now for Foot Esports to get more aggressive. A substantially weakened SK gaming lineup will have to deal with this. And I love that from Yoshi. Gets out of dodge here now as we have the dive. Lenar on that body made his way towards a safety, but Chaos instantly comes back to defend. OP will be dealt with though with that gravity at the top of the map. Yeah, Lenane just burning down time here, letting SK come back and allowing Drage and Samantha to go forwards. Now Samantha comes through towards that safe, getting some damage down. Griff super backwards as well, coming through. Lenane not going down because OP can't deal the damage onto him, getting some damage on safe. But now it was time for Samantha to retreat and Drage to slide this mid, but he does go down as well. Very much on the table here, but this is a little lackluster from Foot Esports. Again, Samantha wants to commit onto the safe, drawing three players back, buying time for Foot to get their respawns in, uh, re in play. Leonardo, yeah, that pick a card is going to claim him easily enough. SK have the damage here. It's a close one so far, but they're about to get some safe damage of their own. Semantic goes straight away as well, and this might be a base race now. Nanny damage gear on Super as well. Jump from the name straight onto OB. Get him out of that mech and stop that damage from coming through. Tara pull there as well, but Chaos doesn't he actually kick. get caught on the water. Now Semantic coming through too. OB's going to be there waiting for him, but not got the DPS at range, and he avoids the swing as well. Beautiful from him, and Dre slots around the right. Look at that. It's going so low. 9% here. Foot Esports making the commitment towards the end of the round. Semantic back to Way and almost managed to pick off I Chaos there. Drake needs to get something done. That's the dive, and that'll get the job done. Lenar sticks the landing. For esports, take game number one. Great plays from them and Semantic. He chose his times well to go in. Played that chuck beautifully, I will say. You know, he goes in when he needs to, comes out, avoids stuff as well. And, you know, evading that meg swing was so influential. That's something we don't see very often, actually, is Chuck's being able to get in on the safe and then get back out to defend when the other team try and race. Great composure there from Foot Esports. Well, back to square one again, 100 to 100 now. Lenane's going to be able to get the trade there. Yoshi not able to have this DPS just yet to be able to bring Semantic down, but on the top side, OP brings some damage to safe and takes the lead for SK once more. Semantic's been putting that architecture, getting that infrastructure together. Takes a while to build that up, but once he's got it, he can get on that safe whatever he chooses. Lenar dives in, draws I Chaos back again. Now Semantic once more is going to step forward. Some more of these posts getting put down. There's a bit of incidental damage from Ope on that safe here. Means Drage does need to address the issue of this Meg. You know, Lenane going to go forward, trade some damage on the safe as well. But Yoshi cleaned up by Drage on that top side of the map. Now just playing the slow game yet again. Chaos going to come through. Piggy bank, piggy bank on this wall and break it up. But Semantic about to set up one more post. And that should be able to get him to safe. Gets it done. Ope though able to bring him down. Help from beyond. Not going to be of much assistance here as pick a card. Almost gets rid of Lenar. One more shot will do it. The map is fully opened up now. And that's a great situation for Ope and Chaos who have that range. Semantic, tough to catch. Zigzagging his way over towards a safe. A couple shots on Chaos now and he's headed back home. Oh, not quite. He'll still deal with Chaos though and secure a trade. Now Lenar wants to dive on in. Foot Esports are taking no prisoners. There's so much damage coming through. Ope trying to match on the other side, but with no mech, it's just not going to happen. Semantic needs to get in range of one of these posts now to be able to get forwards. Always going to be stuck. Here he goes. It gets OP down on his way onto the safe 4K and add more as well. Talk about value. We're looking at him running rings around oh. Chaos. He gets another one. Semantic doing the dirty on his old team. Here is that Tara Super now. OP once more knocked out of the mech. And SK Gaming are floundering. A paltry 4% remains. Semantic can hope to finish the job there. But it'll be close enough now. What a lead for Foot Esports. They are inches away from taking a set. LNA goes forward, picks up a kill as well, makes it a 3v2 in mid, make that 2v2 as SK even we go. Now the truck forward should be done. 3.5 to the safe, and Foot takes set number one. Choo choo, baby, the truck pays off. Semantic knew it was an easy thing to get in there and find that extra 4% of damage. Now, I know you're not a huge fan of Meg, and fair enough. 
We can see now why she feels weak in some situations, because when she's out of mech, it creates a massive window for Samantha to go in. He had an outsized impact on that round. Not only is he getting safe damage, on the way in, he is blowing people up almost by accident. Yeah, I mean, it was really nice. I think it was actually trying to get back into Mech, and he just got caught on one of those train tracks, absolutely obliterated by Semantic. And as you say, getting damage in on the tracks, but when he lands, the damage coming from his shots as well is just absolutely massive. And he got Chaos on the way out. That's so ridiculous. This is a replay, of course. Semantic goes in. Yoshi takes a ton of damage here, and this is kind of how he's doing it. He got out alive, and then he rotates out with Drage. And they leave him behind as a constant threat and comes back in. That's so hard to deal with. What a comeback in that first map. I think that was really exciting. This, I think, was when the dirty work got done here. Semantic, so hard to catch him. Finding that trade kill is just, is huge. I mean, I love the way he's set up here as well. One in that choke point, one in the mid choke point, and then coming through as well to get the damage on safe. And there you go. Apologize for your ears, guys, but we love to see it. Here it is, it's your damage stats as this one unfolded. And a, a real huge amount of damage here on that SK side, right? You have that Meg, you have a lot of these brawlers that can really dish it out, but finishing the job against that hyper mobile Chuck is no easy thing. And a couple of times, like the Bonnie just jumps in, uh, Lenar in the back corner said, okay, well, we're gonna drag you back here. We're gonna force you to answer this, to address this threat. Even with the Griff opening the map up, it's not as if that didn't benefit Foot Esports to some degree as well. Yeah, I mean, this is what I mean. You know, a Chuck goes out, another Brawler replaces it, and that's what Inso was touching on just before the game. That's what I said. You know, Bonnie jumping in, making room, and they just switch in. They switch in, they switch out, and that's what Foot Esports are doing so well in that game. Against Crazy Raccoon, the team play seemed to see it take a bit of a hit against the mechanics of Crazy Raccoon. But SK just can't match those same mechanics, so I think they're kind of reforming themselves. SK need to take a sidebar here. It's been a long year for that franchise, and at many points, there was the question of whether they would even be able to make it here. They have struggled. This rivalry has been something that has spurred them on, that has set that fire in their belly. I'm sure they were eagerly awaiting this kind of matchup, but with Crazy Raccoon so far ahead in this group, only one of these teams will be able to advance to tomorrow's play. Well, pinhole punt in Brawl Bolt draft should be coming up very, very shortly. We've seen both of these teams play against the might and the aggression of Crazy Raccoon and not able to stand up to it in Brawl Ball. Now they've got to play against each other and see if they have that same kind of energy. Bands being the spike, the squeak, and the gale. Don't want to see any of those, or a couple of those hypercharges in there. And on the other side, the Lou, the Cordelias, and the Charlie. I mean, what, are they, what can you expect? You know who's going to have the first pick. It's Foot Esports, and it's going to be an Otis. Look, and the Otis away is huge. Such a powerful duelist here, and has that ability to, to basically crush any matchup it's put in with the help of that mute. SK Gaming, this could be the end of the line for them. In this series, if they cannot find a way to out Foxes. His semantic looks very <laughs> pleased. We've locked the Otis. He is loving it. This guy is a consummate showman. He's drinking it in from the crowd. Yeah, well, SK's first pick should be coming around shortly. Got to be something pretty solid to deal with this Otis, and it's going to be a buster. They're going to run that tank into the Otis. Seems like a bit of an odd thing to take first pick, especially with two remaining picks from Foot Esports. I mean, Rose is still on the table as well, and that can do a decent job against that buster. Absolutely. Rose are pretty frightening. A lot of teams have played it because there's not too many tanks that can really stand against it, with the exception, I guess, of Frank that we saw earlier uh, on today in that uh, Nouns matchup, if I'm not mistaken. But we don't expect to see that make another appearance here. Uh, Sandy's available. That's uh, that's an option, of course. A lot of bush already on this map, though, so perhaps... Ooh, uh, ooh M's! One of the first times we've seen M's make an appearance here. Definitely been a bit of a while since I've seen that M's come in, and... It's not like Foot Esports have really got that many tanks so far. Yes, they're probably going to take one in order to deal with that buster. Bit of a preemptive pick, I feel, from SK Gaming there. Maybe it's their best denser to, you know, something like a Rosa, something like the, the Jackie that can come in a bit later on down the line as well. And Jackie's been so strong against that buster throughout the duration of this week, this weekend and also uh, just weeks prior as well throughout the Snapdragon Pro Series. Much of this Foot Esports draft, you'll notice no one stood behind them on stage, is being carried out by Drage here. He does about 80% of the the drafting and once we get into game is when semantic takes over in the calling and there's that rosa again you see the buster picked up and say okay great unfriendly bushes pretty darn scary on this map you can even use grow light here just to cover more of it up and give you opportunities to ambush well for esports still have their last pick here and they're gonna go with the b something a bit more long range something a bit more versatile can deal with that buster alone as well slowing value is really solid with that brawler 
but SK Gaming still have this last pick and still have a lot to account for, but they're going to go with the Maisie. Another hypercharged brawler coming in, and it's been showing its face so much throughout this week, uh, this weekend, and, and it really has been proving itself as well. Yeah, we saw Lennar pilot it uh, in that last set of the Crazy Raccoon series, and he was able to put a lot of work in with it. Obviously, ultimately, it didn't end up quite being enough. But here we have it, headed into set two. It's Brawl Ball, Pinhole Punt, already semantic, barking orders down the line. I'm sure this what eSports team does not want to drop a single map to their perennial rivals as SK Gaming also fight to make it out of Group D. A sweep would be the dream for, for eSports, but that's no longer an option for SK Gaming. They're going to have to claw themselves back into this one. Beast dying things off strong with that Rattle Time and a great connection onto the right. We'll, onto Chaos. Semantic versus Opie in this left hand side going the way of Semantic so far, but Lenin already dominating the right. That's why you take a Rosa, and that's why Footer ahead. I mean, from the very beginning of that round, Chaos is struggling. B is getting shot into that M's, and Chaos has no impact. Montage has to be used here. Unfriendly Bushes also popped in response by Lenar to slow things down for SK Gaming. They've lost Rage here, and Lenar's also fallen. These guys are going at it, hammer and tongs here. Semantic able to get the mute on Ope, but he will just walk it in. Yeah, not going to mind too much about that. Add enough HP to be able to scroll that one straight into the goal, and the barricades from Ope are doing so much. But Lenane just playing it passive, not trying to be caught out by Chaos this time. And the slow straight onto Yoshi, but didn't really connect with anybody else and didn't get any value off it. Yeah, Drage, obviously the one that really wants to capitalize on that slower possible, but here comes Onara, he's looking ferocious. Ope has to throw up the super. Drage at least picked off there. The Maisie got some value. Lenar considering walking in here, but maybe too much damage down for the Caustic. Charisma getting thrown down. Slows up Lenar. He wants to get into those goals, but he's brought down. Yeah, could have almost got two there if he just came the tile further. But OP does have this barricade once more, and that's what's been giving Foot these issues. Great slow into Chaos there, and actually connects with OP as well. S keeps him right there behind that wall. Not allowing him to push any further. Hypercharge coming from Maisie now. Does get a few shots off, but now Lenane going into his super as well. Tanking some damage. Ball in SK's pocket, so he can't really move it forward. And that's going to give Foot a chance to respawn and a chance to come back. Uh, SK not in a position to capitalize over how that fight went here. Rattled Hive used by Drage, who's struggled a little bit now as Yoshi really looking to challenge the beast position. There's the shockwave. Yoshi able to cycle that one pretty comfortably. Pops a second. Lenar blown up from behind an unbreakable wall. Yoshi goes for it again. It's Chaos this time getting involved. Drage is in trouble. And here come SK Gaming. The only chance we saw the hypercharge come through from Rosa was right at the end there. Not getting the value required after that first goal. And SK made the adaptations after it went in. And they just defended so much better after that one. I mean, we saw some moments from Foot Esports, but SK Gaming just seemed like the dominant force in that last one. You mentioned unfriendly bushes got popped there by Lenar. Then the follow-up wasn't there. The B wasn't getting involved. Drage unable to have much impact here. Let's run it back now for our second round in this set. Ope getting pummeled as Drage comes alive. Yeah, more of the same here. Lenin was ready to catch himself on that wall, but the stun available from Yoshi not really wanting to feed him super. He gives him it, but he'll take the goal as a bit of a bit of a counter. Yeah, look, Lenar stopped there for just a second, get one tick of health regen, knew at 7k he would be able to walk it straight on in. Great fight there from Foot Esports. Great slow, and Drage capitalizes once more. Chaos by the wayside again. Yeah, super Veil from Lenin as well, just working on that hypercharge now. If he gets that in the goal mouth, that's going to be dangerous for SK Gaming. Now just keeping them back, pinning them in spawn, and the mute available from Semantic as well. But you don't really want to go anywhere near this Maisie. Rattle Hive coming down to try to bring some of them quite low, but not finding anything just yet, and runs out. Now Lenin coming in with that super. Everything's going to have to be used to stop him here. He's catching himself at a wall several times. Great defense from SK Gaming there, regardless of everything Lenin did. Yeah, and they hold on to the Shockwave here, but they're able to cycle it at least. Trage finds Yoshi. There might not be enough for Foot to be going on with now. Unfriendly Bushes pop this soon as Lenar comes off spawn, and that's enough to catch it. I right, Chaos. And I wanted to throw hands with Ope, but he respectfully backs up. Yeah, wonderful communication from Foot there. Lenane knowing that he could help his team out by getting that hypercharge available as well. But Lenane choosing just to use that super as he knows he can do dominate OP on it alone. Now, has that extra speed available? Yoshi's going to come in, though, going to use it as well. Gets a few shots off, and the hypercharge shows its value. But Lenane's showing itself on the left hand side, too. Chaos oh, play. backing them off and knocking them back. Nicely done, the Caustic Charisma slow, helping our chaos there. Drage has to try and at least feign strength from this position to force SK back. Remember, Ford already have that goal in hand here. Yoshi able to use the gadget to get away from that shot from Semantic. Would have been a problem, and again, Lenar falls to that super from the M's. Here come SK again, they're going forward. Shockwave should get the job done. Drage can only look on as the ball gets slotted.
35 seconds left then, 1-1. One, one. Overtime should be looming, but Drage definitely gonna thrive heavily there, and SK Gaming are gonna struggle. Now he's got that big shot available as well, gonna use that forward, so Lenny looking for a super, needs a super here, because the hypercharge is ready to roll. Uh, OP just sitting behind this wall here with his barricade, but what use is that if Lenin manages to get on top of him and gets going? Going! Super there, hypercharge too, but knocked back. Slow, everything coming out of SK not Gaming, enough. but it's just not enough. Chaos Slow trying to get it done, but the Drage is there. Shot comes through, and Brawl Ball's even. That is the power of hypercharge. Semantic, we don't need to replace your tablet right now. Keep the hands away from it. He's feeling good about that one, and you can't blame him. In that first round, there wasn't enough time for the hypercharge to get built up. And we saw Foot struggle to bully their way in. But as soon as Anar has it, he's full health, walks on up. It doesn't matter how many supers SK Gaming have. The power of that Rosa is undeniable. We jump it straight back in. It's one game apiece. Yeah, Rattle Hive showing his worth there as well. Drake getting some shots through, gets the he's score as well. And he is amazing. On this brawl, almost makes it three, but Yoshi survives. There's still a gap, but Chaos respawning just in time. Love that Iron Hive to set up the follow-up shot. He already had hit Opay once, so he had an empowered one ready to go. That's perfect. Ball though, well and truly in SK territory now as Foot Wonder Pine poked them down. OP wants to create space with this montage here, but Drage has other ideas. Rattled Hive comes through, unfriendly bushes to slow I Chaos and force him away. The unfriendly bushes can be used quite well here if OP doesn't really get out of this bush. He's going to choose to step out of it just in time. The name was ready to press that button, but now Super comes forward from Yoshi. Believe he connects with two there, slows both as well. Fat Splatter almost getting him down. And Chaos uses a super, but not too much value out of it on the left there. Drage trying to find some connections. Don't want a Maisie up close in your goal, so needs to keep them back. Semantic knew he had to give up his life there, but what for is the question. And ah, caught in the middle of the map here, and this is looking a little scary now. A goal here would be massive, but the ball is slotted comfortably in foot esports territory. Drage, though, he will go down. There is no escape from that caustic charisma. Two players up here for foot to defend. The montage could be an issue. Lenar trying to buy a little bit of time, but there's still three players for SK Gaming, and they will not be denied. Burn a little bit of clock and get that ball in the net. Yeah, Chaos gets his super just in time as well as the ball goes in. His super ticks up, and that's three to their name. OP going to be able to use his shield early on, get Chaos into a bit more of a favorable position. Rattled Hive was bouncing off that barrier as well, and the name pushing forwards. Drage connecting some great shots. Semantic pitch in the left hand side. Hyper charge available. Together. Ready to go now. Super shot available too. The mute's there. Surely something's got to happen. Yoshi muted. He's in trouble. Here comes Lana, and he's hungry. That's two for the Rosa now, and I Chaos will be moved aside. For Esports, take your breath and make it an even game. 30 seconds on the clock. Foot Esports are definitely going to be ready to head into overtime here. The B, the Otis going to dominate. But Lenane not going to have the best of times. Nice little unfriendly bushes there. Gets Yoshi slowed down with Semantic. Finding a few shots. Mute connects too. Lenane going forwards. But the Super from Chaos chooses to hold his out. Is that going to be enough? Lenar doesn't seem too bothered by it right now. Yoshi uses Hypercharge for nothing at the start of this kickoff. And here he comes. Lenar again finds the one kill. He's so tanky. Ope can only look on from behind the montage. And now it's Yoshi. As time runs out, he will fall. And Foot Esports will get the job done. Only just the risky pass to the right. I thought he was slotting that straight in the left with hey, the super. Live dangerously or not at all, baby. <laughs> exactly. But Foot Esports get the job done in set number two and move into a great position. Drace here taking the knee for just a moment. This is definitely the kind of series, although it's been short so far, that is going to sap your energy. Semantic that was too busy making eyes at the crowd. Or is Lenar on your screen here? Devastating on that Rosa. He's locked in. Yeah, well, that man can pick his moment well, and every time he did, click that hypercharge. Everybody on the side of SK went down, and a goal was scored. Really, the main man, but I can't really just glaze over the fact that Drage played that B so, so well. It really was phenomenal. And I mean, he, this is literally the brawler he's known for, so you expect it. But still, watching him play it, it's just a treat. Well, I won't tell him you said nice things about him, okay? Yeah, no, I don't, don't want to make it's you an easy target for him, okay? But yeah, stunning stuff. And really, yeah, again, getting a ton of information, of course, via that Iron Hive means it's easy to land those shots. Tough break for Ope here. Let's talk about the draft really quick. Does these M's really pay off in the end? I mean, I feel like for the most part, it did a good job. But when the Rosa gets in these defensive uh, these offensive positions, the knockback just doesn't seem worth it. He always catches himself on a wall, and a player like Lenane knows how to play against that Ems. Stunning work here. And as the overtime came down, it was basically over. Drace, though, yeah, another second inside that gas cloud. Could have been the end of him. 
And that's your boy, Semantic. Looks like he's feeling pretty good right now, still soaking it in. And why wouldn't you? SK Gaming now definitely in the doldrums. They have been unable to win a set so far here at World Finals. Yeah, look at that, 11 kills to Drage's name. Opie sitting there on one, the singular kill for Ope and 177 to his name as well. It's just not the performance we're kind of expecting in a World Finals caliber team. Yeah, SK Gaming need, they need more. The composition was pretty powerful. You said you're okay with the M's. They also had the Maisie, of course, to play with the Buster. Maybe a questionable choice getting picked first, no less. But we digress. As we head over to Hot Zone now, it's now or never for SK Gaming. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can predict the Luban right now because uh, it's going to be gone. It it's be gone. Get and it if out. that slips through, I feel bad for the team playing against it because that is a very, very solid brawl. A single hot zone as well just puts it even further in the meta. Kind of options, though. Uh, we've seen Bell on this map. Of course, the spike occasionally. Mr. P has been used here already. Tara to some degree. Lou banned out. Yep, Bell banned out. No surprises there. Lola also taken away. Yeah, no one wants to deal with that, that Rosa anymore. 8-bit, though, will be the selection. Very sturdy, very high damage selection for Yoshi. Yeah, I mean, a lot of teams have been looking towards the Pam, looking towards the Carl, uh, and I think that was, you know, mainly STMN and Zeta Division earlier on in the day, and that Carl play that Gero did, it, you know, it's made me feel like that player oh, is just, man. it should, it should just be a stable there, because that is really, really solid. They're gonna go with the Eve, they're gonna go with the Colette, though, and I don't mind the Eve, you know, if you're gonna take Colette, I feel like you've got to kind of bring it along with it, because it's just such a good counter to that end, uh, to that to that Colette. And already you're looking at a 10,000 HP brawler in 8-bit, right? So even if there's no uh, uh, true tanks selected by SK Gaming, you can get value there. I also think that the hypercharge for Colette definitely makes it feel much better even if you don't see a fully tanky comp on the other side of things. The flexibility for Eve to go where she needs to, especially just put pressure on single shot brawlers with that super. It's also a powerful option. Buster again. We picked up here for SK. I mean, Two tanks into Colette. Okay. That's what I was thinking as well. Into Colette, not the easiest of matchups. At least the Rosa's banned out this time. Uh, as that kind of saving grace for SK Gaming play in that buster. Uh, definitely makes it that little bit easier. There's still a lot of brawlers that can do a good enough job against it. But I kind of feel like Foot Esports still searching for a mid here that can play into this 8-bit. Uh, and whether or not you kind of just go something quite aggressive, bring in a stew, something like that, to try and evade it and get within range of some of these brawlers and also evade the shots and the pulls of that boss. What? Ooh, ooh, ooh. This drafting from SK is on another planet. I haven't seen Penny in like a solid maybe five months in competitive, to be honest with you. But into the Eve, into those babies coming through, spawning in, it can really do some damage if you stand behind them. Okay, how does for esports answer the Penny? A ton of fun, of course, and that persistent pressure as well. And she's able to deploy a super in a safe place. Obviously, no throwers on the side of foot esports. So, getting rid of that super turret, pretty unlikely. Ah, oh, so no. we take a thrower instead. <laughs> it's going to be Bali. A oh, Bali, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you know, bring a throw in to deal with the Penny, of course. But Bali on this map, I feel like, is such a wild pick as well. Cops are bizarre, Trav. Yeah, no, I'm really not sure. I mean, imagine Colette's going to be playing through that mid against that 8 bit. It's going to have a bit of a tough time uh, once that speed starts coming through thanks to the super. But at the same time, it is a very good matchup, and especially against that Buster, too. Penny's still a powerful option, right? She's very effective at range, of course, firing into chokes. But if they close the gap on you as Penny, you can throw that salty barrel down and still benefit from your shots splitting up. Here we go, SK Gaming had better hope this draft keeps them alive in a series, because it is, as I said, now or never, as Anar confidently steps forward here to take some early percentage. Getting the first glimpses of percentage here, and a nice heal coming through from Drage early on with that healing tonic. Gotcha Gadget was used by the name, but didn't find any connection, so good job Drage helped him out. Gonna be seeing these spawners coming in. Different star power than usual from Semantic. Gonna see these babies spawning in if he hits that final egg. And Chaos pushes maybe too aggressive and falls low. They're not getting some great shots here on Ope, who needs to take a sidebar now as the damage amplifier has been deployed. Another healing tonic now just to let Lenar hang around for a little bit longer. The spawn has come out here. Lenar goes in for that time to collect, really just forcing I Chaos back for the time being. Drage is being liberal with those heals. I mean, SK, where are you? 50%, it's a mid versus mid fight, and then not stepping foot on the zone, not even a toe on it, until OP moves forward, and he doesn't get anything from it. Down he goes, last call from Drage coming in as well, throws it out, and just completely covers this mid portion of the map. Semantic there to assist as well, just waiting for Lenane to come back, and Hypercharge, ready to go. SK Gaming need to wake up. 
They step up to the point now for the time being, but Yoshi does not want to hang around inside that last call. So Lenar comes forward. Hypercharge at the ready. Ope still fans. There's a bit of a fight though. He's going to be able to draw him in there with that slow-mo replay. So SK back on the point for now. A more aggressive damage amplifier thrown down by Yoshi here. Semantic pushes him with those hatchlings. Another Mon charge, but Ope being circumvented by Dre, throwing over his head to get rid of the damage amp. So how long is that damage amp going to last when you've got that Eve, that Colette being able to get some shots through, and the Super should come in shortly as well, gets through them. Gotcha Gadget got to be following in shortly, but don't think there's any left. Super brings him down, and this is getting close now as SK starts to claw it back 20 second, 20% 20 behind, but still, it's a possibility. They wait out the healing tonic to some degree. Now there's none of that available here for Foot Esports. And now with the time to collect, though, was able to at least take Ope down. There's going to be hatchlings on the scene in just a moment. Another Colette super to find Yoshi. Hypercharge pop. Lenar wants to go in, but he's a little bit too low. It's 94% for SK Gaming at some point. Foot Esports are going to have this one wrapped up. SK have got to get in there, and so they do. They wipe Foot off the map, and now they have control. Rage coming back in, but it's him against the world here. It's Nothing going to happen. And Penny showing its worth with the splash when they're all in the zone in the mid versus mid fight. Penny's always going to come out on top. Devastating there for Semantic is that super shot from Penny's Tara comes in and flattens him just when they needed him in the fight. What patience from SK Gaming. We were questioning their strategy at the start of that round. They really stay back off the point, poking down, forcing Dre's to part with those gadget charges. You can't blame him for it as well. Same for Lenane too. Uses these gotcha gadgets, but he needs to hit whilst doing it too to get the heals back. And he's doing a good job of it now, pushing them all the way back to the spawn. And this looks like an even better start for Foot. Playing out similarly in that sense though to last time. OP building up that super, of course, now creates that space. Yoshi steps up. They really want to get as much incremental percentage behind those supers as they can. Another heal has to be popped here, but Semantic gets the better of Ope. Now, without your Buster, you could be in trouble. They're not happy to expend a super on getting rid of the damage here. Yeah, say, so without your Buster, you're in trouble. Without your turret, you're dead. That's the thing, so he's going down. <laughs> oh, man. Lenane ain't going to come back as well, but the Splash not going to be there as Penny not in the mix. Buster going to be dealing with him quite quickly. Last call straight down the mid. More of the same from last game, but for Esports, want a different result this time. Yoshi has the range, though. He's able to play from behind that last call and get at least some damage to force Dre's back again. Chaos, always threatening from the right-hand side. Side, but it's been quiet for much of these rounds. Here's the, here's the hyper charge for Lenai is going in. My good, the damage is real. It'll be a trade in the end now as the Hatchling's coming in and Yoshi's going to get left upon. Tough gig for him. Cheat cartridge gets him out, but the Hatchlings, they come for him. And yeah, no turret as well as Drage quickly sweeps that more spawn. 92. Everything's going down. 93 now as we get closer to a Foot Esports match point. Last call and Foot Esports match point. Oh, oh brother. Mere inches away from victory, our foot esports. And Semantic is keeping that energy high. That was how they wanted to start. This time, foot esports never take their foot off the gas. SK, something needs to happen. I mean, they're one game away from staying alive. It can't be that bad. But foot esports have been looking good throughout this entire set. Different strategy though, as now we take lanes for the side of SK. Now, Ope really extending now, of course, going with the Buster to the right hand side. Tries to draw Dre's in with that gadget here as Yoshi now trying to hold mid on his own. That's a big order. And it'll be forced away by the last call. Yeah, healing now is foot esports and semantic. Gonna have these babies coming. Gives them a bit more time to heal up. The splash through does connect with the name. Chaos low once more, but super coming out of him now and almost goes down upon return. But Opie not having the best of times. Now bouncing back some shots. Semantic, but the heals are there as well. Yeah, a lot of zoning going on here by Yoshi. Ope now pushing into the bushes. He's swapping between those lanes, trying to keep Lenar as quiet as possible. He'll have to back away now, but can play from within that zone until Semantic removes the damage amp. 27 plays 34. SK behind, but definitely within striking distance. Yeah, Lenane surely going down there. A little auto aim there from Chaos to bring him to his knees. Close game, this one. Much closer than the games before, but Semantic getting some great shots Ooh. onto Yoshi here. Actually wanting the turret over the kill. Now super from Lenane. Pull back from Ope. No escape, but Gotcha Gadget keeps him in it anyway. Yeah, that durability from time to collect. That star power is very important. Lenar's able to stay in it. And now Foot Esports are threatening to get into the lead. I Chaos forced away from the left-hand side by Dre. She really collapsed towards mid. And now Foot have the lead. 
Well, only narrowly as SK starts to push back. Little lane swap, but all three of them in a spot here do not want to get hit by any shots. Now, got Chigaji being used. Lane's going to use the super forwards, but actually got pulled in and stopped him from using it. Chaos cleans up around the right hand side, and now this is an SK game to win. Yeah, it's back and forth as the pendulum swings, and SK gain them, find themselves with a lead. First order of business, get rid of the damage amp. Lenar does so. Yoshi, though, still hits hard without that super. will throw yet another one down, and Lenar goes in straight away. Chaos, though, loses his tower, but gets the kill. 96 and counting here. SK Gaming, they've got themselves in the game. Finally, they come alive. Long road ahead of them, but they've started walking at least. Now getting closer and closer to foot. They looked so confident through the first couple of games, but SK, they're clawing the way back. They're starting to make moves, and they really needed to. We thought the draft was kind of sussy from both sides, if I'm honest with you. We didn't quite understand the penny. We weren't sure exactly. Uh, about the weird setup that Foot came in with either. They look strong in the early rounds. Making use of that healing, the sustainability between the Gotcha Gadget and the healing tonic. They can hang around on that point for quite some time. But once those expire, that's when they're, they're most vulnerable. And they had problems dealing with that 8 bit. Yeah, I mean, it really was quite difficult. Don't feel like we saw the value out of Lenane as we did in that second game in the third. It just didn't seem the same. And SK, they definitely took a bit of a different approach. Off the start, not triple mid. They didn't want to go for that anymore. They started playing down those lanes, busted down the right, Penny down the left, and that 8-bit through the mid. And it did start to work better off the start. And then from there, they just got some wins and Buster, You know, he chose his moments to use those gadgets really nicely. When the name wanted to do something, he shut it out. Yeah, and, I mean, we actually saw the Buster switch to the left lane after that as well. So, Ope, I think identifying, I need to be him right now. I need to push up on these sides of the map and make sure that someone like Drage or Lenar, for example, cannot get comfortable and just sit and fire shot after shot into our backside as we try and contest the point. Really impressed with this. I don't know if I really see the value proposition still of that penny, but the execution with that, you know, slightly off the wall composition from SK Gaming, it can't be doubted, especially in the face of this. I mean, the, the, the sheer amount of damage put out here by foot combined with those eliminations, you think they would have run away with this, but that was not the case. Finally, SK Gaming get on the board in this grudge match. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, in Hot Zone, it's one of those gamers where, you know, kills and DPS usually do mean a lot more than other ones, because if you're getting the kills, you should be standing on the zone, and that's the thing, you should have the control. But for Esports, after that first game, when they started to be, you know, kind of dominated by SK Gaming, they didn't seem to have that same kind of, you know, I'll just go on the zone, even, for, even if it's for just a couple of percent, they just needed that full control to do it, and I think that was maybe a little bit of an issue. We're headed over to Knockout next, folks. It'll be out in the open. Expect to see many of those sharpshooters heavily contested. I'm curious to see how it plays out here. Big turnout for SK Gaming, of course. Massive fan base. I'm sure they're getting loud right now, seeing them finally get themselves into this game. Let's talk bans here. Gene, of course, taken away here. Meg RT banned out. And then Piper and Nani. SK don't want to deal with sharpshooters at all. Well, Eve returning once more for Foot Esports. Going to use that same brawler once again. And obviously on this map, levitating over that left-hand side on the water is a real big helping hand. And just getting yourself into a good position without having to wall break, without having to do anything. Uh, you know, with if you, if you don't want to take Brock, if you don't want to take a wall break, if you don't want to take Carl, then Eve's the answer. Yeah, just go all round. You can kind of get a feeling for what Foot are looking for, getting Gene out of the picture here. Obviously, a potentially very powerful tank counter to draw them in. It also means that anyone with Gene can kind of just bite their time, work that super into play, and then cause problems. Okay, Brock picked up here. So SK take a lot of the long range brawlers away and snatch themselves up one for themselves. But in this day and age of modern Brawl Stars, you can't ban every sniper. It's not possible here. So Foot Esports do have those options. Well, I mean, Brock gonna be able to even the playing field. Eve can levitate over that water, but SK can now just break up and walk straight through anyway. 8-bit on this map. I feel like it's a very, very NA approach to something like this. <laughs> now, you know, 8-bit is... Is, uh, that, is that in the derogatory sense? I, I don't know at this point. I'll see how it plays out because I genuinely don't really know if it's something that can, you know, really thrive on a map like this. Yes, well, we've seen it work on Shooting Star and stuff like that, which is a very open map, yeah. similar to this. But, you know, there's certain moments where it just can't withstand the pressure. Again, kind of like grey comps, you could do some, you know, funky stuff, of course, with cheat cartridges, that's where you want to go. We may not even see that being the gadget of choice here for Yoshiba. Oh, who let Lou through? Oh dear. Drake is salivating at the prospect of bringing Lou into the fold here. And that's definitely something SK are gonna have to be wary of. It really is, and especially with something like an 8-bit. You know, if you don't have that uh, turret TP back to, 
and you're going to be caught out in that hypercharge. I mean, yes, it's going to be difficult to get the hypercharge across, you know, sometimes only two rounds. But if it goes to that third and he's getting some good connections, then he should be able to grasp it. Mandy. Mandy, okay. The sharpshooters, like I mentioned, there uh, is a deep roster of them here. Foot Esports were maybe watching what STMN were up to. We're like, hey, we can do that too. I do like the Mandy here. I think it's pretty solid. And you know, there's there's only a few points where you can walk through. And usually, you know, if you're breaking, you're walking through that wall. If you've got a Mandy super, just beam it down from spawn and hope for the best. I mean, re realistically, SK don't have any hard engage at all. So it's pretty hard to put pressure on that Mandy. She might just be able to stand around at times. I will say that the Brock, obviously the incendiary fields make it kind of hard to, you do need to keep moving. The Sprout coming out now from SK Gaming can definitely lock up some parts of this map if you're able to push forward and trap your opponents on their side of the map. I mean, I don't know why, but I feel like the drafts are just so weird between these two teams. It's like... <laughs> Isn't this a classic like, uh, Chaos Brawler, though? Yeah, I know he does play the Sprout incredibly, but I just feel like there's certain Brawlers that we just haven't seen in a while on these kind of maps uh, that are being brought back. And yes, they're not bad Brawlers on the maps, but it just seems a bit... Just a bit, bit, of, a rogue, bit of a rogue pick. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we are packed to capacity here at DreamHack. Everyone turning up to see how this grudge match goes. Make some noise, DreamHack, as we head now to Knockout. Well, SK Gaming starting off with that war break and Samantha just starting off by levitating over this water. And then just trying to use this, this range advantage. As Chaos pushing forwards, going to be able to block off some of these choke points at some point. And the rocket fuel from OP gets a great connection. Yeah, not looking to break the wall on the right-hand side. Much of it unbreakable now on the left anyway. Lenar finds OP though. The value is getting a crew. Lenar standing still here, knowing that Chaos needs to move quickly. But from behind the wall, Trange gets plucked out there. Lenar can obviously stand inside this loot super. And he's going for it now in a one versus two. He's in deep trouble. I mean, they managed to get the win, but I'm not sure about that. It was a 2v3 at some point in favor of Foot Esports, and they still managed to get down to a 1v2 in favor of SK Gaming. Now, Chaos has this wall as well. Should be able to block off this pathway through for Semantic and dominate the other sides. Does actually not really manage to get it done, but that's one choke point that he's going to be able to push through, but looks like he might be waiting it out. Yeah, that hedge did not stop Semantic here. He's able to push through it pretty well, so Chaos transplants it away. Now to the left-hand side. Drage will have his sight line compromised. And Semantic will struggle to push up against the 8-bit who swapped over to the right. And then taking a few shots to the face, same with Rage as well. Chaos going to transplant it once again, throw it back down and stop Mandy from moving. Now one pathway through and they're going to have to start moving soon as the gas should start creeping in. Semantic trying to make the play but has to use a jump to dodge that rocket fuel coming in from OP. Sprout is creating artificial 3v2s at times here by cutting off at least one sight line for Foot Esports. At some point they're going to have to think about going for it but they've lost Rage here. The Lou is off the map. Lenar has that super available, sends it! But it's going to be Yoshi using the cheat cartridge to get out of the way. Looks like it would have connected anyway and the gas starts to encroach i mean down they go it's a 1v2 semantic cannot get the job done sk gaming take it and now one game away from even in the score starting to see the proof of concept for the sprout on this map you have three holes to poke through when you have the eve on your side and constantly chaos is shutting down one of them meaning artificially a player advantage is being created as one of those foot esports players has to sit there and wait for the hedge to disappear well, wall break instantly again. Rocket fuel from OP. Lenane standing still, just trying to get that extended range and honestly being so useful. Rocket fuel to now break some of that grass as well. OP doing such a good job in these later few sets. Drage really having a tough time of finding any supers at all, never mind a hypercharge. Yeah, Drage definitely been given the hot foot right now. Needs to stay on the move, but there it is. Lenard ducks OP. And finally, foot have a player advantage to work with again. You know, for the first time in pretty much forever in this set. Samantha's gonna have to jump away now and obviously landing on that water, able to get out. But this 3v2 it might be short-lived if Chaos can find some good shots here. Needs to find a wall to be able to make something happen. And Semantic just trying to push this right-hand side. Yoshi, we haven't seen much from him, but it's just been, all he's been doing is just locking people off, keeping Semantic away. Still almost the same amount of health across both these teams at max HP for those brawlers. Bear that in mind, but less firepower now as Yoshi is dancing. Drage descends. Lenar looking for Chaos now to get the job done. He bounces a space carrot off the wall. Well, that's all he can bring. Yeah, well, he wanted the gas to come in a bit sooner, but Drage got his super anyway. 
Now we actually have that turret from Yoshi as well. Managed to work for that, but Lenane has this Mandy Super, and that can be dangerous. Out it goes, finds Chaos, but not getting the kill. Baby's coming in for the first time in a while from Semantic as well, and Chaos just not being hit by them. OP deals with them quite swiftly, but this Lou Super can be dangerous. And now hoping to get rid of that turret, I think, but it's going to be almost impossible to get rid of the damage amp now with where it's placed. Leonardo sat still, focused up here. Dre's creates the space in order for Leonardo to play more statically on that left-hand side. Here's a hedge to cut off some of this sight line. Chaos moves up behind it. Yeah, Samantha finds some great shots onto OP. No jump out with the rocket laces as he's got the rocket fuel gadget. Chaos now trying to find Samantha, but he's having to run away, running for his life. He got what he came for, though. That's a huge elimination now. Foot look to try and even up the set. Lenar goes for the super. No connection. Hoping maybe Chaos moved back into it, but Drage couldn't force him southward on the map. Semantic, though, returns to the fray. Yoshi Lo has to use the cheat cartridge to get back to that damage amp now. Is at 930. Eventually, he must succumb, and Chaos is a popsicle. Lenane survived for so long there and kept for esports in that if he goes down, all's control is lost. The left hand side would have fell and Foot surely would have fell along with them as well. But now, match point for Foot Esports. Crucially, SK Gaming still have the possibility of embarking upon this reverse sweep attempt, but they've got to be frustrated being unable to clean up the set there. It all comes down to this game. Well, similar start to the rest as OP breaks up the rest of what is really trying to go. Oh, Lenane gets three tapped by Lenane. Beautiful from him. And say goodbye to Semantic 2. SK reverting to their former glory. Standing tall as match point comes. SK refusing to buckle under the pressure. This is a formality for Drage here. He hopes to create an opportunity, but all he does is become fodder. Well. Super was claimed by Yoshi there as well. Turret's going to be a huge, huge thing for him. And out of reach of Lenane here as well. And those walls were broken in the last one, but not in this one. Rocket Fuel not finding anything here either. And Drage just returning to this mid. Wall comes down and Chaos, as you say, makes it pretty much a 3v2. No, I mean, there's nothing Luke can do here. He just waits. He doesn't want to group up and end up, you know, getting splashed by those Brock rockets here. So he has no choice but to sit around. Lenar uh, hopes to try and get somewhere here, but Foot are completely shut down by this Sprout pick right now. And that means Chaos could start to move up behind the hedge and throw some of these shots. And Lenane's going to fall. Surely there it hits now. Drage almost dead as well, and he's all just surviving. But Semantic should be close oh, behind baby. him. Here SK we go. make it happen. Set number five inbound. An instant classic here between SK Gaming and Foot Esports. And now there are two options. Foot Esports hold off a research in SK Gaming or they suffer a reverse sweep at the hands of their most dire of rivals. SK take that one. But Foot Esports very much still in the game. So back and forward between these two teams. And this set will be the accumulation of all the games they've played each other across the year. And there's been so many at the moment, Foot are in the lead. But this is the important one. Not just the games. Every word between these two teams, every decision that's affected these players, like Semantic being dropped, Dre talking mad smack. Yeah, SK Gaming, they knew they had a score to settle when they came here today. And with both teams falling to Crazy Raccoon, it really set the stage for an absolute blockbuster. What a way to close out the day. Semantic yeah, getting frustrated. This is the double-edged sword of a loud, emotional player. When things are going good, yeah, you're hyped up. When they're bad, you can get frustrated. You can get snappy. Foot need to get it together here. Got pretty outplayed again by this Sprout pick. OP has had a point to prove throughout this year after he departed from that Foot Esports roster earlier on. This might be the time to make that point to his former teammates and Semantic to do the exact same thing. Kill-wise, yeah, it's knockout. The team with more kills is going to be able to take the wins. 6-3-5 for SK Gaming, 2-4-2 two, two for the side of foot. And again, at all times, at least one of these foot players literally has nothing to shoot at. They're stuck behind a hedge, having to wait for it to dissipate. Extremely frustrating indeed, but there's no way to get around it. They don't have environmental, they don't wall break, they have none of that. Semantic's often forced to jump backwards on their right hand side, getting pressured down. We're going to double swoosh with the decider. That is Picante. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm a big fan of this map, and I'm a big fan of this one being the decider between these two teams. Double swoosh in gem grab is going to be a huge, huge set for both of these teams. One of them will be going out today, and one of them will be progressing for the chance 
to become the world champion. So much rests upon this draft. They've been pretty tough for us to read so far with some definitely rogue picks, as you put it, Trav. But one thing's for sure, both these teams have had the right idea at differing moments throughout this series. And SK Nation turning up in a big way now. The arena starting to reach fever pitch. Well, should be getting into the draft shortly as we start now. Sandy, Shelly and Rosa are SK's bands for esports. No surprises here. Sandy, Lou and Charlie all banned out as SK are going to have the first pick. And no one wants to take the risk of getting randomly stunned by a Sandy hiding in the bushes. And I mean, that sandstorm covering the parts of the map that aren't already vegetated. Not something you want to deal with, but vision is key. Tara picked up that Psychic Enhancer to give the information of who's lying in wait in those bushes. SK Gaming value that most of all. Well, foot for the next two picks, but I do like that Tara. Whether you use the Psychic Enhancer or whether you use the support from beyond, both absolutely viable on a map like Double Swoosh. So many bushes, so much vision needed. But the vision gear definitely helps out with that more nowadays. And Foot Esports have got to find themselves a good answer, whether they want to try and take a mid early on, one of the better mids, or try play down some of these lanes. They're going to take the Nita. Oh, oh, oh. I don't mind it. I really do like that bear coming in. It can surprise quite a few people on a map like this. Again, having another body that can really put pressure down that does an absolutely non-negligible amount of damage. It might be a Lenar pick here, of course, as the tank aficionado, the Grey. Oh, we are piling into those dimensional doors, Trav. And I like it as well. Whether you're picking up a kill, whether you're trying to get away with some gems, Grey can make that happen. SK Gaming back for two picks. And then Foot will have that decisive one. The final, last pick of the group stage of the second day of the Brawl Stars World Finals. SK Gaming need a mid. They're going to need another lane along with it as well. Tanks might not be an option with Nita coming in, but Gale is going to be their first pick. Love that. You get a disengage option there when, you know, you see Foot Esports running at you through oh. the dimensional door. And Jackie as well. It's a pick that Foot tend to cover themselves. But this gives you so many options. You've got great durability up close and personal. That crowd control that Jackie can offer is also nothing to sniff at. I like this a lot. Coach Pedro be cooking back there. And I thought Esports need to figure out how to answer this. Range is definitely an issue for SK Gaming's roster, but this is double swoosh. Less of a concern than other more open maps. Yeah, and Rosa taken off the table. Oh, Cordelia is going to be the pick from Foot Esports. If you need to deal with a tank, that is the man to do it. Rosa was obviously taken off the table by SK Gaming, possibly even expecting to take that Jackie as their last pick and not allowing Foot Esports to have that counter. Cordelius comes in to round out Foot's picks. Well, there you have it. It all ends here. SK Gaming, Foot Esports, one more time into the breach. This time, it's for all the marbles. Pedro trying to up the energy here as well. Deadly focus on the faces of SK Gaming. Foot Esports also have their heads down now. Let's get it on. It's time for Double Swoosh. Double right-hand side from Foot Esports, trying to surprise them. Instant walking cane and a bit of wall break and a bit of grass break, I should say, there on OP. Just waiting it out, trying to find someone in these bushes. Semantic's the first to be hit, and it is Psychic Enhancer. All the foot now revealed to SK Gaming, and Chaos might see an opportunity here. Trange, obviously not the most durable of Brawler, so Dimensional Doors away. Lenar, of course, with that shield gear looking pretty durable himself now. Walking Kane opens up some more of that map on the left-hand side. So far, Semantic has kept pretty quiet. Couple connections on Yoshi, another Psychic Enhancer now. As Chaos wants to capitalize, he's going forward, but Lenar drags him to the underworld. Yeah, Drake's gonna find that kill as well. Lenay not gonna be able to do much in this realm as Chaos does bring him down. Semantic having a tough time on the right hand side against Yoshi as well. But with Drake having these seven gems, it gives them that buffer. Semantic should pick that up, but the counter crush gets the trade. Lenar here getting punished by much of this damage from Ope, but he's so low. Lenar just needs the one shot. Onto Yoshi, drags him in the Shadow Realm here, but snaps up a couple of those extra gems. Ope falls, he drops two behind him. This is dangerous for SK Gaming now. A lot of that ammo wasted on the bear as well, and up comes the gem. Lenin can remain aggressive as Semantic gets another one from the spawner. SK need to push. They've got time, 10 seconds on the clock, and now they're coming forward. Dre sitting in the back with plenty of gems to work with. Semantic tries to make the cheeky play. The dimensional door's up. Drage can get out if he needs to. He's slowed. The gems are spilled. And the countdown is reset, but SK can't hang around. They've got other fish to fry. Semantic will be dealt with now as they stand in the middle of the map. 
They needed one and Chaos doubted himself. OP coming forwards once another's pull. But the bear TP straight in and the, tea, the the stun's doing nothing so far. Chaos needs to make a push. Six seconds, Lenane has all the gems. Now he comes in, the pull, but he gets the jump. Bear on them, but SK have all the gems now. Graves can only look on as those gems head to the other side of the map. He's chasing, he's running, he's trying to catch them. But Chaos gets brought down by Lenar. Here's the gravity, hold straight in place. Five seconds left now. Gems drop, but Yoshi has 10. He's trying to dodge these shots. One second, and Yoshi survives. SK, they're on the board here in gem grab. What looked like a foot game turns quickly to SK's match point. One more needed for them. Foot about to be reverse swept. Unbelievable scenes here. A quiet and calm SK Gaming. Shrug off those first two sets and they get it together. What a conclusion. Now it's on the line. Foot Esports staring down. A match point from SK. Well, a slow start from both teams once more. Walking Kane's not going to be finding OP this time. The grass remains up in that mid. Nita going to be focusing a lot more on this Jackie this time, but he finds the early kill. Chaos takes the lead for SK. Yoshi also running rings around Lenar there. Trace was at least able to get with, out with two gems, but SK have that slight lead. Semantic just able to get outside that Jackie super staying alive for now. Galeforth comes in, but Semantic the bear claims our Chaos. Well, Yoshi almost going down now. Realm is the 1v1 versus Yoshi here. Trace claiming some gems. OP around this left-hand side. Not really a lot from that, but Lenane stopped himself from going down at least. Psychic Enhancer once more. Spot Strage and Semantic as usual in his ancestral position on the right-hand side. Chaos wins out again, but must trade once more. Semantic forced away. Looking threatening as Yoshi did not want to deal with the bear. And OP returns with those five gems in hand. It's an even game. Well, TP's there as well. The pull in from Chaos tries to get OP in the realm, but goes down before the connection is made. Pull there, but the TP from Drage is available too. Still set up in case that pull comes forward. They do have the lead, and it's still match point. Chaos has been so good on this left-hand side. Trav Semantics had to swap out of that lane, and he can't get to grips with Yoshi either. This could go badly for Foot. The Nita pick maybe not working out. The bear deployed gets slapped on in, and SK Gaming flattened two players from Foot. Again, Drage can't get involved. Lenane trying to find the realm. He needs a 1v1 with OP here to be able to bring this back, but now has a gem. Finds it, gets, gets the realm it. onto him. Can he win this 1v1? He's all of SK circle him to pick up these gems that are going to be dropped. Hypercharge there. Yoshi claims them all, and Chaos gets the kill. Countdown starts, but, uh, but fuck, take the gems back and even it out. Yoshi able to get back. This is not the ideal gem carrier for you, though. Gale is short range, can't really get involved at these fights at longer distances. Gravity pop, no connection Ooh. from OP, but Semantic's gonna fall down here. Gem's still in the hands of SK Gaming. Shadow Roll for our Chaos. That wasn't who Lenar wanted. He needs to get closer to Yoshi, but SK Gaming! Kings of old return to lay their claim once more. They conquer their rivals. Look at them get across the stage. They're in the faces of Foot Esports. What do you have to say now? Goodbye to Foot Esports. And SK will be seeing day three of the Brawl Stars World Championship 2023. As Chaos waves goodbye. Foot Esports knocked out. They struggled at the start of this year to find their footing. Gia was on the option. They tried Jetton as well. They brought Ope over from Foot Esports. They fail to have success midway through the season. They get taunted by Foot Esports. Have fun at LCQ, they said. Well, SK did just that. They used it as experience, as practice, and for fuel to come back here to finally have the last laugh. The reverse sweep completed. Oh, SK man. Gaming feeling good about that sweet, sweet revenge. Drage's words, fuel for SK. It doesn't get any better than this. One of the most compelling stories of the EMEA region here in 2023 comes to its conclusion. But of course, for SK Gaming, the road is far from done. Let's get real for a moment. They struggled against Crazy Raccoon. They'll have a lot more work to do.
but they will be advancing to tomorrow's games. They'll have a shot at the throne one way or another. Yeah, exactly. A single elimination tomorrow as well, so no more chances for them. Tough opponents lie in that bracket. Really, really tough opponents. I mean, they've got a lot more to prove, as you said. Crazy Raccoon still dominate them. They didn't stand a chance in that matchup, but at least now they have a chance in day three. I Chaos reminding us why he was one of the most celebrated players in all of Europe. The Jackie play was absolutely sublime, but let's not forget that Sprout play that really catapulted SK into a position to potentially take the series away. Foot Esports, they're driven by emotion, right? For better or for worse. It looks like they run out of energy. They run out of composure, right? Where it really matters. Yeah, I mean, you know, as you say, those emotional players on a high, they're living the dream, but on a low, they're just losing it out. And it's not good for Foot Esports when that is the play. See on that one, Foot Esports should have taken the first game, but a big turnaround from SK Gaming in the closing seconds. Two of big resets was enough for them to take it home. How do you feel about that Nita? Looked like a risky pick, and as soon as I saw Semantic rotate out of that Jackie lane, I thought that seemed like a concession already to me. Yeah, I mean, for me, the Nita just didn't have the range required to be able to deal with what SK were bringing to the table. And don't get me wrong, SK's composition wasn't long range by any means, but the Nita just didn't really seem to do too much. That's a struggle. Look at that, that emotion. That is months and months of struggle, of hardship, of having to try and silence the haters, the doubters. What a story for SK Gaming. I Chaos and Yoshi, incredible stuff. Ope really coming alive towards the end of the set here. The drafting at times confused us, eluded us, but they were cooking, they were onto something here. SK Gaming makes some great choices in the pick and ban of those last couple of sets. It's a well-deserved victory. It's one that's built on the academic basis from the coaching side and then the execution from these players. What a complete showing from SK Gaming. Yeah, I mean, as you say, the draft confuses at some points, but if it works, it works. And clearly for SK Gaming, it does. And that is something that they really have thrived on. Their drafts may have been weird, may have been odd at some points, but the win's what matters. So we're talking about the road ahead, I think, a bit more for this SK team because, yeah, they can't feel like they've played their grand final just yet. Coming out of this group, not in first place, tends to mean you get paired up against a top seed from another group. So that's a frightening prospect indeed. Let's not forget, North America are 6-0 and at Worlds right now. Crazy Raccoon untouched, so keep that in mind as we go forward. Let's talk about our MVP here from this match. I got my choice. I don't know how you voted online. Yeah, that's correct. Gold star for all of you. It's I Chaos coming out with the honors. What a giga, Chad. Yeah, I mean, he really was the player in that game. Made, flipped so many games on his head, made huge plays, and was the one who kind of ran away with all the gems at the end there really did pull through for SK Gaming and got the win when it mattered. Yeah, he warned Rage. He said, watch out. <laughs> when you're down and you're feeling getting beaten back, I want you to remember all the smack you talked to us, uh, you know, over the months here. And I think they'll be experiencing that right now. Let's talk Group D and let's see how our final group stage has evolved. I'll be honest, while we're hyped up about this storyline, Crazy Raccoon absolutely slapped SK and Foot around in those two games. They were very, very quick. We saw the Tensai Max. It was stunning. It was a throwback. It was everything you could expect from that East Asia region. Trav, SK Gaming and Foot, though, they gave us quite a finale to the day. Yeah, I mean, the ending was good. I mean, the, the build-up, you know, where they both get swept by Crazy Raccoon in a pretty swift fashion gives me absolute hope that Crazy Raccoon will be able to do it in Tensai, may be able to get his 3 P. Oh, man. It's exciting stuff here. That's your Group D out of the way. Don't forget, two teams advance from each of these groups, and here is your bracket. <laughs> Look at oh, these. Oh, oh, oh. Luminosity Ooh. Gaming versus Zeta Division. We get Crazy Raccoon going up against Reply Totem. They'll have to step up in a big way. SCMN, Revenant, and how about this one? Oh. Tribe Gaming, oh. SK Gaming. We've, we've called many games El Clasicos in the past. This one, though, a true titan of cross-region play. That rivalry between NA and EU is going to play out in two different matches tomorrow. I mean, if SK Gaming make it, you know, make it through this first round, they'll have had the, the, their share of revenge for the next five years, I think, to be honest with you, because Tribe Gaming have beaten time and time again. They managed to deal with Foot Esports here today, which was their biggest rival throughout this year. But on an international stage, Tribe Gaming has always been the team to put a stop to SK. Absolutely. And they have their eyes set more so on Crazy Raccoon. They have a score to settle after getting ejected in third and fourth place last year by that Zeta Division team. 
Let's set our eyes towards our Championship Sunday, the final day of play here, the Brawl Stars World Finals 2023. We'll be kicking off with our quarterfinal one. It'll be Luminosity versus Zeta Division. Then Crazy Raccoon versus Reply Totem. Can these East Asian juggernauts continue to sweep the competition aside? It's a confident STMN going up against a Revenant Esports who had to fight tooth and nail to get out of that Group A. And then Tribe Gaming, SK Gaming. Just how far does this Cinderella run go for SK Gaming? We'll find out, of course, two semis and then a beautiful grand final to close it out. Trav, I mean, we've had two incredible days of play so far. If Crazy Raccoon, we assume, are going to be in that final, who else do you have your eyes on to meet them there? Oh, I'm liking an SDMN. I'm liking an SDMN <laughs> okay. at the moment. Their group was very difficult today and they managed to pull through with flying colors. Yeah, personally, I'd love to see uh, Tribe Gaming have a chance at a rematch against them. But again, we've seen so many upsets, so many matches that have ended up being far closer than we otherwise would have expected. That's been the beauty of competition here in Yonchiping. DreamHack has been a gracious host to us here, and we try to return the favor seeing these players give us some great games. It's been an absolute pleasure, man. I mean, again, can Crazy Raccoon be stopped? That is gonna be the storyline we move to tomorrow. So of course, it's all gonna be kicking up here live from DreamHack tomorrow. Remember, event.brawlstars.com. That's where you can join us. That's where you can get involved, put in your predictions and earn yourself some sweet in-game loot. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you tomorrow for Championship Sunday. Get some rest and keep brawling.